The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 sport, sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome on this wow. A lot has happened in the NFL Tuesday, March 12, 2024. This sports program starts now. Sports are a wonderful thing. Sports are a great escape. Sports are a mental vacation for all. You know, to disappear from whatever you're worried about and focus on a team that could potentially go on and win a Super Bowl for your entire city. Whoa. In the first day of the free agency tampering period, the NFL spent, depending upon which contracts are real and not real, $1.94 billion in contracts around the NFL as of last night. Teams are excited. Teams have to spend money. And there's a lot of new faces in new places. We're talking pillar players are now playing for other teams. Yeah, yeah. Russell Wilson's a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. a big deal. That's a huge deal. Come on. Aaron Jones is a member of the Vikings. Yeah. Oh, Running back for the Packers. He's now playing for the Vikings. Oh, Brett Favre, classic. Ooh. Oh, that's a little rivalry there in the <laughs> NFC North. All of a sudden, Aaron Jones, the man who scored five touchdowns in one game, is going to be wearing his really cool sunglasses playing for the Minnesota Vikings because oh, yeah. the Green Bay Packers said, you know what? Uh, take a 50% pay cut or we're going to sign Josh Jacobs yep. and give it to you and A.J. Dillon. So mm-hmm. that is what they ended up doing. Congrats, Goody. I got trust in Goody. I think you do as well Correct. for the Green Bay Packers, but he's in a new town. How about uh, Joe Mixon? Well, he's been traded. He's gone. Zach Moss from the Indianapolis Mm -hmm. Colts. He comes into this entire thing. Uh, There's a lot of new faces in new places that you wouldn't expect. How about New York Giants face? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you talk to Giants fans. Mm. Who do you hate? Oh. Who who, who do you hate if you're a Giants fan? I assume you don't like the commanders, but they're the commanders. Yeah, Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, The Cowboys, yeah, you don't like them because they're the NFC Mm -hmm. East, but who do you really hate that's really close? You hate who? The Philadelphia Eagles. The Birds. Mm-hmm. Well, they just signed your best player. Saquon Barkley is now a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Saquon, obviously, for the last couple years, has been getting trying to get a good contract. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was the one that almost started the running back union in the running back chaos last offseason that saw Jonathan Taylor end up sitting out because the running back market was devalued and yada, yada. Now we go to this free agency. The running backs are some of the most active ones yeah. in the entire free agency period. But Saquon Barkley, face of the Giants, for a while is now the Philadelphia Eagles big hope. Well, what did the Giants do? They did a lot. The talks tables here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt feels like there was a lot of action yesterday. Obviously, $1.94 billion, depending upon whose numbers and contract. That's from Spotrack, most mm-hmm. specifically. But all these things could be a little bit different. Around $2 billion was spent yesterday. There's still a lot of big names. There's some other signings that took place yesterday. I think they were a little bit rattling as they came across the wire. Yeah, huge one. Giants replaced Saquon with Devin Motor Singletary <laughs> from Houston coming off his best year. We did not know that his yeah. nickname name was Motor. No. And as soon as we did. found out, we were all pretty bummed. We love teams. Big Motor. Yeah. yeah. Devin Singletary yeah. running back for the Houston Texans. Yeah, I was not getting that. It was a huge bummer across the board. A lot of quarterbacks kind of mm-hmm. getting places. Jacoby Brissett to New England. Sam Darnold to Minnesota. Uh, Gardner Minshew to the Raiders. Uh Apparently all competing for starting jobs, mm-hmm. at least uh, definitely Gardner and Aiden O'Connell. Sam Darnold, you would assume, also would be competing for that starting job. And then Jacoby Brissett, too. Also, Jameis Winston signs with the Cleveland Browns. That's Ooh. right. He did. So right now that quarterback room is Deshaun Watson, right. Jameis Winston. Nice. That's a good time. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We need hard knocks in there. <laughs> we need that particular room to yeah. be documented for yeah. an entire season, for an entire year. Now, we know Deshaun Watson has signed the biggest guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL. Shout out to Mulgetta. Shout out. David Mulgetta is cooking still this particular. He got Christian Wilkins that deal with the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm-hmm. They actually recorded the entire thing whenever Mulgetta let Wilkins know, like, 
Hey, bud, congrats. Yeah. You are very wealthy all of a sudden. <laughs> but Moore Getta signs that Deshaun Watson deal. Deshaun Watson had been out of football for a year and a half, let alone what he had been out of football dealing with. Right. Yeah. Very serious. Mm -hmm. yep. Super serious. Never going to undersell that. But the amount of weight that is, mentally, physically, year and a half out of football, because before all that stuff happened, very serious stuff happened, allegations that happened, and trials, and court cases, right. and they would indict a ham sandwich Correct. Yep. learning from lawyers, and we had to deal with that entire offseason. Obviously, no one needed what It was just a lot. before He was sitting out before that because he, be, he didn't want to play for the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. So he missed a lot of football. So signing him to the largest guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL was obviously what we thought was a magic worker by David Mulligetta, but we all wondered, like in the football world, is this guy going to be worth a damn at football whenever he comes back? You can't just fall out and then just jump back in, especially at the professional level. He had some he had some bumps, he had some bruises, had some glimpses of potential being Deshaun Watson, but overwhelmingly a big, big bummed out bummer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson played football. Joey Flack comes in. Dog. Wins them games, makes the offense look how it's supposed to look, and now Deshaun Watson just kind of has to sit there and watch that entire thing. It's his team. They bring in Jameis to help him, I would assume. So Jameis is coming in there to motivate Deshaun Watson to get yeah. back to who Deshaun Watson once was to keep him healthy, or is Jameis Winston there because inevitably they think Deshaun Watson's not going to make it through an entire season, and we need somebody that has previous starting experience. I would assume that's a signing for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, that feels like what a lot of teams are, are doing, like even the Raiders with Gardner. It feels like because of that year, the back up quarterback last year where there were 70 to 80 different starting quarterbacks across the NFL that everyone's just saying, you know, we can't have a Jets situation like they had last year where you lose a guy week one and they then brought in a guy. your entire season. The Jets brought in Tyrod Taylor. They, they bring in Tyrod we'll Taylor. We'll like that, that feels like that might be kind of the thought. And Marcus Mariota also going to the commanders to kind of be that bridge or veteran guy in whatever rookie they end up with. Yeah, so it seems like the backup quarterback market is good. The mm -hmm. veteran quarterback Market is good now. Obviously, they're not making 30 million, even no. though Kirk Cousins just signed a 180 million dollar deal. Mm -hmm. Congrats, to Kirk Cousins! Maybe Kirk, Kirk. Kill. Congrats, to Kirk Cousins and McCartney down there in Atlanta. We have reached out to try to get an interview and a conversation with Kirk Cousins just to break down how he is such a beast at the negotiation table. I think a lot of it revolves around him continuing to bet on himself and play good football. Mm -hmm. And by good football, it's football that GMs think around the league. Like, you can win with Kirk Cousins. Oh, yeah. You can win with Kirk Cousins. If you think you can win, you're going to be willing to spend whatever to make that happen, to get over the hump, especially whenever Desmond Ritter was your quarterback for the past few years and you had no idea if he was... Correct. Every game was like, maybe. Yeah. Could and then be. it would get down red zone. Oh, he four fumbled turns. out of the end zone. Yeah. Again. And it's like, Desmond Ritter looked like he was 40 years old, but obviously there were some rookie woes and some young player woes and everything like that. So they are in the need of a quarterback. Feels like it was a perfect situation for Kirk. Good luck with them down there. Very proud of Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. 35 years old, coming off an Achilles, able to negotiate $100 million in guarantees. A quarterback position is obviously incredible. Yeah. Unfeasible. Stunning. Mm -hmm. Legend legendary business move yes. from Kirk, but you're hearing a lot of players, especially with how this whole season's work or how this whole free agency's working out. Aaron Jones told, hey, can you cut your contract? And allegedly, it's being reported, right. was told, can you cut your contract in half? He said, no, they stopped talking to him. Okay, you're gone. Joe Mixon, he was like going to bat for being a bangle. Then all of a sudden, they bring in Zach Moss. Hey, you're gone. Mm -hmm. No, you're actually traded. You're yeah. not even able to pick where the hell you're going next. A lot of these contracts are coming and going whenever they're not supposed to. So it's giving a lot of players ammo about, hey, why do I get attacked? But the team doesn't get attacked. Tiki Barber went after Saquon Barkley. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Tiki Barber is a radio show host. Tiki Barber is obviously very famous. Tiki Barber is a New York Giant legend. Tiki Barber is in the New York media market, has been, and been around for a long time. Tiki goes, you're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. Jeez. <laughs> says Tiki. Saquon responds, LOL. You think he was actually laughing out loud? I think so. Uh, I think so. I think whenever he heard it, he went, mm -hmm. yeah. this guy. I think there was a chuckle. Wow. I, I think it was C-O-L. <laughs> I think it was a chuckle, chuckle out loud. Out loud. Okay. But it was like a, uh, you know, like a, <laughs> one of those. Mm -hmm. It wasn't kind of like a scoff. A, yeah, it was a scoff out loud. Mm -hmm. He scoffed out loud. Yep, yep, you're the prime example of loyalty to a team, Tiki. <laughs> I got the deal I wanted, secured more guaranteed There's, money, I which think. wasn't given to me before. So if fans are going to hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates, and I always had theirs. What Saquon should have said to Tiki is shut up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what he should have said to Tiki. Uh, Tiki, you've been a hater since I got to New York, and all the dead to me talk. Don't smile on my face when you see me. Like that. Woo. Love that. Hey, mm -hmm. shit ain't sweet, Saquon. No. Yeah. To Tiki Barber. Tiki's got to do what Tiki's got to do. Tiki's mm -hmm. also like the face of the New York Giants fan base, I see, yes. whenever he's speaking like mm -hmm. that. So I hold no ill will to Tiki, but the Giants could have paid him. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is this is what capitalism is. This yep. is what a meritocracy is. This is professional sports. So if the Philadelphia Eagles value a person that has done a lot for your organization more than you, is that Saquon's fault or is that the Giants' fault? Especially with everything that's happened in the New York Giants during Saquon's tenure. We'd like to let big quads Saquon Barkley know mm -hmm. as he goes back to the state of Pennsylvania where he went to college and I believe also high school. Hey, get your money, dude. You're a running back. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, Congrats, Saquon. Saquon. Get your money, dude. Sirianni's pumped. He's there. Kellen Moore's got to be pumped. He's there. The Philadelphia Eagles Eagles are getting praise and compliments from everybody, even Tad Prescott. Tad <laughs> Prescott's brother put out a tweet saying, in case you didn't know, the Philadelphia Eagles, if it wasn't already clear, it is now. The Eagles have the best front office in the NFL. <laughs> Hashtag, how about them Cowboys? That's the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys' brother. That's Not right. Good. He does this quite a bit. Why? I don't know why you would just get Dak in the middle of renegotiating. I, mean, yeah, I was going to say, he yeah. is. And he's made a lot of money there. And Jerry Jones got that fake AI in the building mm -hmm. like that's answering questions yeah. for him, and he's answering questions. He's got Stephen Jones in there, big Mike McCarthy. He's like, Dak, cool. we get your butt off here. <laughs> Trying to get you in our couple hundred million dollars. Jeez Louise. We've got the Green Bay Packers come here and just kind of mop four with us. We're mm -hmm. supposed to win this year. we got your brother sending out these tweets. Oh, is he sober? Is he drunk? Can we get him off the whiskey? Can we get him off the booze, maybe? Why, Why is he attacking us? We're trying to give you another $100 million. What's the, what's the deal? And Dak's like, my brother does what my brother does. And he's like, well, last name Prescott. It's your brother. We got to deal with this shit. And then he's like, well, why don't you go after Diggs? Diggs was attacking the Buffalo Bills. Mike mm -hmm. McCarthy's like, I don't care if you go after another team. But it feels like the Dallas Cowboys have more bullshit happen around them than ever before, and even if the Eagles in their own division make a big-time move, somehow Cowboys drama yeah. will get brought to the forefront. Dalton Schultz said, when I'm working out, I feel like a zoo animal mm -hmm. because it's a one-way window. I wonder if when Tad Prescott saw that, and obviously every other NFL team gave Tad Prescott tours of their practice facility. Correct. Mm -hmm. He's Tad Prescott. When he saw that, he goes, these guys ain't ever going to win. I got to get back <laughs> out of here. So that's why he goes to the Twitter fingers or whatever the case is. But congrats to the Eagles seemingly making their fans happy even though they lost Fletcher Cox, Jason Kelsey, Kevin Byer, uh, Swift, uh, in a complete collapse yep. Yep. at the end of the year. <clears throat> Bringing in Saquon, big name, big weapon, can normally you know, at least quiet some haters a little bit, but they're going to have to play well. One half of the hammer, Dan. Cowboys turn Diggs here, and a man who's a nine-year NFL vet, looks incredibly handsome right now. Mm -hmm. Darius J. Butler. d Butts, you can win a headline in March, honestly. Absolutely. You, you certainly can, and mo mo a lot of teams, Green Bay Packers even won some headlines here in March for making some plays, oh, yeah. and we'll have the Green Bay Packers a part of the field of beat, which is about to take place here in about five minutes, where we'll get us some beat writers from around the NFL for some teams that made some plays yesterday, and see how the fans are feeling it, but none of this matters if they don't win. Saquon exactly. Barkley, though, alongside Jalen Hurts, feels like they're going to be able to figure that out, you would hope at least, D-Butch? Yes, I love this. It's a great signing. Uh, he got his money, but he's healthy. He's still going to be motivated, especially those two games. You're going to see the Giants oh, yeah. every year. Can't wait to see that, but you're going to be behind. Very good offensive line, much better offensive line than he's been running behind in, in, uh, in New York. And then you got Jalen Hurts, who's also a running threat as well, so that takes eyes off you in the box. So I can't wait to see Saquon out there. Um, and then Bryce Huff. Getting them yeah. from the Jets. That was a huge signing on the defense side of the ball. You talked about all those guys that they've lost. But getting him there, bringing along Nolan Smith, see how he, he does, um, young guy to Georgia. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of moving pieces moving in the right direction out there in Philly. We saw him fall apart at the end. We don't know if it was Big Dom, if it was Nick, if it was losing the coordinators, trying to get those guys, you know, Matt Patricia getting in there, a lot of moving parts. So we'll see what gets figured out. New coordinators, by the end of the season, there's a book out on them, right? Yeah. Yeah, so everybody says that about quarterbacks and rookie players and stuff like that, but brand-new coordinators for the Philadelphia Eagles. Late in the season, there's a chance that, like, defense coordinators yeah. and offense coordinators had them figured out. And then mm -hmm. when you try to drop Matt Patricia in there, there's a chance that that also fed into the collapse at the end of the yeah. season. Oh, yeah. It's just no continuity because you got – you had when you had Spags on, when he was talking about, you know, one of the biggest play calls in the Super Bowl, he talked about the relationship with him and Nick Bolton and how mm -hmm. he had a call and he was looking at his reaction to see, okay, that's the call. And then you send Trip McDuffie in the blitz. So that's that continuity that you build throughout the week, throughout the meeting room, throughout years, you know, um, playoff games, big, you know, got to have it moment. So when you're uh, giving people different titles, okay, now we're running practices different, now walkthroughs are different, now meetings are different. You need the continuity. And it's, it's the business. You're going to lose players. You're going to lose good coaches. That's a part of it. But you got to be able to, to evolve and get better. Uh, let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Deeper into the Philadelphia Eagles here. Okay. Hell yeah. 
ladies and gentlemen, we are a bunch of, you know, we're a regional program. Right. That's how sure. we're described. That's right. And obviously, we have international audience. Mm -hmm. But we are at a 30,000-foot view mm -hmm. everywhere. Sure. We're kind of national sports stooges. Sure. So we kind of get the details, but we don't know the story. Mm -hmm. We hear the headlines, and we can watch the games, but day to day, we don't know what the hell's going on. On the week. So we created a segment, big segment show. Yeah. We do a lot of segments. People of know we do a lot of segments. Every day. That's why we're just like every other show that's on ESPN. We go sag, sag, but, sag, but, sag, but, but, sag. But, but. This particular sag has lasted a long time because mm -hmm. this particular sag makes us better. This particular sag introduces us to new people. This particular sag makes the watchers and listeners of this particular program say, that's why I listen to that show. Mm -hmm. It's time to go in the weeds. It's time to go boots on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to feel the beat. I love feel the beat. Oh, yeah. We got four people on today, so a lot of dancing, a lot of yelling today, yeah. but also a lot of information, hopefully, coming from towns that were heavily invested in the first day of free agency. Let's go to Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a man who's been with ESPN since 1995. Wow. Ooh. He was in the Navy. I don't know if he's a Navy SEAL or not with 150 confirmed kills, like we like to say. Mm -hmm. But he certainly hosted a matchup show, and he's a steadfast legend for ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, Paisano hero, Sal Paul. Yeah, yeah, Sal Paul. How are you, Paisano? I'm, I'm so happy to be joining the show. But my debut on the Pat McAfee show with my brother Darius Butler from the NFL. Matt, hey, Matt hey, there we go on ESPN. Yo, Joe. Hey, hey, relax, relax. I know, I know, I know. ESPN, I know. ESPN too. We on ESPN a lot, as Sal Powell would say. Sal, so I would like to let you know that I've been campaigning heavily for that matchup show to be put more. We need to see more of it because uh -huh. how great the show is. Not going to say I watched as much of it before Darius got on there, but once D. Butch, our guy, gets on there, we watch every week. Thank you for taking care of him. Thank you for the yeah, opportunity. Great, over there. great program. Legit. Now, Paisano, let's dive in here. You're in – you – you killed 5,000 people in the Navy for the United yep. States of America because that's how we tell the story. Thank you, Sal. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Sal. Love you, Sal. I was, it was an honor to serve, Pat. I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy, and I was blessed to be in peacetime my entire career in the Navy. So never fired a shot in anger at anybody. Thank God. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, we like, hey, thank you for signing up saying you would, though. Yep. <laughs> if you had to, you would, which we appreciate. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's talk about Saquon Barkley coming from the New York Giants to the Philadelphia Eagles. You lose Fletcher Cox. You lose Jason Kelsey. Kevin Byard's on his way out. Swift signs a deal uh, in Chicago for a bunch of money. The end of the year, full collapse. Hey, what the hell's going on? Can Nick Sirianni figure it out? Big Dom, another pie's on. Kicked off the field. Just a few years ago, we're the bell the ball we're going to the Super Bowl now everybody needs to panic you sign Saquon Barkley you bring in Kellen Moore you got Vic Fangio what do you think the fans reaction is to the first day of free agency in Philly and the state of the Eagles as a whole boots on the ground over there in the Philadelphia area well the fans are definitely happy about the signing of both Saquon Barkley and Bryce Huff and to me I think the Eagles are the most fascinating team in the National Football League right now. You lose both coordinators, Pat, not only this year, but last year. For two straight years, mm. you lose both coordinators. You change coordinators. You've got professional athletes all over your show all the time. They'll tell you, and you know how difficult that is. It's unprecedented. Agreed. You're going into the season coming off a Super Bowl that you are down. You were up by 10 points at halftime. You lose by three points. You're up to 10-1 and one last year. Your quarterback's on an MVP track, and then everything collapses, and then you have to tear it down because you lose two of the core four. You lose Fletcher Cox, and you, and you lose Jason Kelsey. And so this is the most fascinating team in the National Football League. And Saquon, Saquon, you go back to his rookie year, Saquon Barkley with the New York Giants, his only year with a 1,000-yard receiver in Odell Beckham Jr., he had over 2,000 yards rushing. Now he comes to a team with two bona fide 1,000-yard receivers in Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and an MVP-level quarterback who's also a threat to run. Let's remember, now when you have Jalen Hurts and you can run those zone reads and you can run those uh, RPOs and you got to account for Jalen Hurts as a runner, you got to put a hat on Jalen Hurts on defense. You know, Pat, when you got that and you got the threat of a guy who, two guys who can stretch the defense, that means those safeties can't nose down Freeze into the them. box. Mm -hmm. 
you got to absolutely you got to freeze him and then you let Saquon loose. So this is a good one two punch, but they're not done. I don't think that they're done. The okay. best time that the Eagles ever had was when they had thunder and lightning, when they had Ricky Waters and Charlie Garner. They need a burner at running back. They need another speedster. And I think in the draft, either in undrafted free agent or in the draft, they'll go for somebody who can really light things up from the running back position, like Detroit did. That's what why Detroit was so successful in the running game last year, is they had thunder and lightning with Detroit with a great offensive line. And the Eagles offensive line, Pat, remember, was number one in the league in run win rate, run block win rate. Now you lose Kelsey, Cam Jurgens comes in. He's been taught by the best, Jeff Stoutland. Everybody knows Stoutland University is the best in the National Football League. What do you got to do? You got to go into Novacare. You got to plug in those double A-gap blitzes that Zimmer used to run in Minnesota and say this is what they're going to run in Dallas. Let's study all the double A-gap blitzes and let's block them up and then run against the Dallas Cowboys. That's what you got to do. All right, so double barrel is what we got to prepare for for Zimmer, obviously. And whenever you talk about Saquon having weapons outside to free the box up and the freezing from Jalen Hurts with the RPOs, it does feel like they have the offense fixed. Now, speaking of the offense, you lose Shane Steichen, thank God. (laughs) He comes to the Colts. Stud. Thank God. We got him. But whenever you have success, these types of things are going to happen. You're going to get poached. You're going to lose some of your guys. The Eagles suffered from that. How Sirianni's kind of... uh, um, respect level around Philadelphia because we love them. Mm-hmm. We see we them do. walking through the tunnel after a game screaming, Yeah, F you! But he didn't say F. Yeah. yeah you you know, like that? You yeah. like that? Yeah, he does stuff that like <laughs> players do. Sirianni's doing things that no coach really does. Now, we have told, we have been told that potentially Big Dom being removed from the sideline as Sirianni's little Italian tag team partner kind of keeping him a little bit level head had a bigger impact than people could imagine. But Sirianni, I know he came in with the less thinky, more athlete takeovery than the manure and the seeds and the flowers. And I think everybody was kind of mocking him. Then, boom, that team's culture becomes a real one. After last year with the collapse, now having to find two new coordinators, his coordinators that he hired last year did not work out. What are the thoughts of Eagles fans on Sirianni? And how big of a leash do we have? What, is, what has to happen next year, you think, without Eagles fans, you know, going absolutely bananas, which they are a very level-headed bunch. What, what is next year's expectations on Sirianni, you think? Well, man, oh, man, Pat, there's so much to unpack there. Let's get to it. Number one. I want you to send the memo over to Darius Butler that after year two on the matchup show, we're going to dial back the Indianapolis Colts on the show because all I get all year long is the Colts this and the Colts that, the Colts this and the Colts that on the show. We're going to just send a little email to Darius. We're going to dial it back. I'm doing it right here on national TV. Sal, Shane Steichen's out there. Going to be less Shane Steichen, going to be less Richardson, going to be less all of that. We're not going to focus that much on the call. As, as you know, Pat, I was always there in Indy when you guys were big, and I enjoy going to Indianapolis. I love that Coming JW back. Marriott. Mm-hmm. I love Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah. I love Tony Dungy. I love all of it. Okay, going to be a little less, totally a little cool. less of it. Yeah, that's a long time <laughs> ago. Hey, wait till you see what Shane's doing this year with Anthony Richardson. Oh, look out. Yeah. Oh, Oh my God, Sal. He'll uh-huh, break it down. Uh-huh. He much will break it Every down on the match. I can't Every wait week. to see it. But yeah, we're all the but way remember, back. Listen, the other thing is with you know, if if you're a head coach, and I love Big Doc, but if you're a head coach and you need your head of security to be the one that runs the team and keep it, <laughs> keeps it on track. Whoa. Uh, you need to give Big Dom a big pay raise right there. I'm just oh, yeah. saying. We don't know what Big Dom's but, making. But, I think he's got Gucci glasses on. Yeah. I'm not 100% put, sure. Put an extra zero on Big Dom's paycheck, all right? And by the way, whatever Nick Sirianni is saying in South Philadelphia, we call that the international symbol for peace, okay? Okay. Okay, Pat? Yeah, I like that a lot. How do we feel about him, though? What is the expectation? He's got to win, right? I mean, that has to happen. That's like his life now, right? Because you get to the Super Bowl, here's expectations. We're the Philadelphia Eagles. Our fan base has been starving, obviously, whenever Carson, Big Richard, and Doug Peterson win. And then we get back to it. It's like, and then the collapse happens, and there is those antics. Is Philly still behind Nick Syria? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think they're still behind? I think Philly is – they're still behind Nick Sirianni, but I'll say it. Nick Sirianni's on the clock. Every head coach in the NFL is on the clock, but mm-hmm. Nick Sirianni certainly is. Fourth year of a five-year deal, you bring in an old hand, Vic Fangio. You bring in an experienced guy to run the offense, Kellen Moore. 
you got to let those guys do their job. But, you know, I mentioned losing two of the core four, Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey. Still got Brandon Graham, still got the man, Lane Johnson. But it's time for Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni to step into the leadership breach left by those two guys leaving, Cox and Kelsey, as particularly Jason Kelsey, particularly Jalen Hurts. Got to step into the breach, into the leadership breach. That's why you bring in Saquon Barkley. You bring in a little bit of that veteran leadership. And, you know, I know Saquon very well. He's level-headed. He's going to help out Jalen Hurts in that aspect as well as the offense. But, again, it comes back to Cam Juergens and Jeff Stoutland. you got to have somebody that's going to call that protection. you got to be somebody on the field that's going to calm everything down. I think Juergens can do that. But nobody can replace Jason Kelsey. Nobody. Can Got it. it. Last question here from D. Butch. Yeah, it is a big loss in leadership. And uh, obviously, J- uh, Jalen Hurts, especially after getting paid, you come in there, you go to the Super Bowl, you have that collapse at the end of the year. I know there's a lot of questions outside of that locker room about his leadership. And even, you know, the OC or, uh, or Brian Johnson or now it's Kellen Moore. How do you see that going forward with Jalen Hurts? I know you got a, a good pulse of that locker room. Do you see him being that guy that can step up and, I guess, be a little more of a vocal leader as opposed to his natural – I guess, kind of from the outside looking in at least stoic self. Well, DB, you know, the one thing that you don't want to do, in fact, you and I have talked about this mm-hmm. in the green room at NFL Films. Green room. You can't oh. be somebody you're not. Yep. Right? You cannot be outside your personality. Then fellas will be like, okay, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know, it's not sincere. It's not true to yourself. So I have always admired Jalen Hurts, you know, in my opinion, unprecedented level of work ethic and single-minded vision uh, in the classroom, in the meeting rooms, on the field, on the practice field, on in the, the field, barber chair, so focused yeah. uh, in the barber chair. <laughs> but now he has to express himself in ways that a Jason Kelsey did. Are you taking control emotionally of the football team? And I think he's capable of doing that. He's a very adaptable young man, obviously coached by a coach, his father, and Nick Sirianni, the same deal. These two guys, I think, will adapt to the circumstances they've been given. They got a lot of talent. As I said at the beginning of this show, Pat, on on my first appearance on the Pat McAfee McAfee show, thank you so much for having me on the show, man. Thank you so much. But as I said at the beginning, this is the most fascinating team in the NFL right now. Hey. You're one of the most fascinating humans in the history mm-hmm. to cover sports. Everybody likes you. That's not normal. No. That doesn't happen, especially with how long you've been around. I think it's because you're an incredibly honorable paisan. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Sal Palantonio. Yeah, Thank you, yeah, Sal Palantonio. Hey, good. You see how cool he looks. Oh, yeah. unbelievable. Always. Oh, yeah. unbelievable. He looks Always. so cool. Poster behind him, Philly special. That's us Italians. Yeah, we. <laughs> you know, that's, that's mm-hmm. what us Italians the do. The older we get. Yeah, I was bummed. Better. Yeah, it is a bummer though. He wouldn't tell us about all his confirmed kills because, I mean, technically speaking, the public can't know about. Yeah, it. that's yeah. like uh, Mr. Rogers, right? Didn't Bingo. Mr. Rogers yeah, exactly. he's got, he's got a hundred plus of his own? Mm-hmm. Yeah, people forget about that. It's been redacted, you know. So oh. it's a shame. We'll never know. Redacted stuff though these days just gets yeah, gets dacted almost. Oh, it is. <laughs> It is dacted. Well, it when is. it gets dacted, the person you know it is re-redacted. Kills, right, kills themselves. Yeah. Tony. It's called unaliving themselves, please. <laughs> Welcome to 2024. Jeez. That's not what it's You've called. You've seen now. shooters. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back into the weeds and learn more about these teams from people that have boots on the ground. It's time to feel the Welcome back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go down to uh, a city that seems to be mourning their football team for oh, the last dude. few years. And uh, oh. Luke Combs actually pulled out a tweet. <laughs> yeah. And Luke Combs, uh, I think he just likes to have a good time, likes to write great songs, sing mm-hmm. great songs. He likes to punt cups. He likes to shotgun beers. What? Uh, Dab. He loves, oh, yeah. loves the App State Mountaineers. He doesn't. Just loves having a good time, loves representing for North Carolina. And what are we doing to the Panthers? <laughs> No first-round pick for McCaffrey a few years back, and now none for Burns? Are we just firebombing the whole team here or what? I usually don't comment on these kinds of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. Luke comes one of the most positive guys I think anybody's ever met. Yeah. Yeah. So for him to get to the point of like, what? what's 
I know we had the AI Panther jumping around. To that was cool. So Has cool. there been anything good since then? Joining no. us now, boots on the ground, friend of the program, ladies and gentlemen, Sheena Quick. Hey, hey, Sheena, great to see you again. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, we're fantastic. Seemingly Panthers fans. Not. I mean, Luke Combs is a guy who's not just going to go, Oof. What are we doing here? Burns franchise tagged. Then he's traded for a second and fifth. Gets $95 million with the New York Giants. Carolina Panthers say, we ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. Now, bringing an offensive lineman, I do believe, to protect Bryce Young. But what is the overall feeling in town about Bryce Burns being gone, McCaffrey being gone, and seemingly not much in return for everything that you kind of sacrificed over the last couple of years? Well, they feel like they got fleeced, and rightfully so, because now you have five holes left on that starting defense that finished fourth in the league, and everybody's like, okay, what are we doing? Yeah, may we may score a couple extra points, but will our defense be able to stop a nosebleed? And it's kind of head-scratching because they did retain EJ Evero, but they left him scraps to deal with. So everyone feels like they kind of got fleeced in that deal, only getting a second in next year's fifth and only moving up a couple of spots in the fifth-round pick. Um, coming up next month. So it is a, is it code red like Luke Combs' tweet there? Because he said, I need a long neck ice cold beer because I got a broken heart because he's Carolina Panthers. Is it code red down there? And how do they fix this? We just got to have faith. Code red. We got to faith that Canales can it's make Bryce Young great. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sheena. I mean, it's, it's definitely a uh, cause for concern. I think he needs to swap out that beer and grab some whiskey because it, this might be a <laughs> tough season right. <laughs> going ahead. You know, they did add some um, some some depth in that interior offensive line, which was absolutely important. But they could have done that and still done right by Brian Burns. Uh, they also lost Frankie Louvu yesterday to the commanders. And they're expected to trade or release both Von Bell and Dante Jackson. And they lost Yitor Gross Mato. So I don't even know how many DNs are on the contract at this point. It might be like two. Phenomenal names across the board. They're all Get out that. the door in Carolina. Connor's got a question yeah. about the decision making. Yeah, Sheena, is this all Dan Morgan? Is this him just kind of getting his hands on the team and starting the new era in, in Carolina with his guys and Canales' guys? Or is Tepper still involved um, a lot like he has been in the past? Well, Dan Morgan said that same day that you guys said he wasn't blinking in that presser, he said, I'm not a yes man. So I have to, he, he told me, he said, you're going to see, you're going to see, you can ask David Tepper. He pointed to David Tepper. He said, I ain't no yes man. Those are the words out of his mouth. And I do think that this is him putting his stamp on the team. And Canales also, he told us in Indy a couple weeks ago that he doesn't have any type of emotional attachment to any of these players. So that's, at, that's his advantage right now. And we're seeing that with some of those beloved names heading out the door. Yeah, and in return, you can normally get some stuff for this type of stuff. But whenever you're hearing that the coach is saying, we got no emotional attachment to anybody, other teams are hearing that as well. And you're potentially losing leverage by the words <laughs> that are coming out of your mouth. But hey, yeah. I've never run a team. Yeah. I have no idea. But with Canales, we're big fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He seemed like cool, handsome. His life story is one where he's had to overcome some stupid decisions and pitting himself in a bad spot. What he did with Baker is make him a bunch of money last year down in Tampa Bay. Will he be able to yeah. do that with Bryce? Or Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Sheena. So we've heard that um, Tepper is basically, he's learned his lesson. He's going to kind of take a step back a little bit and let Dan Morgan and Dave Canales kind of run the show. But with kind of what they're left with here and you look at the uh, the NFC South, like is, is Dave Canales just going to get fired <laughs> in two years like the last eight guys they've had? <laughs> Um, are going to? Well, and like, Are they going to be just at the same spot they're at right now uh, in a couple years looking for a new coach and hoping Bryce Young's the guy? Well, Tepper told us the same thing when he hired Frank Wright, and we see, you know, we have all these reports coming out once Frank Wright was shown the door. I do think he will have more. I, think, I do think Canales will have more grace, um, mainly because, like you said, they don't want to fire another head coach one, two years into the tenure because that instability is the reason that they are where they are now. That's what basically steamroll Brian Burns's value because two coaches head coaches ago we were told that he was a priority but with all of this change in and out the door I think that alone will give Dave Canales a lot of grace and um like I told you guys at Super Bowl I, I don't think that this team is going to be highly competitive next season uh maybe a season it's going to take a while to fix Jeez. the mess that has kind of be optimistic I guess built up over the last couple seasons diamond rings and football teams mm -hmm. torn mm -hmm. this boy apart mm -hmm. he's talking about the Panthers yeah he is. <laughs> he's talking about the Carolina Panthers yeah 
And he's got family. He turned the Panthers into a musical. Right? Well, yeah. this is Luke Combs' own words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are Luke Combs' words. Yeah. Crushed. Now that he's a football pundit, I mean, yeah, we, can do it. we just got to kind of look into the history yeah. of this entire thing. Last question here for you, Sheena. We appreciate yeah. your time from D-Butt. Sheena, you were much more optimistic last year going into the season. We need you to turn that optimism up a little bit more for your Panthers. Just but a little you, bit. You built up a little bit in the, in the offensive line, but um, you mentioned Burns and a lot of those starters being gone from the defense. I think Burns' entire draft class is gone from the team now. Who are the core, yep. those pillar guys left? We just had Sal Paolo. He was talking about the core four in Philly. Who are those guys left in the Carolina locker room that you can kind of, that you would like to build around, obviously outside of the young uh, Bryce Young? That's, you hit the nail on the head. They don't have that. They don't have that. I sat there when FanDuel came into town last week. I heard Jonathan Stewart and um, Luke Keekley kind of just chopping it up, telling all these stories of locker room stories and, and on-field stories. And you just don't have that in this locker room. And it has you haven't had that in the last couple of seasons. And I don't see the moves from yesterday helping that going forward. Now, I was optimistic. I'm not trying to put a clown nose on myself again. I'm not trying to put my face on the Jordan Pride meme. Okay. I'm not trying to do any of that. Okay. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Hey, you're a journalist. We cautiously. appreciate that. We appreciate you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sheena Quick. Thank yeah, you, yeah, Sheena. Yeah. You can find Sheena on 1340 AM Fox Sports. Uh, she also crushes on her show every time. Yeah. yeah. She has become our Carolina Panthers news plug. And the thing about it sounds terrible down there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bad. Really bad. She's been saying that for three years, I feel like. Yeah, since <laughs> our first so conversation years. with her. She was optimistic about Frank Wright coming in here, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The coaching, too. coaching staff, that, yep. the coaching staff mm-hmm. that they had. Caldwell. Here we go. Yeah. Pro days, they were the bell of the ball, remember, because they had a number one pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tepper's at these pro days. McCown's at these pro days. Frank Wright's they at these pro Taking photos, remember them? They were... Selfie yeah. videos. Yeah. So we're having Sheen on. Hey, how do we feel? Carolina Panthers fans would yeah. love C.J. Stroud on the team. And after the joke about playing basketball against each other, they're starting to think this is where the number one overall pick is headed. Then Bryce Young's thing, uh, pro day happens. They wouldn't mind Bryce Young on a team either. The Carolina Panthers were like, here we go. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, you earned the number one pick this yeah. year. It wasn't just that you no, traded it. And you don't even have it. Uh-huh. Then Christian McCaffrey leaves, you don't get a damn thing for oh, anything. No. Brian Burns leaves, you get a second and a fifth for it. You had him franchise tagged. And other franchise tag rules, I think there's like some other stuff that you could potentially well, the, get for that. They had an offer for two ones a year ago. And it's whatever. like, what are you? And Luke Combs, oh. I can't. I'm I done. can't. <laughs> These people want me to write a new song. How the hell am I supposed to write a new song? Do you see how inept my football team is? I'm watching all these other teams make these plays. Mm-hmm. Luke Combs is saying, mm-hmm. I travel around country, or city yeah. to city. How's your team? Great. Oh, of course they are. Oh, okay. Mm. How's your team? How, how's it? We sold 100 tickets for our last home game. Yep. Mm. They had 100 tickets. Do you remember that? Yep. 50 cents. Empty stadium. Absurd. It was an F1 race. Yeah. That's, whoa, whoa. It, it was. Yeah. That's literally what but it was. But No, but. It was more entertaining than that. Was it? There was nobody in that stadium. And now offseason free agency comes, and Morgan's like, hey, look, I wasn't here for all that, so we're going to have to go through some more terrible times. <laughs> okay? And then once we get through that, you're going to have to have faith in me, football guy, Canales football brain, actually. We're going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. It's just a blind optimism that you have, have to have. Speaking of a blind optimism, let's go back to boots on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to feel the beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good work. <laughs> that was a good addition. Thank you. Yeah, it was. I, was, so I was getting bad. a little bored. We got another one after this. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to I'm gonna end up standing on his table if I had a guest. Yeah, yeah, now, beats on the ground, ladies and gentlemen. Writer for The Athletic, friend of the program. From the Green Bay Packers, Matt Schneidman. Whoa, sweet tat. Do you have a full sleeve? I do, yes. Whoa, did you play soccer? (laughs) Yeah, how'd you guess? I play in a soccer league every Wednesday night here. Okay. Boom. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Congrats to you guys having a soccer league for over 30, over... No, I'm I'm 28, so I think it's all ages. Okay, you playing against olds in there? You, You crossing them up? No, it's mostly youngs. So uh, I, I'm the old in the league, yeah, pretty much. Young. How are you? What position do you play? You're pretty good? I, I play defense. I, I played defense in high school for one of the best teams in the state of Connecticut in 2012. No big deal. Um, I'm decent. I'm all right. Past my prime, though, for sure. Did you play cup or anything like that? No, none, none of those cups. I'm a massive soccer fan, though. I watch the Premier League every weekend. But uh, no, none of those cups. Hey, well, the sleeve looks sweet. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great catch. Nice. Sleeve looks sweet. Congrats to you getting out there and doing it. It's hard to find a game here in Indianapolis. I've been trying to play a little pickup or maybe in one of those leagues over 30 because I can do that now. Tough to find them. Happy to hear you're active. We need you to stay alive because we need you to continue to cover this Green Bay Packers team on a goody, which I think is going to be more electrifying than any Packers team of the past. Let's talk about the big news that happened yesterday, although there was numerous things. We heard the Aaron Jones deal was getting reworked by Ian Rappaport whenever he announced the Josh Jacobs signing to the Green Bay Packers. First of all, Green Bay Packers signing Josh Jacobs. Did we have any idea that that was coming? And then the Aaron Jones rework into the release. Did we have any idea that was coming from those that are close to the operation on an everyday basis like yourself, Mr. Schneidman? So here's what happened from uh, a couple people I've talked to with knowledge of the situation. So the Packers knew they had to get in the know at the time. time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, There is no doubting that Aaron Jones is, when healthy, one of the best running backs in football. He showed it the last five games of the season. He's entering the last year of his contract this year, or was, and his base salary plus his bonuses were around $12 million. What I was told was the Packers wanted to cut that number by about 50%. Um, so they started negotiations with Drew Rosenhaus, Jones's agent, before the combine. Didn't make much progress over the final two weeks. Um, and last Friday, presented Drew and Aaron Jones's camp with their final offer. Um, Drew, in turn, countered that, and the Packers basically said, from my understanding, that was our final offer. Uh, we're going to move on. At that point is when they went on and looked at, okay, can we afford any of these top running backs? They settled on Josh Jacobs, got him. But it was a stark change because on February 1st, Brian Gutekunst said to us, we absolutely expect Aaron Jones back. Now, Aaron Jones wanted to remain a Packer for life. It just turned out that his side was not willing to take the amount of a pay cut that the Packers were asking him to take. And now they turn to a guy who is more than three years younger than Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones was probably only going to be with the Packers for another year anyway. Okay, so... Less money than Josh Jacobs was offered Aaron Jones, we can assume? I think that's a a safe assumption, yes. So that's where Aaron Jones said that (laughs) that's probably where it got turned off. (laughs) I think pay cut, too. Yeah, I assume that's probably where it got turned off. So the Packers probably, because of what you said there about Josh Jacobs being younger, and we love Aaron Jones, love Josh Jacobs as well. So this is not just like in any – there's no shade towards anybody. And also – I obviously you've reported and talked about it. At one point, I wondered about Goody. Now it's just like I trust yeah. Goody. I trust Goody. Mm-hmm. Like I trust Goody Goods. What he's going to do. They probably had in their mind they were okay, completely okay if Aaron Jones did not accept that deal as they were pitching it to Aaron Jones and going forward with Josh Jacobs being a guy that they thought would take them over the hump potentially. Yeah, I mean they love Aaron Jones. There's no denying that. But as we all know. There's a business side to this, too. You can at one time be thrilled with what Aaron Jones gave you the last five games and think, okay, when healthy, he's really good, but also realize we got to look out for the long-term interests of this franchise. He just came off his most injury-hampered season of his seven-year career. He turns 30 next season. What's the best decision for the long-term interests of this franchise? So for about an hour there, I thought we were going to have an Aaron Jones-Josh Jacobs backfield. Oh, me Packers too. Get Ty was now splooging Josh- all over the place on our <laughs> yeah. show. He was. He was like, we got the best running back tandem in the mm-hmm. NFL by far. Yeah, maybe ever. And then Jordan Love <laughs> hasn't even, like, showcased his running as much. Like, he'll extend plays, but they haven't really even got into any of the – that he certainly can do. Mm-hmm. So, if you got Aaron Jones and you have Josh Jacobs and you explore a little bit more with Jordan Love running, plus with the young weapons, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Look out. Ty had Lombardi aspirations. <laughs> not that he doesn't need more. Do. Yeah, not that he doesn't need more, but that was a good time there for a little bit. Seemed weird if that was going to be the case. For sure. But obviously it all got sorted. Excited to see where Aaron jo- Oh, he's in the Vikings. Yeah. Oh, uh, you guys will see no. him play. He's too old, Schneidman said with his sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Tone has a question for you about another signing with the Packers. Yeah, man, I, uh, I'm a Steelers fan, so I kind of ha- know how the Green Bay Packers operate normally because they're so similar day one a huge signing in Xavier McKinney from like a national perspective that doesn't feel like a Packers move how did how did how did you guys feel about it locally yeah well uh Derek Henry just signed with the Ravens so I'm sure you guys will will touch on that oh, after I what I get oh, off. son of a um, bitch Matt Derek you guys Henry signed with the Ravens yeah Schneidman we're gonna do it after we kicked you off the show but <laughs> stealing a break that's fine <laughs> no we were um, gonna be very nice to you 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 did I, I good journalism that. there you did good journalism there uh, we will celebrate a Derrick Henry signing with the Ravens. Damn. 
Lamar and Derek. Are wow. you kidding me? What? Gus Edwards no longer Ooh. there. He yep. just signed with the Chargers. Chargers. So now Derek Henry of the Titans was allegedly going to maybe be a Cowboy. Right? Uh -huh. Remember, he was going to maybe yep. be a cowboy in this entire thing. I was hoping that he'd just come to the Colts, just come to the Colts. Instead, he's with the Baltimore Ravens on a $16 million deal worth up to $20 million, including $9 million fully guaranteed for the first year with the Baltimore Ravens, sources tell you. So this is seemingly like a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, one-year deal. Good for Derrick Henry. Good for the Baltimore Ravens trying to get over the hump. Yeah. And if he can stay healthy, which the Ravens have had issues at at the running back position, yeah. and he can play on a, as a man who's on a one-year deal trying to prove it, with Lamar Jackson, we talk about Jalen Hurts being able to freeze a safety because, you know, with Saquon Barkley being back there, what Lamar does to an entire box, to an entire team. Yeah. Alongside now, we got weapons, and we're opening this thing up. What a move. Yeah, Jeez. huge. What a move. By J.K. Dobbins coming back? No, he's a free agent. Oh, he's, oh, okay. I was about to say. He is back from the Achilles. I think he's yeah, trending I think he's a, I think he's a free agent. in a very good way mm -hmm. with Video. the Achilles. Now, we just saw a guy who tore an Achilles after him mm -hmm. just get paid $180 million from the Atlanta Falcons True. at quarterback position, so it's vastly different than a running back position. But Derrick Henry Jeez. in the same backfield as Lamar Jackson is obviously something you would piece together in a Madden game, and now the Baltimore Ravens are going to be doing it every single week over there. Ricard leading the way for Derrick Henry. Okay, so everybody talks about what's the next iteration of the the uh, tush push. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's putting 600 pounds <laughs> of yeah. running back in the backfield Power. and just going literally right down the pipe behind. Yeah, Linderbaum. Linderbaum. Ricard. They got Linderbaum, Ricard, <laughs> Derrick Henry. It's a right thousand up. pounds. Ricard's probably taking the snap. Derrick Henry's no, because he has a touchdown pass already. Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. Henry, so he's probably under center there with Ricard pushing him. Jeez, Louise, Are you kidding me? Matabuke? That's fourth and three. Put Matabuke in there. Oh my! Congrats to the Ravens. Yeah, you got better. Yeah. Now Schneidman, what we have you on the show for? Sorry. <laughs> Back to Tone Diggs. Tone, what did you want to know exactly? Xavier from? McKinney. Yeah, Xavier right. McKinney. Yeah, I, I think I wouldn't call it a misconception. But there is kind of this notion that the Packers aren't big spenders in free agency. The past couple of years, they haven't really been able to since they put all their, their pennies into the middle for the last couple of years of the Aaron Rodgers era. This is a massive signing. The Packers' top three safeties from last season were all unrestricted free agents. Uh, Darnell Savage, Jonathan Owens, who is uh, Simone Biles' husband, mm -hmm. and then Rudy Ford. So the Packers go and land the top safety on the market. Mm -hmm. This guy played every single snap last year, has a knack for the ball. Jeff Halfley, their new defensive coordinator, is a proponent of you know playing one high safety looks. To do that, you need a playmaking center fielder in the deep middle of that defense, and Xavier McKinney can do that better. Ty, you can attest to this than anyone since what? Micah Hyde, Nick Collins. When's yeah. the last oh, guy they? Guy the last time they had yeah. a guy like this? Ha -ha, Clint. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, huge deal, huge signing, great activity out of the Packers. Before the last couple of years, where the Packers haven't been able to spend, have they notoriously spent or have... not really? I mean, they they got you know Charles Woodson and like Julius Peppers, so they've landed like a couple marquee guys. But no, they don't they don't typically do this. But speaking of that, like there are still a couple holes out there. Obviously, Devondre Campbell gets released, Matt, um, and then I think a lot of Packers fans, you know, look at Patrick Queen and some of those other guys that are available out there. Do you think the Packers are done? Are they going to make any more moves, or are they kind of looking ahead at the draft where they have, you know, a decent amount of picks this year, and obviously Gutekind's track record with the draft the last couple of years has been spectacular? Yeah, five picks in the top 91 because of the, mm. the Aaron Rodgers trade and the Rasul Douglas trade. An additional Was that a first-rounder for Aaron? Supposed to no, be. I don't think he played 65% of the snap. <laughs> oh, it was a second round. Did not get a first round for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> no. Oh, I don't okay. think he met the criteria. Um, but Brian Gutekunst okay. did say don't need a couple weeks ago. Jordan loves a guy. Jordan loves a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. good, good, good. Uh, Gutekunst said a couple weeks ago, who knows, he might trade draft picks for a veteran player. Legereus Sneed is out there. The Packers might need another cornerback. So um, I think they might be done with the big signings in free agency. I could be wrong. They need depth at edge rusher, corner, inside linebacker if they release Devondre Campbell. Um, but they can also look to the draft and, and use some of that draft capital to get a guy. They, they have a lot of room. And uh, as we saw last year, this is a team to watch. The youngest player on among their skill positions on offense is Josh Jacobs. I saw someone on Twitter say Brian Gutekunst is like Leo DiCaprio because he likes him 25 and under. I had to log off Twitter for this. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, Leo. I thought too. I'm worried about what's going to come out. Yeah. yeah so not that 15, 20 Absolutely years. nothing. Yep. I agree. I agree completely. Just in a world that we're currently in, though. They're going to try to get him. 
over and over. There ain't again. nothing. He was get. in that Sunflower Moon. Yeah, Killers the Killers of the Flower moon. Sunflower Moon. So, that was yeah. a good movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was about long. Three hours into it, I forgot what movie I was watching. <laughs> sure, because I felt like I was actually in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> but Leo's just able to do whatever, whenever. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're young. Josh Jacobs, oldest. Speaking of young, yeah. Um, last question for us as we appreciate your time. This guy's got a sleeve tattoo. So yes. cool. And he plays uh, pickup soccer. Pretty cool. That's so cool. Is that is that clear with the fire moon? Yeah, what is that? Is that the sunflower moon there? Is that the... No, it, it's a bunch of different stuff. It's the skyline of New York City since that's where I'm from. Oh, so yeah. that's basically the whole forearm, yeah. I didn't know you are from New York City. Yeah, New York City yeah. blows, Yankees, brother. Man. And then he went to the New York City of the Midwest. Green Bay. Well said. Green Bay. <laughs> What's that casino yeah. out there that I love? Oneida. Oneida. You ever stop by the Oneida? Um, you ever stop by the Oneida Casino? Pat, I- I'm lucky with my radio show. I was able to afford a house that I'm moving into next month. But Oneida Casino has taken, and I hope my, my mom's listening to this. I hope she's not. Oneida Casino has taken so much money from me. It's not even- <laughs> hey, it's going to happen. Charge it to the game. Yep. You know, Because one time you're going to walk into that Oneida and you're going to walk out, whole new man. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're going to have yeah, your own new house. I hope so. That's what the Let's Oneidas hope. do. Shout out to the Oneida. Shout out. Shout, Shout out to the Oneidas. Love you, yeah. Oneidas. Last question. Um, I assume you're going to pitch in to help, and everybody is that's covering the Green Bay Packers because, boy, if this wasn't the right pick, it would be tough times for the next 10 years or so potentially in Green Bay. Jordan loves a guy. Jordan loves a beast. Jordan loves an animal. Feels like the way they played the Jordan Love pick was perfectly now. Hindsight 2020. The offense is young. He's great. He's only going to get better. Is there an extension coming? I don't think I fully understand his contract setup. They picked up his fifth year option. He has one year left. Are they going to sign him? He signed an extension or two year deal. What what is it exactly? And is that deal going to happen this offseason? When do we expect that to get finished? So Jordan Love signed a one year extension on May 3rd, 2023, to basically uh, prevent the Packers from guaranteeing him around $20 million on his fifth-year option, which would have been 2024, because they didn't want to guarantee him $20 million bucks without knowing if he was any good before he ever started a game. So basically what happened is they guaranteed him a bunch of money up front for last season without tying them to much on the back end just in case he stunk. Uh, he doesn't stink. So the CBA says you can't sign another contract extension until 12 months after your last one. So he signed his last one on May 3rd. The earliest he can sign his new one, which he's going to sign for a crap ton of money, is May 3rd. So nothing's going to happen for the next, you know, seven weeks. But he's going to get a big payday. David Mulugeta, who is his agent, is going to make sure he gets every last dollar. Um, I don't know if it's going to start with a fifty million, a mid to high forty million, but it's going to be a lot of freaking money. It's whatever it is. It's, I mean, Mulugeta is going to be looking for that thing to be guaranteed to yeah. <laughs> yeah. do it. Do I mean, it. We appreciate the hell out of you from the Athletic, ladies and gentlemen. Match time. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Last time now, big move, new quarterback potentially in town, Steel City. Oh, well, yeah. let's feel the beat. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, writer from The Athletic, covers the Pittsburgh Steelers, once kept an Italian sub in his cargo khaki shorts pocket for 12 hours Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then ate it while laying in bed. And he said it was still warm because his legs, and we quote, are nature's microwave. Mm-hmm. Dog. Disgusting. You watch the mouth. This is Chase Louise. He's got to wear both Achilles at the same damn time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. A man who was given a broken toilet down in Texas. Yep. He didn't do it to it. <laughs> Mark Caboli. Yay! Yeah. Caboli, good to see you. That's good kitchen. It's good kitchen, Caboli. <laughs> wow. How I don't you? even know how to react to that. It was the best intro of all time. I, I, honestly, yeah. as I was laying it out, I was like, damn, I'm batting a 1,000 right now. Uh, and then D-Butch goes, disgusting. I was just yeah. visualizing oh, the, the, the sandwich, you, warm, 12 hours, biting into you, it. You got to do what you got to do, d But I'm telling you. I mean, <laughs> it was 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm handed a sub. I'm not going to waste it. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Get in the pocket. Shout out to Phil, by the way, that. getting that sub down in your pocket. Yeah, that. Phrase, Phil. Phrase right. Okay, uh, yes. as we're coming up on a hard out here, which we don't necessarily love because we wish we could talk to you for three hours, um, I see that you were wrong 
about Mason Rudolph. He is not going to be the quarterback for the Steelers next year. It's going to be Russell Wilson. Kaboli, I know you're pumped. I know you're jacked. Steelers <laughs> going to the Super Bowl. How do you feel? What's the city of Pittsburgh like? Great. Oh, they're in, they're fired up. Um, I think they're thinking they're getting Russell Wilson of five years ago than oh. two years ago, oh. to be honest with you. So uh, uh, it's, it's funny how it works here uh, in Pittsburgh. Obviously, you guys know – uh, last year, well, a couple months ago, this team was so far away from being a contender, uh, and that was what everybody was saying. And now you add Russell Wilson, and you're Super Bowl bound, <laughs> going twenty and zero. So, hey, it was a good pick. I mean, it, it cost them no money, but in the process, you're getting rid of Kenny Pickett for the most part. I mean, uh, so. You're going to start over after Russell leaves here if it's a year, if it's a two years. So ten. There's, might be there's ten. some good and some bad to there's it. Might be ten years. He's yeah. got team three keeping him healthy. Might be a fresh start. Don't you think this is good? He and R.D. Smith, we're going to utilize Nage. We got Pickens. Right. Deontay's potential on his way out. Moose. Strengthening up the offense line. Friar Moose going to be making plays, even though Russell allegedly doesn't like to throw over the middle to the tight end. But yep. nonetheless, we got a team, don't we? Don't we feel pretty good about where we're at, especially with that defense is always going to be good, don't you think? A little bit of optimism here, Kaboli. Russell Wilson's bringing leadership, what? championship quality. What? He's bringing sandwiches, the danger witch, Ooh. and his nickname is Mr. Unlimited. Kaboli? You, you guys know me good enough to know that I'm not optimistic about anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. <laughs> the pens are dead, too. Oh, That's not oh even boy, time <laughs> so, I mean, you're right. I mean, they, they are a lot better situation than what they were a year ago. Um, their defenses should be getting healthy. And, hey, somewhere on the south side, Omar Khan's in that office oh, yeah. working the magic. He got a decent amount of money to play with here, and he's just waiting, waiting to pounce here. I mean, $25 bucks they got right now. A couple of restructures, they can get the 50 Extending Hayward, they can get the 60 They like to spend to the cap. So I wouldn't be surprised Hell if the yeah. con artists – Makes a big move here. He's just waiting to strike. Last question here. We got about 30 seconds from Tone Diggs yeah. down there in the south side. Yeah, Mark, no, no shock that we didn't make a big move on day one. That's just not what the Steelers do. What do you think the big move is? Is it going to be O-line? Could it be Justin Simmons? Where, what position or player do you think could be the big move? Well, I think the best part would be uh, uh, they need a center, but yeah, that wouldn't be sure. a splash move. Uh, Patrick Queen is just sitting there. I mean, is, if right? you know anything about the Steelers, we're just salivating about it, potentially getting an inside no, no, linebacker no, no. Mm. of that quality. And you know what? They probably need another uh, wide receiver. So yes, you, they do. if you're going huge, you swinging for the fence here. I'm looking Patrick Queen. I'm looking at a guy like Calvin Ridley. Oh, yeah. They got enough money. They got a lot of things to do here uh, and add some depth. But um, they will definitely add some people here. They need a cornerback as yeah. well. They need some spots here. But uh, uh, I wish they would have moved a little bit quicker on center. That's a very key yeah. position, obviously, that yeah. they just don't have anybody there right now. All right. Hey, we got to get to a hard out. Uh, one last go for that Rudy sub that you got a chance to eat yeah. right there. That's yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. yep. We appreciate the hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Athletic Covering the Steelers, Mark Bull. Thank yeah, you, Mark! See, greatest or what? Yeah, yes. I love Best. that guy. Why are you guys making so much noise behind him whenever he's talking? He's a funny guy. Yeah, we, there's one guy. Crazy. Look at that face. <laughs> Zoom in on that face. He's a, he's a funny guy. I don't know what you want me to say. It's hard not to laugh. Ty has the most guilty face of all time. <laughs> hour two is on the other side with AJ Hawk. We'll have Will Lutz in the third hour. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take three. Three. He's saying don't go off the top. It's too shallow. All you're going to hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up, they start shaking it, they go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brewer, the quarterback from Lake Travis, his dad was a 
quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 Bologna. hey, hey, hey. Boomer Coming here up. is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot of uh, losses, but you got uh, to respect the hips being able uh, to get uh, uh, am I going to make the college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. <laughs> <laughs> so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. And we are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. Last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> That's full commitment, by the way. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. Beautiful people, welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this, wow, a lot has happened. Tuesday, March 12, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Sports. Our glorious sports are fantastic, and the NFL has been cooking up stories for us to chit chat about for the last two days that have been nothing short of glorious. The toxic table is here at Boston Carter and at Ty Schmidt. See them in a video game soon. Whoa! Slow down. What a night you guys had. I only got to hear the stories of your particular evening, and mm -hmm. now the other side of the story is starting to trickle in through my text messages. Is that right? From the other people, yeah. And, uh, Did they enjoy it? They're telling the story the same way you guys are okay, telling the story. Okay, perfect. Oh, perfect. You guys crushed it. Boom. Yeah, you guys Boom. Crushed it. One half of the boys are going to be in WWE 2K24. Yeah! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting that done for us. One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs, who is in fighting shape, will not be in the game. But a man who will be in the game, nine-year NFL vet, a man who hosts the Man to Man podcast, NFL matchups, and hosts everything DB, good D, bad D. One of the coolest looking humans on earth, Darius Yeah, That was awesome. Thank you for that. Hey, no problem. No problem. I would like to make everybody uh, well aware of the fact that we did not take anybody's spots on that game. No. 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 That was, that was, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm a massive wrestling fan. Obviously, I follow along with the wrestling IWC, okay? I would... I would, too, be pissed if somebody that I was a fan of was maybe left out of game for me or oh, my friends. Oh. Yeah, these guys. Somebody, somebody could get left out for that. Those two put, cooked up last night. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. <laughs> the resume that these boys filled out for who they want to be in the ring. 
and the characters that they would like to have. The name of their moves oh, yeah. that they got going on. Oh, yeah. Ty had four airplane whiskeys on the way to right. the thing, and he said, that's one drink. I said, Ty, that is actually poured out four shots. Guys. This is one drink. And then has another one, I think, before we land, because we did hit a little bit of a, yeah. a carnival ride on the way in. A little bit. So Ty gets a little, and we go in there. So he's about five whiskeys deep next to Connor, and Connor seemed to be a little extra toxic. And these WWE 2K people just sit him down and go, all right, tell us about your tag team, the Toxic Table. And these two just start... As from the way I've been told, because I was not there, as if you guys had this scripted, like you knew exactly what you were going to say. You guys had worked on this. When did you work on this? So we didn't really work on it, to be completely honest with you. But what, like you just mentioned, and I might have had some vitamins. We were in the right mind frame that when they handed us this sheet of paper with like, hey, we need to know your height and weight. Right away. Well, I'm 6'3", 240. So yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to need uh, that in the game. Exactly. Uh, no matter what. And then they have different type of things. Bailing, These people are professionals. Fighting yeah. style. <laughs> He's fighting. What's your fighting style? Fighting style. I mean, I'm a high flyer. <laughs> That's just what I am. I'm an athlete in there. What else do you want me to do? I, t I forget what Ty was. A technician. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. kind of like a modern day Dean Malenko, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> a man of a thousand holes. Exactly. Uh -huh. Bingo. Bingo. Joining us now is another man who is in the video game. And I heard the answers he gave to these questions. <laughs> Questions were even more absurd than the toxic table. Can't wait to see your characters that once again are taking nobody's spot. No. No. Now, was that a full give and take with the people that make the video game <laughs> whenever it was initially pitched? And I said, uh, if I go in there, I, I feel like some of the boys should go in there. You know, it's kind of our thing. If not, I'm okay not to be in the game until, you know, maybe I get back into wrestling if I ever get back into wrestling. And they're like, oh, let's see what happens. And then there's a little give and take. And then obviously the, the message is sent back like, hey, all good. Nobody's getting a spot taken. Anybody that was going to be in the game is going to be in the game. Would you like to add some of your guys? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and they said, we need them in Houston, Monday Night Raw. You guys got scanned. Oh, yeah. Right? Photos. Whole yep. thing. Well, 76 cameras. 76 cameras, 8K cameras yep. uh -huh. around us in this train. I mean, you guys got the full kit and caboodle. Oh, yeah. Congrats to you guys. Joining us now is a man who's in an attic in Ohio. He's in another video game as well. They had some cameras on me from so, uh, from some fine social people at WWE, and they're like, what's it like to be in a video game? I was like, why? Well, I've actually had the opportunity to be a fat ass in NCAA 2K. They made me a 400 pounder. <laughs> okay. And then I had, uh, uh, I had the opportunity to be a 71 in Madden. Yep. Thank God. So this is actually my third video game. I think same exact thing for this guy, but he had... And, NCAA, 95. 95. He's on yeah. the Ohio State yeah. all-time team. And on the, Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> on the Madden, I think he's probably like a 90-something. Mm -hmm. And in this one, with the way he described his character just by looking at him, I think he might be a 99. Be yeah. a sure. Ladies and gentlemen, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. A.J., you're, you're, the way you described, what was it? You want uh, Ultimate Warrior, Bill Goldberg, a hint of Hulk Hogan, Bob, Bob Backlund, <laughs> yeah. and give me some ricochet, Yeah, I think is how you described it all. But we're incredibly proud of you, bud. Another video game and another one where you're going to be rated we think pretty high because of the mm -hmm. performance you put on last night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. i tell you what, it was a fun night. It really was. I was not expecting that, and I got to build my character from uh, you know, from the ground up. So, yeah, it was a great time. I enjoyed myself. Thank uh, you for setting that up. No problem. While I was getting interviewed one time, though, I was just making things up off the top of my head <laughs> that, like, the, you guys will do mm -hmm. because this is before show. So you guys haven't even done your full song and dance describing what you want your character to be like in wrestling and what you would be if yeah. you guys were actual mm -hmm. professional wrestlers, obviously. <laughs> so I started making things up. I was like, and AJ's going to be in there. He's coming in flying with his jaw. We know his jaw is the most lethal and thing. So they ask AJ later, like, what do you want your finisher to be? And he's like, oh, I think I go to the top rope and then I just want to fly with my jaw. <laughs> to a temple. It's like now they got game video game makers that have to code mm -hmm. him. Mm. Arms, yeah. back. Yeah. arms back. <laughs> arms back. No, arms back. Arms yeah. back. Completely back. Oh, okay. Like this. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Like, like this. Yeah, yeah. Like a dolphin. Yeah. And you were reenacting this in front of the people, right? Oh, I showed them. Yeah, I, I showed them exactly what they need. Did they had a blazered up? And they filmed it. His entrance, that he had walked <laughs> through his entire entrance. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like, so when you come out, who are you waving at? What are you doing? We're not waving. What are you talking about? We're running right to the ring. <laughs> He's like, like Ultimate Warrior. It's but great. unlike Ultimate Warrior, when I get in, I want to feel the ropes a little bit. I want to make sure that they're sturdy enough. He said, what'd you say? Then I want to hit them six times. But never take your eye off your opponent, right? Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> These people are doing us a favor. Yeah. You guys made a mockery out of all no, 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 we did no, we, 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 we did not make a mockery out of this. They enjoyed it. No. Boys, what we need, okay, what we need is 
Just like the Undisputed Era had their run where they were dripped in gold. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just like the Judgment Day now has a lot of titles, they ain't got the Intercontinental title, and J.D. McDonough was nowhere near getting no, the last No, 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 no. Yeah. is. Our entire pack, I believe it's uh, coming out when weather's warm. Mm-hmm. We need to be dripped up in gold. We will yeah. be. We need our people. Okay, listen, people that watch and people that listen, we need you to play for us, and uh, we need you to boost our ratings, <laughs> yep. and we need to win. Exactly. Because there was a lot of controversy about us being in this game, Sure. and the boys took a lot of pride in the work that they put in on themselves mm -hmm. to be the professional yeah. wrestlers that they would be in this actual game. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, that process, uh, we were saying, you know, like when they have those interviews, typically I'm guessing that takes – Two to three minutes. All right, perfect. Got it. You guys are good. See ya. Me and Connor are with those those guys for thirty five minutes. Yeah. I mean, really, <laughs> down to a detail of what color the toe is on your boot. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Every uh -huh. nook and cranny, no stone unturned. Uh, Five whiskey and die. It's deep. It, yeah. They Just, messed up. So when you you obviously were moving a lot fast. You had to get in there with Cole and, and look at you know everybody. do the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Do the actual yeah. show. Do your job. Yeah, so they the handed us the sheet of the questions, you know, while you were getting your hair shot, we had a good probably 15, 20 minutes to kind of scan over the sheet before we actually go back. Because it did get it's quiet out there in the trailer. I was wondering what oh, yeah. you guys were doing. I thought you got lost or something. No, you guys were working. Wheels right were me. turning. As soon as we got that sheet of paper, it was game to match. I still have it, just in case I think of anything new and we need to send them something that we need in the game. Hey, shout out to the WWE for always being yeah. way too kind to us. Yeah. Shout out. So Legitimately. Cool. Way too kind to us. So nice. You guys got an ear for, uh, Very cool. Mm -hmm. for the commentary while you're sitting up in the arena. And Houston, Texas, um, what a city. Far. It Texas is. is so far. It's far. So far. I mean, San Antonio was, might oh, as well have been the, Europe geez. last Monday. And then Houston, I thought it was going to be much shorter because I think I flew to Houston a bunch with the Colts. I don't remember. It's all the way down there on the golf. It is mm -hmm. way yeah. down there. So shout out to Texas being incredibly hospitable hospitable to the WWE over the last week or so, like selling out, everything awesome. You guys are really far away. Great group of people down there. Great. Really good group yeah. of people down there. And to the WWE, everybody, we get to see every single week. We appreciate the hell out of you. Now, let's talk about the NFL. Can't wait to see you guys in a game. AJ, yeah. can't wait to see your entrance, you know, just because of how meticulous you were mm -hmm. about six yeah. times. I need six times in there. Never taking my eyes off my opponent. So you're running the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just staring. Set the tone. Set the tone. <laughs> What's your offense? I forgot what your offense. Uh... I'm all uh, headbutts, like pull their head, headbutt into my head, boom, that a lot. Uh, tackle, just tackle people, and then clothesline. All yeah, day long. spear, yeah. clothesline, yeah. headbutt. What? You got the great Kali's moveset. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Well, I think he is yeah. actually doing the, <laughs> yeah, the, the bonk on the head. <laughs> The bonk, yep. the bonk yep. on the head. All right, let's talk a little bit of NFL here. Uh, big things happened while we were down in Houston having the time of our life. I don't think people fully understand. And I've been a great told, time. I've been told a great this, time. I've been told, I've been told this by a couple people. You know, Chip Kelly said it the other day on the show, and other people have said to me while I was at break. It was like you and your guys look like you guys are having so much fun. It's like how could you not? Yeah. Literally, how could you not? Yeah. Now, there's obviously a lot of bullshit that comes with everything that we do. Everything has bullshit that comes alongside of it. But I'm so incredibly lucky to be working with the humans that I'm working with and also the companies that we're working with currently because like everybody we're kind of working with right now gets it mm -hmm. at the highest level. Yeah. Now, where it matters. Yeah, where it actually, the people that have actual say. Mm -hmm. All these other ones, who cares? Who cares? And that has been a real, <clears throat> I think, enlightenment experience for all of us mm -hmm. to get to that point. Yeah. But I want to let you know, we are having a good time. We do enjoy the hell out of this. We are lucky as shit that this is our lives, and we are incredibly thankful for you. And for those of you that are watching and listening and allow us to do this for a living, if you're a good gamer, we need you in there. Mm -hmm. We need you running our pack up yeah. because the hammer... Dad, boys are potentially on deck mm -hmm. as another tag team. Oh, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine Tone at this new weight. He's going to be a high oh, flyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They might put him down in 205 Live. We're not 100% <laughs> sure, but let's talk a little bit about the NFL. I think big news out of yesterday is obviously Aaron Jones gone. He's now on the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, that was a moral rival of the Green Bay Packers within the division. And then how about in the running back position, Saquon Barkley, New York Giants, going to their... Biggest rival, oh. Philadelphia Eagles. Seemed like that happened yesterday in a big way, a couple different times. I don't remember this to be as common over the last few years. What do you think big takeaway is yesterday, AJ? And what are your thoughts on those two moves in particular? Well, Aaron Jones was a, a bit surprising, I guess. I understand him not wanting to take another another pay cut because he took one last year, didn't he? Yes. yes. I believe. So, yeah, not taking well. another one. But then just 
Is he has he signed with the Vikings? Is that official? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, it's a bit. You can't get you can't be upset at somebody like say, oh, you're a traitor to the Packers or whatever. We understand it's a it's a business and what they do. But yeah, Aaron Jones is awesome. He really is. Saquon signing in Philly, I think that's a huge bump for them. I, I love what he can do, how hard he runs, how tough he is. Um, but man, I mean, Derrick Henry now today, right? He's with the mm-hmm. Titan or uh, Ravens. Ravens now. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Then that make uh, that, that kind of like yeah, it checks out. Wasn't on the radar at all the last couple of days. Derrick Henry's going to the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry's going to be a great Cowboy. Derrick Henry's doing this. Then I guess there was thoughts Derrick Henry's going back to the Titans, even though everybody seemingly thought it was over from different sectors of football after the combine and the conversations there. But him at the Ravens makes so much sense. Yeah. Like yeah. That is – now granted, new OC, okay? I think we still view the Baltimore Ravens as old OC when it was double tight end. Mm-hmm. We're running the rock every single time. This past year, they opened up more than they have yep. in the Lamar Jackson era. They spun it a little bit more. Lamar had his best year through the sky, even though he didn't have his best numbers, and he still won the MVP. But you had this stallion to the backfield. We just assume that's going to help the Baltimore Ravens offensively. 1,000%. Good offensive line, and then you build around, you know, what Zay Flowers did his rookie year in that passing game. You mentioned opening up the passing game. The numbers won't be great because they were beating so many teams by so many points, um, but it, Lamar definitely uh, evolved as a passer within this top mocking offense, so I'm looking forward to that next step. First season, you know, you win an MVP, you go to AFC Championship. Now you got you to get over the hump in that championship. This championship, not championship or bust, but you have a quarterback that's one of the highest paid players in the league, new OC, great defense. You're going to lose some pieces, but you expect them to build there. So I think I think Derrick Henry will help. You just pray to God he can stay healthy because the luck or the fortune, the bad fortune for that Baltimore Ravens backfield for whatever reason has been has been shitty for the last few years. Patrick Queen is available. We'll see where mm-hmm. he ends yep. up. Obviously, he's a big name that is still out in the market. The big conversation yesterday after we saw Kirk Cousins sign for $180 million in Atlanta as a 35-year-old coming off an yep. Achilles tear. My God. Hundred guarantee. Mm. When when will he be full go? Do we know? I think he. I saw him dancing. Definitely I mean, in time. Him like, being March. on that uh, Project Adventure thing at his kid's birthday because of how shaky the bottom is. From yeah. what Aaron has told us that's probably a great sign. I feel like he feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel like Kirk Cousins feels good, and I would assume the Atlanta Falcons need to get some assurances from numerous people, their people and other people, that he was going to be okay after you give a hundred million dollars guaranteed. And then Russell Wilson signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Gardner Minshew signed with the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Jacoby Brissett signed with the Patriots. Oh, yeah. Jameis Winston. Signed Signed with the Cleveland Browns. Well, who's the Vikings quarterback going to be? As one journalist said, (laughs) the greatest ball thrower to ever put on a San Francisco 49ers jersey. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Formerly of the Jets, the Panthers, the Niners. Now on a $10 million deal, Sam Darnold is the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. I like it. I like to play. I like to play. I have no idea if Sam Darnold makes the right decisions against defenses. I have no idea if Sam Darnold's recall from the fourth quarter is good whenever something happened mm-hmm. in the first quarter. I have no idea what Sam Darnold looks like as a quarterback because I haven't seen him play in a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all I know is Kevin O'Connell can get ton yes. digs open yep. if he had to. For sure. So if yep. all the chatter about Sam Darnold being a guy, he can spin it. This guy can spin it. Well, if KOC can get people open, if he could spin it, that's all they're really looking for. Yeah. Ten million bucks, obviously, is a great price for a starting quarterback. But obviously, if you go with a younger guy that you find in the draft, a pick twelve would be cheaper. Maybe they're still planning on utilizing that pick. But this feels like the right like as it came through the wire, it was like, Oh, that makes sense, Sam Darnold. I didn't even know Sam didn't even know Sam Darnold was available. Had no idea he was even in the conversation. But then you think of what KOC can do and what Sam Darnold has been complimented to doing. It's like, that makes sense. He can deliver the ball. He's a veteran. He's not going to get rattled, hopefully, too much. Is his brain there on making decisions? I guess KOC can do that for him. That's kind of what we're leaning on here. How do you feel about it, AJ? Yeah, don't you think they kind of sell it to him? Hey, this you can be like a, a Baker Mayfield type Bingo. situation where you come and you know, you revive your career. Here you go. It helps everybody out. You kind of get to become the quarterback who we thought you were when you were drafted. I think that's kind of the situation we're looking at in Minnesota. Yeah, and they got Aaron Jones in the backfield. That's good. Yep. Yeah. That obviously yeah. helps. That wideouts. Hawkinson. I was going to say the same thing because they were 
Baker was one in that draft. Sam Darnold was three. They both started with shitty franchises in the Jets and the Browns. Both <laughs> go to the Panthers, then go well, out west. But, and then, but, but Baker what? Mayfield did win rookie of the year, broke a passing well, record. Won a playoff won game. Won a playoff what? game in Cleveland. Well, yeah. that's because yeah. Sam, Dar- Sam uh, Darnold did. Open the coolers. Nah. Yeah, Sam Dar- 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 like, feels like you don't like Sam Darnold. No, I, I look. I don't have anything personal against any of these like, guys. Yeah. And I'll be did out, you watch the film on Sam Darnold or Zach? Was- I did. It was Sam Darnold. Oh, and that was the one you say this guy's yeah. cheeks. And, and then yeah. and then apologized <laughs> after he started three and zero. No, no, I didn't. Apologize. He was playing well for the Panthers. He, he did play well. He did have a good start in the Panthers. But what was it? Um, cheeks? You said hey, he's got it. That's the pass. That's really? the pass. He's got a fresh start now. But cheeks. He's got a great offensive mind as a head coach. No, he hold on, D. But you're powering through this. Wait, wait, wait. Make sure we set the table here because we were wondering about Sam Darnold because we didn't know if it was the Gase effect. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Adam Gase was there. Sure. And remember, before Morgan's uh, press conference at Carolina of not blinking, it was the Gase yeah. press conference that was the epitome of, wow, this guy won't blink. Yeah. What this guy's job. eyes mm-hmm. are insane. Then we see how it all goes. And maybe it's the Jets organization, not so much Gase. But at the time, it was like, this Gase guy stinks. You get out from underneath the Gase umbrella like Tannehill did out from Miami, goes to Tennessee. They start having success. Maybe Sam Darnold will be able to move somewhere and have great success. So we're like, D-Butch, need you to watch the film. D-Butch watched the film, came on the show, what, two days later, he's yeah. like, Cheeks. Yeah, no, I'm right. stinks. Yeah. That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. You say he's Actors, making the yeah. same mistakes in the third quarter that he's making in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. He's not he, – they are in the same disguise in the fourth quarter as yep. they were in the first quarter. He wasn't seeing it. Those are the little things, I think, that don't get broken down yeah. whenever they're talking about a quarterback. That's something he can learn and evolve through, right? He can, uh, absolutely. At this point in his career, he, he could be a completely different player, but that's something I look at as a player and now as an analyst on TV. If I'm watching a quarterback, hey, I'll watch, you know, I'm not I'm – not, Gonna be Dan Orlowski. I'm not watching every snap of every play. He was up of 6 04 a.m. reading I'm, the Bible, watching film. <laughs> that's all. I'm personally not doing that, but if I'm in week 12 of a season and I wanna, if I haven't been watching a team as closely enough, I'm gonna watch every couple games, watch certain games against certain defenses. And then you get into the flow of a game, you get the third downs, you get to the red area. You can kind of, AJ knows this as well, you kind of have like the flavor of the week for either the defense or the offense. Okay, it's a bunch set. It's third and seven, it's third meeting. We get to that. Okay, he made the same read, same coverage. Same mistake in the first quarter. Okay, I get to the end of the second quarter. Same breed, same coverage, same situation, same mistake. Fourth quarter, same situation. Like, that tells me it's coaching, obviously, but it's on a player, especially a quarterback, to be able to adjust and evolve throughout the flow of a game, a season, a career. But obviously he's talented. That's three teams ago. Yeah, three teams ago, but – a lot since of football. Then, I mean, yeah. since then, a lot of football. He just been with uh, Shanahan for a year, so obviously you learn a bunch there. But now he's going to KOC. So from this Mick Shanahan tree, McVay and Shanahan, uh, you would expect him to grow and uh, and be better. He's got great weapons around him, so it's going to be no more excuses. And uh, I'm rooting for him. I hope he turns his career around. Yeah, and just because that's what happened under Gase at the Jets doesn't mean that's what's going to take place now. Right. If he's able to, you know, reach his potential, sure. it's like what we we think that at KOC though, don't we? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. That's how I yeah, feel. Sure. Oh, yeah. See, and how old do you think uh, Sam Darnold is? Ooh, so many teams. 27? 27? Yeah. yeah, he's 20. He just turned 26. Still young? Remember he came out when he was like 19? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy had no shot. No. <laughs> no shot. Looking back on it, hindsight, no chance. First pass was Go a to New York six. against the Lions. And then NFL yes. Films, remember, yeah. we love... We all have great relationships with NFL Films. We're very thankful for everything NFL Films has done mm-hmm. for the NFL and for our program. We've paid him millions of dollars, but you get it. Right. I think in return, we've done a lot, too. That might be a new negotiation Sure, this upcoming offseason. Love okay. what they did with Bill, too. Love what they did. I mean, love NFL Films. Mm-hmm. They're the 33rd owner That's right. Absolutely. in the NFL. Like, NFL Films is the 33rd owner. I got nothing but respect for him. They did Sam Darnold wrong yeah, they did. with I'm seeing ghosts out there. Yeah. And that's, like, the first time in the history of Mike Dups that I've ever seen somebody get, like, killed. Because I assume— Did they not think— did they not think it was going to be like a negative for him they if they put hate, that out? They hate that it got that. that That's what I'm saying. The yeah. NFL films, okay. I, I assume yeah. it was Good. somebody made that decision, yeah. and that person yeah. was not with NFL films much longer. I, I would assume. Yeah. Just how NFL films is, they feel like they got to protect the shield, protect mm-hmm. the players. Like they're very thankful that players allow them in. Like they understand the everything about it. They'll protect players from coach, their own coaches. You know, yeah. like there is, there's a lot that NFL films has to do. So I would assume one person made a decision. In real time, mm-hmm. and then that person also got <laughs> yeah. out mm-hmm. of this entire thing. But that leading to him playing the way he played, with it being the Jets, yeah. it was like what a tough. Remember start. the mono, his whole mono oh, thing yeah. too. 
He had uh-huh. mono for like half a, a year, I feel like. I forgot about that. That was Footsteps' first time, right? Yes. yes. With uh, New York with Jets. The Jets, yeah. Old Flacco was over there. Well, speaking of, like, I, I get Darnold. He's a young guy in KOC for sure. And, you know, he's making up to $10 million. Like, is Joe Flacco asking for $30 million? Because why yeah, was he, he doing? Why wasn't he the first guy they would call? Like, the, he played so well. This offense is ridiculously good with Aaron Jones. $10 million might be their max. Is, yeah, is that yeah. it? Because it's Ten, Justin Jefferson? Ten millions might have been that might have been the Vikings match. <laughs> what is Flacco asking for? I don't know. Twenty five couple years. I mean two or three Min- years. Minshew got uh, what? Two for twenty five or yeah, with fifteen guaranteed, yeah. Minshew yeah. fits that uh he, he's a Raider. It feels like a Raider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, he 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 got one for 8. up to point five. Yeah, eight, uh, uh, he was up to eight, and then Jameis was Jameis was eight point five, and Mariota was like six point two. I believe. well, and Jameis just came out and said that uh, he do, he does see himself as a um, starter still, but God came and spoke to him, and he needs to be a leader of men now, and he's going to do that for Deshaun Watson. Okay. okay, now he's been a leader. Of men. I'm not making that up. Yeah, that's the problem. That's that's what I'm yep, saying. That is the problem. Justine Anderson is reporting. Just got off. Uh, just got off the phone with QB oh. Jameis Winston on his decision to agree with Cleveland. Yes, I still envision myself as a starter. I will train as such. However, the Lord has also called me to lead by impacting, increasing the men who are around me. Having the opportunity to work with Deshaun and help him be the best he can possibly be is my main mission. Now, if Deshaun has to heal up for whatever reason, and I have to take a few games off of him, I'm gonna be ready to do that. But I have to fulfill God's purpose first before my own heart's desire. Because ultimately, I desire to win some Super Bowls. And this roster that Cleveland got looks like they can do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And then he posted a dub. And that dub right there is not for him to eat. Mm -mm. That's a showcase to the Lord how he feels about his opinion that he put on his heart and his brain. Exactly. That's another big dub for the big God. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what he said. Big dub Mm -hmm. for the big God. And I appreciate however you need to get to the mindset to be a backup quarterback, yeah. you do it. And if the Lord did put that on his heart, and although he was being selfish and still thinking his time was now, even though for the last three, four years, he's kind of been told that it's not his time yep. and his time is no longer, I appreciate that he still has a starter mindset. He's going to prepare every single week like he just started because he might have an opportunity, might have to drop the clipboard, might have to stop a motivational speech, Ooh. might have to go into a meeting room and be the guy that's going to have to pull the trigger and operate Stefanski's offense. Kevin Stefanski he went to Penn University. Yeah. Uh, Brian, uh, Barry GM went to Harvard. Correct. I got a lot of faith in the brains that are cooking over there. You had Jameis in there. Mm-hmm. Now we got a motivational piece. Shout to the Lord. You know, shout to the Lord shout if you're out. a Cleveland Browns fan for getting a great shout quarterback room. What, okay, so what's the best case scenario for Jameis, you think? Doesn't have to. Wins the Super Bowl for the Browns. 17 and 0. Okay. <laughs> yeah, boom. No, no, no. You. You yeah, you're right. I mean, you're right, Connor. 17 and 0 pregame speeches. That's yeah. oh, okay. Like he is better than the opposing team's pregame speech. You would want that as a player, as a teammate? Me? Yeah. Well, you know me. We've been on the same. <laughs> the team. coaches might. The coaches might like take a little heat off of them, so they don't have to motivate the boys every day. I'm, I'm big raw raw. You know, when people start talking, you are. I'm yeah, really are. the guy that you wanna have yep. in the audience. Mm-hmm. You know, because <laughs> I'm I'm. You get so jacked. I'm yeah. listening. You're, mm-hmm. you're a natural, natural hype man. That's who you are. Well, I'm also a listener, too, so there, there better be no flubs in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and if you do have a flub, oh, all right, yep. Yep. Straight. All right, team. <laughs> yep, one, two, three, team. <laughs> you did a great job. There's some guys that are great speakers, though. There are some guys that a moment calls for it, where it's like somebody needs to say something. Mm-hmm. For instance, I just got a DM from Robert Mathis. He called LeBron James soft as cake batter because I guess he got Whoa. hit in his head oh, last night. I got that too. And then he, from Robert. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he was not happy that he that's happening. Yeah. I think uh, in the universe, yeah. it was soft were, it, as cake batter. You know, I, I feel like he was pretty. He was maybe working a cake batter into his sure. thing too. If he's starting to send it around just to see the response, uh-huh. I hit a ha ha on it. Did you do the same thing? Uh, I forgot how I responded. Okay, he got some good affirmations. Mm-hmm. I assume that's going to continue Definitely. to go. But anytime Robert would speak, it's like, all right, like I'm gonna stop. And I'm going to listen because uh-huh. who it's coming from is somebody that I have massive respect for and also somebody that doesn't talk much. So like, yeah, He probably didn't do it every day, though, right? There's there's moments when that is needed, not yeah. every day. Yeah, so when you pick and choose, I think it's good. But I feel like Jameis, if I'm reading the Lord's message through Jameis's quote to uh-huh. Josina Anderson, mm-hmm. 
he's coming in there to. Oh yeah, he's preaching. Clear eyes, full hearts. Exactly. Day one. He was Day literally one. preaching this offseason. I saw him yes. literally on the stage yeah. in the church preaching. So I think you know he'll, he'll for sure be a pastor once he's done, and that and that is awesome. Is there a difference I, between pastor and preacher? Uh, I would say preacher. I, when I think preacher, I just think more a little more activity, a little more Pentecostal, a little more action sure. uh, in the church, you know, in the crowd, on the stage, a little more entertainment value, maybe. When you think pastor, you think old pastor what? more, you know. Simply put, all first. pastors are preachers, but not all preachers are pastors. Okay. This is a square rectangle situation. Uh -huh. If your church has a preacher who delivers sermons Boom. and spreads the word of God with charisma and enthusiasm, Boom. but doesn't assume the role of pastor, you need to have a separate person who runs the leadership <laughs> side of things. Okay, okay so that's a conversation go. that churches are going to have to have. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's on them to figure out if they got a guy. Do you have a Belichick? Or, or not. Yeah. Or a gal. I don't think I've ever... Yeah, I've seen some. Oh, yeah, it happens. I've seen some. Not on the internet. I only see them on the internet. I haven't seen a... Uh, a preacherette? Have you? On the internet, I've I not seen... So. It's always it's always jack dudes. Well, yeah. except for the pastor who did the crypto scam, which turns out Jameis Winston spent a million bucks. Oh, yeah, his body was off <laughs> his uh, cake batter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was built like a sack of pears. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a jelly bean. Yeah, he was a bag of milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And somehow he got millions of dollars. Just he a did. sack of subs scamming Jameis Winston out of his money. So that, that no offense to the uh, preacher at uh, the lady. just the on pastors. The, on the internet, the pastors. The pastors, yeah. They're not preachers because they don't have moxie? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 could, it could be pastor. <laughs> you know, what kind sally. of path are you leading? But I'm just saying, on I'm the internet, I have, not seen, I have not seen I have not seen. a female pastor or preacher selling the word of God in my algorithm. No, Pretty sure. sexist of the uh, relig religious community. Well, well how about me. the algorithm? Oh. I'm, al I'm learning a lot about my algorithm. They're sure. putting jack dudes in front of me telling me I'm going to hell. Yeah. yeah. And telling me to stop <laughs> bopping my meat with my porn addiction. Yeah, like, I that. think you're talking about yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of that out there. Why, why, why is that? Every one of these guys had a porn addiction. It's coming. <laughs> Crazy. You, you watch, Too much. Like it. You watch Too much three or four <laughs> posts from this person. At some point, they're going to say, stop beating your meat. Yep. Mm -hmm. You need to listen to Jesus Christ. It's like... Are you talking to yourself? Are you, is that like a reminder post? Or are you talking? Yeah, yeah. Who are you talking to? I've never seen a female. I've never seen. No, I think that's based on denomination. Hey, well, they're about. Algorithm. They're about the, the Lord. They're about the Lord. They're not about you know the, the promotion. I think as much maybe. That's You're saying, sexist. Yeah, he's saying the same yeah. thing. No I mean, pizzazz. religious. Yeah. You know, no, no, no. A lot of pizzazz, sexist. but they. What's they're that? About, they're about ball. A lot of religions historically are pretty sexist. Like which ones? Yeah. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> Just saying, they, you know, all the all the is racist, sexist, yeah, a lot of religions are right in that. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. no, in that wheelhouse. Oh yeah, not in any of them. Oh yeah, our, you know, hour on Sunday is the most segregated hour in the week. Whoa, I didn't know. Is that a quote? Yeah, that's why I didn't go. Yeah, that's why I said. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's why I didn't go. Stuff. I said I'm not doing that. Good guy. What years? I'm not going there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to sit on the same side as my friend. Nah. Not a chance. That's I'm not doing that. That's what's cool about the algorithm on IG. It's like, okay, I won't, you know, masturbate 50 times today, <laughs> and I'm praising the Lord because that's what this pastor's telling. As a wrap-up to this entire thing. Sure. If yeah. Jameis yeah. Winston is making any appearances at any of the churches that you're at, mm -hmm. go. Go. Yeah. Sure. But those are where those speeches are needed. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see how the Browns feel. Week nine. Ooh. Week eight. <laughs> about the speeches, because what he said, that roster is. Cleveland Browns are a real deal. Stack. They just signed running back. Now you mind? Yeah. Now you mm -hmm. mind, yep. And they also get Chubb back. Correct. Mm -hmm. Jerry Judy Jerry they Judy traded for. Which yep. Judy. But put them in the Super Bowl. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he put them in the Super Bowl because they had three South Florida guys at yep. uh, skill positions for the offense, going to start, probably do well. Mm -hmm. But when you think about that defense – and what mm -hmm. they were able to accomplish last year. They had the best defense in the league. How many first downs? It was like seven first downs or something? Yeah, yeah their big thing was they were the best defense in the league at home. And then on the road, they were kind of trash. Do, do we think Deshaun Watson's going to get back? Have you watched film on him? Uh, I mean, you don't have enough of a sample. He size, sucked honestly. against the He has he not did. been mm -hmm. himself yet. You you hope so. Obviously, you the Browns, you got 200 or however much now guaranteed going forward. But uh, you got the weapons around him. You got a great offensive line. Hopefully, Chubb, Chubb can get back to who he was. Um, the potential, their potential get you fired at, at some point. So at this point, you got to show up. You got to show up and be out there every week. How about with what Flacco did, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Like, not Flacco. good for him. Not good for Deshaun? For Deshaun, yeah. But not good for Yeah, but long. remember, Deshaun's contract is impossible yeah. to get out it of. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Mulligan made that thing like, mm -hmm. hey, here's the deal. Yeah, you're paying us all this money. Yeah. Yeah. He's what if he's not good at football? Doesn't matter. No. What if there's more allegations later? 
Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It's basically don't. basketball. It's a basketball contract. Yeah. yeah. It's like 64, I think, for the next three years, for the remainder of the contract Each as year? far as cap hit. Each year, 64, Ooh. 64, 64. Sheesh. And then you can't kick the can down the road because you have no idea if He's They can convert it, though, right? No. Can they convert it to bonuses? No, because then no? you're saying he's going to be there longer. Because uh, if yeah. you – because right now you're tied to him for three years or whatever. Yeah, it's already all front. If you were to move that to a signing bonus, then you would be prorating that <laughs> over the long term. You would have to probably add years to the contract. So if you're adding years to the contract, now you're committing to Sean Watson even longer. So yeah. it's like uh, so they're all in. They're all in on on him. I'd say. Well, they have to be right now. Don't have a choice. They, ha they have to three <laughs> yeah, year, They have to be right now. But it's like I don't think any of them are thinking, "Is this our guy for the next?" 10 years like we hoped in a Magic because Deshaun young enough still oh, yeah. to be able to have an entire run. But I think a year and a half out of football is not easy. Like I, I do not think that is easy just to get dropped back into it and just be at your top level. Maybe a full offseason here. Maybe better health. Maybe getting back into it. Maybe seeing Joe Flacco have success will help Deshaun. But if Deshaun can go and Jameis can motivate via the Lord, mm -hmm. that team can win. And yeah. everybody understands that. You would assume, too, if they can stay healthier than they did last. I mean, obviously, they lose Chubb. They lost a bunch of guys on oh, their yeah. O-line. When their O-line's healthy, it's one of the best in the NFL. Like, if they stay moderately healthy, like, they should be okay. It's just tough when you look at that division because you just always assume, like, teams like Baltimore just always win. You know, uh, the Bengals, like, they'll, they'll be much better this year. Obviously, the Steelers, Ten seven. you would think, would be much better this year. So, like, but again, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because no matter how they do, it might get loud with the fans, but Deshaun Watson is going to be their quarterback regardless for the next three years. Yeah, congrats to him. Uh, talking about reworking at the quarterback position, you talk about the AFC being stacked, not just the AFC North. Josh Allen has restructured his contract to open up like $17 million. Right, Way to go, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Josh. Way to go, Josh. And we will continue as former players to make the player look like a real hero in this. Uh, but all that's really happening here yeah. is he's getting the money he's supposed to get over 12 months on one day. So, <laughs> what a hero. This guy's awesome. Thank you, Josh, for doing that. Way to look out for your teammates. Jalen Ra Ra yeah. Ramsey. Uh, did you see Jalen Ramsey's I IG post? He no. goes, Dolphin, because he did a restructure or whatever. And he said, Fin fam, I love you, but this is not a pay cut. I'm, I'm just getting my money right now. Yeah, that which is what's been happening since the beginning of the salary cap gymnastics where you move salary and convert it into a signing bonus so you can prorate it over the rest of the contract so that your salary cap hit isn't as big. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have been doing this for a long time. Yep. Tom Brady was like, this guy's a hero. Look at him changing his salary into a signing cap. It's like, he just got $25 million on a Tuesday yeah. as opposed to $25 million over 17 weeks. But hey, good on him for being able to do it. Mm -hmm. Bean obviously has had to make a lot of moves for the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen's their quarterback, so they're still in a window, right? Everybody's talking uh, on TV whenever they do that, you know, doomsday where they cut everybody that we're friends with on their team pretty much and kick them out of the building. Von Miller restructures down to less money than what he was guaranteed on his previous contract, like real team type move. Now Josh Allen restructures, and they had to make some plays to get under the salary cap, which has to be due by tomorrow at 4 p.m., do you think this is still a wide open window with how tough this AFC is? I mean, Baltimore just had Derrick Henry. Yeah. They're their team. Tough. So Baltimore's going to be hunting one. Lamar Jackson seemingly obsessed with winning at mm -hmm. this point. And that's why he goes out after signing the biggest deal that he negotiated himself and has his best year. But it's like AFC is only getting more difficult. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Spagnolo, Andy Reid all still back in Kansas City. And the Bills are going to look vastly different. How do you feel about them? Where's the confidence gauge of the old Buffalo Bills going forward? I mean, as long as Josh Allen is pulling the trigger, they should absolutely still feel really good about what they're doing. Now, yeah, you have to make all these moves. You have to get under the cap. You got to do all this. But no, Josh Allen is there. The window is fully open, I believe. I think so, too. Now, is it open enough to win a Super Bowl? That's which is all the conversations we always have in the offseason. We're talking like as if a team can win a Super Bowl. And then we get into a season. We're like eight games in and like half the teams go. Our team can't win a Super Bowl. Everybody can't get continue to get better. Like some teams are going to get worse, obviously. Yeah, but also you see other teams and you're like, ah, when push comes to shove, if this is the AFC Championship game, that team is going to. We are not. Our team. Yes. We are not the same as that team. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, yeah. We, are we still having that conversation about yeah. the Buffalo Bills right now just because they have Josh Allen? Yeah. I think so, right? I, I think so. No, Vegas thinks so. They are they're third in the AFC between behind the Chiefs and the Ravens, and they're four, fourth to win the Super Bowl. Where are the Colts? Oh boy! What are you? Oh boy! Probably middle of the pack. Right middle front pack. Of <clears throat> Probably solid. Colts middle. are uh, one. That'd be four. I mean, you lost your Pro Bowl. Key. They are eleventh in odds oh. to win the AFC. That's not bad. Right below New AFC. England. Sixteen. Win the AFC. Yeah. Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> 
could be top worse. eleven. Top eleven. Lost your, your you lost your pro, pro quarterback. I mean that's that's standard. Once the AR comes in and stays healthy for the entire season, are the Raiders fans happy with? They should be. They better yeah. be with what? With Minshew. Oh, I doubt it. What does that mean? What's your deal? I mean, can they ever be happy when they're with Mahomes in the same division? Like, is there any hope? Yeah, but you just said it. Like, you just said Ooh. it. There's, there's the guy that caught that yeah. back, by the way. Nice. Trevor Stewart, D lineman for the Colts, Ooh. back, sure. by right. the way. Mm -hmm. DeForest Buckner, back, <laughs> by, by the way. way. Jonathan Bye. Taylor, not holding out, back, Bye. by the way. Zach Moss, Gardner's great. In Cincinnati, Shh. by, by the, the way. way. Sarah Franklin, back, by, by the way. way. Mm -hmm. A bad little sprinkle there. Rodri the Indianapolis Colts, Rig 11th out of 16. Rigoberto. Sanchez, back, back. for his seventh year. By, By the way. Ball. Look at that ball. Jelani Woods is healthy now. By the way. Is that the one yeah. that skipped the, uh, <laughs> the the mass, the Sunday mass, and wasn't allowed to play because yes. of Frank? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he made that up, yeah. and then it became actual news, and then Chris Ballard had to answer questions about it. Mm -hmm. That's why our, our show sucks. Tony Diggs gets on there and goes, this guy skips Sunday mass, and Frank Reich doesn't want to put him on the field. And then somebody heard that and was like, did you hear what's being reported? Oh, my <laughs> God. Because we have connections to this team, obviously. Not as many as I had hoped. FaceTime Chris Ballard this morning, cold call. Yep. Did a lot of cold calls this morning, not a lot of answers. That what's was that weird. Oh, so if you yeah. got a FaceTime from me this morning, you didn't answer, guess what? One's uh -oh. coming back tomorrow morning until you answer. <laughs> yeah. Bingo. I did not like that at all. Not good. There was a lot of brrr all mm -hmm. the way out. Like eight of them. It was. Yeah. There was seven of them straight. Now, three called back. Yep. Okay. Okay. Which I appreciate. That's pretty good. But J.J. Watt didn't answer a damn phone. Son of a, son of a bitch. Uh, he's in England. He said, people really go Photoshop over here. Did he say England sucks? And it yeah, like maybe, fo maybe focus on holding the two-goal lead, J.J. Yeah. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, let's park the bus, maybe get the Burnley boys a little bit of a dub. What did he mean by, oh, these these English folks are good at Photoshop? He's saying England sucks. Yeah, I didn't get the, it. Uh, what does that mean? It's the, Kate, mean? it's the Kate Middleton stuff about how the princess has not been photographed, and now there's all these oh. theories online oh. about how oh, yeah, yeah. the photo. Oh, I saw that. That wasn't a real. That. Yeah, it wasn't a real photo. They like pulled it from a magazine cover, and someone what? made a TikTok of her walking. And now they're saying that person who made that. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is boots on the ground English lad, ladies and gentlemen, JJ Wall. What? Anyway, BJ wow, I can't believe you answered. Didn't answer this morning. I had a real question for you, journalism. You didn't answer. You said, "Wow, these Brits." Pretty good spot of tea and Photoshop, I believe is what you said. Is that because they catfished you in England is shit? It doesn't look good? Or is it because of what the boys just mentioned to me about the royal family and photos being pulled and everything like that, JJ? There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, photo dissection going on uh, or photos not being allowed to be printed or used. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been fascinating. I just there's there's a lot of Photoshop experts. I have seen more pixels recently than I have in a long time. Nick just uh, dropped in to me and says, hey, bud, this one goes real deep. Yeah. So is. let's... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not diving deep. That's I'm what Nick, Nick just said. Hey, just a heads up. <laughs> this, is, this is a wormhole. Uh, we we yeah. can really get into some stuff here. Uh, okay, so right now you're watching <laughs> local news over there while this is all taking place. Are they covering it? it this, is, this might be like oh, the wildest yeah. time since, you know, when they used to say the sun never set on the English Empire Never did. since they lost all that and it ruined a lot of places but yeah. then just you know came feels like it's the most interesting time in England I I could recall and you're in the middle of it right now over there is that accurate yeah we basically landed right when this whole thing started it seems and uh I mean it is on the papers on the news it certainly has been a topic of discussion I mean obviously also I'm, I'm poking a little fun at it but it uh it certainly is a big topic of discussion um, but other than that, we're really it's we're having a blast over here. Very much enjoying it now that everybody's uh, settled in. Good. Jet lag took its toll on the one year old um, oh. strep throat for the wife, but everybody seems to have moved past both, and uh, we're living we're living good now. Plus five, plus six hours. Uh, daylight savings also took its toll, so oh, oh, <laughs> we. Uh, <man. laughs> Um, yeah, we just get, we just got ran all, all different ways for the first few days. Okay, so plus six hours from Eastern Standard Time. It was plus five before the spring. No, I think four. it might be plus four now. I think. It, let's see, what time is it there? It is one forty-one. 
It is 541. Yes, yeah, so we're only four now. Okay, that's plus crazy. four. That's not bad. England well, lost a step. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Obviously, we're <laughs> catching up to you, England. Yeah. I don't know if the Atlantic yeah. Ocean's getting smaller. I'm not getting into that conversation. No, 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 no please no, don't. Either no. if our time zones are just getting closer over there. So, baby, obviously, that is pick up immediately, extra nap added. How'd it go? Yeah, how'd the flight Ooh, go? Oh, man, it was, it was rough. It was rough. We, uh, we tried to like just semi adjust him but i mean for about two or three days it was just like sleep for three hours don't sleep for three hours sleep for three hours don't sleep oh, for three hours geez. didn't matter what time but did you give him whiskey at night yeah. did you give him a little whiskey before he fell yeah. asleep go yeah, yeah, little, 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 little guinea on the gums yeah. um <laughs> Whoa, but we had 8 p.m to 8 a.m oh. the last two nights Okay. So hey, you're you're good. officially an English man. You you don't have the accent yet. We thought maybe there'd be a chance that you would drop a. Hey, can we park the bus, lads? When we're up two nothing, and the whole world is watching our team play, and then heartbreak, heartbreak. See, the funny thing about that is, is we did park the bus. Like we put we put all defenders on. Sure. We had one we had one true forward on. We all defenders. We played five at the back. And some would like some are saying that's the like that's we they, invited it upon ourselves. So were they standing you, on know, each other's shoulders Gump in front wants, of the net? Mm -hmm. You should have put all ten Gump, the goalie out yep, like this, line down. and then ten of them standing on each other's shoulders, just blocking the entire. Goal. I don't know why nobody does that. You haven't heard that the only thing that prevent defense prevents is a win, JJ. Well, that seems like what the Burnley team has been doing this entire season is preventing wins all the time. Well, I didn't say that. Well, but that Gumps, is. what happened? I know there's just a lot of points lost late in games. It's tough. It's as a Burnley yes, fan, it's lot. tough. It is tough. Danny lot. Danny lot Ings is a dog though. Games. Danny Ainge? He is. Danny that was a hell of a yeah, he's putting together a hell of a team. All right. Well, enjoy England. Uh what do you got? You going to run with the lads? It feels like they might need a little cardio. They give away the games late all the time. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I am gonna work out with the lads. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, do some meetings, practice workouts with them. So I'm looking forward to doing that a little bit here coming up. So tarp off. Uh, I mean it's it's 47 degrees and raining, so JJ, the tarp will be America. Come on, we need you here. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Wisconsin. make some waves in the weight room. Wisconsin. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make some some pretty big waves in the weight room. I, I plan the workouts properly. So that we're going to hit him. Uh, my first workout with them is going to give him a real dose of what, what we're capable of on this side of the pond. Okay. All right. We appreciate like that. Thanks that. for representing. <laughs> and please, please keep your eye on this royal news for us. Yeah. In a, yeah, I will. Okay. We're only seeing the algorithm. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes out for the royals. Yeah. I mean, that's that's part of the story. Don't do that. Everybody's do looking that. at that. Look they at say fingers crossed. Cross. What about those what horses? There was, there was what a kind of white surgery horse? was she getting? The, yeah, the uh, horses. Yeah. The unicorn? Kind of what? Sorry, she was getting surgery, right? What? There's, oh, a, lot of there's a lot of days. Oh, yeah. 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 She had a gut JJ surgery, I read. Yeah, but the horses are a big part of this entire story too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is part of it. Did you see those horses? I don't, I don't know that. No, what's what? what's that? Are we talking about Cheltenham? Who? Cheltenham. What are we talking? about? Cheltenham, uh, what are you guys talking about? Cheltenham's happening right Horses now in England. It's huge. Cheltenham. Cheltenham's like St. Patrick's Day? Is that like JJ a derby? Knows, like like no, derby? JJ. A boxing day? What are you doing? You getting hammered drunk with England? No, I was, I was watching the Six Nations match. Uh, sure. England beat Ireland. Pretty big upset. So everybody's very excited about that over here. Upset. Very excited. Yeah, the Irish run. Okay. Yeah, Irish. Our Our women they run the Sixes, yeah. Let's go. All right. We appreciate you. Hey, get to the bottom of the whole Royals thing. I will. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll give you a call next week, and we'll uh, discuss further. Thanks. Overall, we hate England. We like England. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I do uh, own part of a football team over here, so I'm a pretty big fan. Definitely don't want them to hate me, so big fan. Okay, that sounded genuine. Well Ladies said, and gentlemen, JJ. that was really good. <laughs> JJ Watt. That boy, JJ. JJ. That rolls things a real deal. Yeah, Yeah, we don't want him keeping I don't know the ground in that. Yeah. So... I saw the photo. The wife uh, has been paying attention. Sam's been paying attention. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. I do feel like, uh, I don't want to sound sexist. I'm sure there's dudes that are involved. Um, yeah. But that feels like a very uh, super duper female thing. Yeah, absolutely. To follow the Royals. Sure. Correct. They, yeah. We want the war to not have to do that. Exactly. Bingo. Thank you. Well said. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's well always said. my stance. Mm -hmm. But they are a reality TV show. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Know? So every once in a while, I'll get updated from. Samantha, and there'll be like a full-on story. I'm like, oh, tell me more. Tell me, tell me more about this. I guess there's a couple of horses, D. Butch, that goes in front of that castle, mm -hmm. and then something happens like yep. the next day. Uh huh. And then what? Yeah. Oh yeah. What people, people what coming? Mean? People coming and going. And then there's like, and then there's like royals <laughs> in a lot of places. I don't need. There's stuffs happening. Yep. 
And then they put out the first picture of this lady, Princess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service, Princess. Yeah. Thank you for your service, Princess. Like, real deal. Name she a princess? princess. And Cheers. AP, I, or somebody goes, nah, that ain't a real photo. We're pulling that thing. Because now there's been no photo of this lady since January, I think, or December. Something like I, that. I thought yeah, it was like last two months-ish. So, and if you look, it's great Photoshop. It's really good with the apps you have. But if you zoom in on Red Shirt's left wrist is where you'll see the mistake was made, you see. Oh. In the Photoshop, if you go to the shirt, scarf. Yeah. Where? Where? Up, left wrist, no, down, no, no. down, down, down. down, down. down. Not, I'm not good at picking right, these out. Move your, move your thing to the right. Hand on the outside. Right there. Up. Right there. Yep. yep. In that area. You see that hard line there mm -hmm. all the way down to her wrist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the, uh, tell, that was a missed sign. Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Any amateur iPhone Photoshopper, especially if they were working for the Royals, would not let that out. No. No. Why so that, that was that, sent why out. So why's that kid got his yeah. fingers crossed? Fingers crossed, legs. Crossed, well, I think legs. he's throwing up the dub for the Lord like James Winston. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Like oh, person, yeah. person. Why are they sitting on a seat that sucks so bad? You're Actually, royal. he's got his grandpa's finger on. All right. <laughs> totally. We hope everybody's okay. Good luck out there. Careful, Tony. <laughs> JJ will keep. Uh, what's wrong, Darius? Come on, Darius. What's up? D He's disgusting. D -butt, get it together. We're talking about a whole you family. Got the giggles. It's like king of you were born in Germany, D Butt. Go boy, man. Yeah, you were born in, in Germany. Yep, Frankfurt on a U.S. Army base. Are you uh, a dual, dual citizen? Yep. You are dual citizen. I got a German uh, birth certificate in America. You speak it fluently. Right? Why don't you go play for the curling team? You need to go be in the Olympics. No, I or, wait, when seven on seven comes to the Olympics, are you gonna be on the German team? Yeah, Absolutely flag not. football. No, I'm gonna get smoked. What? <laughs> During the Olympics, dude, you're doing a ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, in the ghetto. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know what their name. Yeah. That, no, that's the song. That's not their song. Yeah, it is. That is. Yeah. Yeah. I did not, I did not, not think their song. That song. So we got that one. Couple. Let's move back to sports. What's their song? We hope the Royals figure it out. We just yeah. did it. And they could really, honestly, just put this all to bed if they knight Luke Littler right now. Boom. He's earned it. He has. Mm -hmm. He has. <laughs> Bang. Bang. And then the whole place. Oh. And his 17-year-old. He's done it. Oh, a night daughter for Luke Littler. In the championship. I believe in the championship. Yeah. To and win then the dog. German guy tried to get in his face, and he kind of, when he walked off the stage, looked at the crowd and was like. <laughs> yeah, what was that about? Was what awesome. was that guy doing? It was awesome. And then he said, give me my vapes, me vapes. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get a couple of kebabs and maybe up fancy a couple of vapes as well. 17-year-old taking over the dart world. Right? Yeah. Dog. And we got a chance to see him in his first tournament. And by first tournament, it's the first one we saw that he was in. Right. I assume he's been in tournaments Maybe for a long time. The championship that he lost to Cool Hand Luke? Yes. Yeah, well, Cool Hand Luke's uh, been there, done that. The guy's sure. 75 years old. Okay, <laughs> Luke Littla stepped up to the big stage yeah. as a teenager and was just taking up. Since then, all Luke Littler does is win. Yeah, correct. He, he's in the middle of a Tiger Woods, Serena Williams type run right now. Ooh. And look at him. He's in the best shape he's ever been. 17 years old. One AT. Uh-oh. They're starting to feel. Can we turn the sound up? Generational. Oh, fingers. Guys, come on. This is Rob that Cross. Could have been three straight legs for Rob Cross. Ooh, Ooh so close. Yeah, he's nine darts. This is the great. Like he's been oh, oh, yeah, I can see you think a nine darter is not coming? But the Triple boss. 20. To see Triple really 20. Boom. 180. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Triple 19. Look, he's dialed into. He's not breaking. As Rob 12, Cross has to face off against a teenager in front of his family. Well, he he's thinking to himself, there's no way this 17-year-old is going to embarrass me in front of my mom, in front of my wife. Luke Littler says, one triple 20, two triple 20s, double 12! Double 12! 187,000 people in there? What kind of venue is that? It's one that we need to be in stat. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't want to go to that one because that's just the Belgium Open, but... If we go to a bigger tournament, yeah. Uh, any of these. Yeah. I would like yeah. to go to any one where Luke Litla is going to be on the stage. I agree. Because I love how, like in basketball, they play music and then they turn it off or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the crowd, you know, in some sports, mm -hmm. especially whenever it's like that precise, scared to interrupt. You know, like golf yeah, and things silence. like that. Instead, it's like when Luke starts, he's on fire. They all. Yep. Oh. oh. And then he hears him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he has to somehow corral that and hit a spot that's like that big. He's the next one. He mm -hmm. is. He's the guy. Crown him. Make him the king of England. Yeah. 
That's you, what they need right now. Yeah. That's what England needs from our point of view <laughs> that have that have known nothing about England. Yep. Let him wear the crown. Nigel <laughs> is the queen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Luke Littler's the king. Yep. No. no offense. Yep. Obviously, people are going to get offended by right, that. Right, sure. Ted Lasso lady, what's her name? Uh, Ooh, uh, who? Amanda Hannah Waddington. Hannah Waddingham. Oh, there it is. Make her the king as well. <laughs> yep. I mean, mm-hmm. let's get, let's do this. You know, let's really get back to to really doing some good stuff over there. And it all starts and ends with Luke Littler. I agree. The lad, I think, AJ. Do we have any Americans that can challenge him? No. Like, do we have anybody no. that's no. even on that level? No. Connor's been training in his apartment. Yeah, I've, been, I've been playing no, a lot play, of darts They play Littler. football, okay? What? Huh? You're talking about our people? Yeah. No, there's drunks in Ohio right Real now football. that are trying to. Yeah, yeah they're drunk. Yeah, yeah Jeremy Cash, uh, Centerville, Ohio, he might be able to get him if we can keep him off the booze. He always throws real well, and then he gets to the finals, and by that point, he'd been around day seven hours, and how am I not supposed to be drunk? <laughs> Taking on people for thousands of dollars in cash money, and he's hammered drunk as mm-hmm. if it's a bar and everybody else is sober. Dog. That was the only time I've seen him. If he were to stay sober, I think he could be Luke Lither right now. <laughs> Let's get off the booze. Maybe we're playing darts cash. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with more riveting sports talk. Yep. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Nailed it. Hit it in there. Let's go. Hit it in there. Yep. That was good. Darts are awesome. That's oh, yeah. something we don't have. Love. No, 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 no. It's no. electric. We don't have it. We don't have board, anything. Get a board like in there. Get a nice uh, a board in there. All right. Thunderdome. Wife and I had one in uh, in our room at the last house. I play darts in my basement all the time. Mm-hmm. So I've fun. gone through. I've gone through it over the years. Like I get into it for a little while, and then I'm out, and, and like it's. It's awesome. I enjoy the little chalking. Oh yeah, you know the entire thing whenever you're playing. Those guys though that are real, it's like cornhole players. When mm-hmm. there's when there's guys and girls that are like good. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, I, I'll yeah I'm play. pretty good. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Imagine accidentally stumbling into Luke Littler <laughs> at a dart. Oh no. Just full on. <laughs> what do you want, bitch? <laughs> In there. That's what he's doing. Yeah. His composure is a real deal. You know, like that is a. High level athletes composure. Oh yeah. Because the amount of juice that are that is in those rooms to be able because if you miss just that much, you saw the guy the guy hits two triple twenties, place gets excited, he misses by that much. Any of us that have played have had the fucking thing hit the metal thing mm-hmm. and go outside. It's like twenty one. Fuck. How did that <laughs> yeah. I thought I was right in there. It's like I don't know how he's able to stay as long. He's naive to it all. He's not he's young. He's like a young golfer. He doesn't have those, you know. He doesn't have those those missed putts on his brain that he's thinking about. So is this sustainable? Well, he's a physical specimen, obviously. So yeah, yep. he's in top Peak. tip shape. Peak. What are all the other dart players saying about him though, about the media needs to do? Aren't they saying just let the guy play? Well, yeah, the media is starting to turn on a, him a little, actually. a little bit. Why? Yeah. No. Well, that's what, what I'm saying. But I think all the other dart players are now baby facing for Luke Littler. A little bit. I think they were. They thought it was cool at the uh, the World Championships, you know, because it's like, hey, 16 year old phenom. He's getting a lot of eyes on the sports. But now that he's He's starting to win more. I think guys are like, get this fucking wanker out of here. See, okay? that's not what I've seen the videos of the other dart players saying that the media need to just let this man play darts. Like they're trying to kill him. I guess there was, I heard this one dart player, and I don't know if he speaks for all the other professional dart players, but he was speaking, uh, this guy's no looking eating cereal hitting bullseyes. Yeah. Dog. Okay. This ain't. Steph, really. Steph Curry's fake fucking yeah. video either. Mm-hmm. But this, <laughs> I mean, that's the best cereal in town. Oh, there you are. Chocolate crunch, dude. And the Ooh. caramel gold. Kidding me? Well, English people, you guys suck at cereal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> those look terrible. Can we get a little can we get a little cartoon on there? Just Turn a little on. We need something. But this one professional dart player referenced another young phenom dart player that the media killed. They made like a big superstar. They like I don't want to say ruined his life seemingly, but like paparazzi was getting followed, and then he just he got a dart, a dart player. Yes, yeah. So this dart player called this professional. Call? Uh, I don't know. A darter, a dart magician, a darter, a dartist. There yeah. it is. Yep. Dart it. Yeah. Like a flautist, but a Luke Littler is a dartist. <laughs> he's a, he a dartist. But they, you know, he was basically saying like, just let him play darts. Basically, just let this guy fucking breathe for a little bit because I think the pressure does become a bit overwhelming in a sport in which. Oh yeah. It's this much whether or not you win potentially hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars or you're drunk at a pub playing against everybody else while yeah. there's a live singer happening there. I couldn't even fathom the pressure on that thing. But he. Hey! Hey! We got a bag alert via <laughs> Swagoo. Marcus Spears is reporting that Ravens free agent linebacker Patrick Queen told. Swaggoo that he plans to sign a three-year, $41 million contract with the Pittsburgh 
Steelers. Nice. New quarterback, new linebacker. Mm -hmm. Patrick Queen is somebody that everybody in the NFL loved and respected while he played fantastic, physical, and dominant football last year for the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, the Steelers get a nice, close look at Patrick Queen a mm -hmm. couple times last year mm -hmm. and the years before that. And Mike Tomlin is trying to reboot, trying to change a little bit, trying to do things a little bit differently because what has been happening for the last six, seven years, just being mediocre, is nowhere near good enough in Pittsburgh. We got a new quarterback. Coordinator, we got a new quarterback, and we're paying big money for an in-division rival linebacker. Mm -hmm. Are we happy about the move that Omar oh. Khan just made? And Mark Caboli, who joined us in the first hour, said, I got my eyes on Patrick Yes, Queen. he did. He did say that. That's who I'm hoping for. We need a cornerback. I guess needs to available out there if they want to do that. But Patrick Queen would mm -hmm. be a good Pittsburgh Steeler if we were to do that. And here we are. Less than two hours later, Patrick Queen is now saying he has agreed to a $41 million deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Are you guys all the way back? What do we think it's Tony? Wow. Congratulations yeah. to the Steelers. I mean, I love it. He plays with his hair on fire every single snap. Uh, the Steelers have been looking for an inside linebacker since uh, the uh, the accident, the injury to Shazier. Like, and they ha haven't been able to fill those shoes in a long, long time. They have a Landon Roberts and Cole Holcomb, who they got last year, but this is another one. Like They had Miles Jack wearing 16 at the end of the year last year trying to Stank. cover guys down, down the field. This is this is huge. And, he and, did. I think he would even say yeah. he should. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and, and the thing is, Queen knows how to play in the division, obviously, and you sign – Ravens get Derrick Henry. you got to fight fire with fire, baby. And this is right up the middle. Good luck, okay? Yeah, he does have a little bit of Bob Spillane in him. He sure. does. You know, with the way – But, he, like, a lot better. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, block, block destruction. That's what he – Patrick Queen – do. Yeah, he blows things up. I mean, that he, he's a... can fly. He's awesome. He's a star player, too. So, like, yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers fans, and I think Baltimore's the same way, so I'm not saying that this is abnormal for Patrick Queen or abnormal for the AFC North, but, like, what Artie Smith wants to do with that offense, run the ball. Yes. And what Patrick Queen wants to do and beat people up, mm -hmm. like, it's, that's what Steelers fans want to see. Like, some cities don't want that. Some cities want it to be wide open. That team he's playing against right there, the Chargers have been on the record of saying, we want to have an exciting brand of football. We want to take shots. We want to be wide open. We want to be fast. We want to captivate the audience. We want to build an audience. In Pittsburgh, it's like, if you're willing to punch somebody in the face for the Steelers yes. and you're very good at it, Pittsburgh loves you. Mm -hmm. What a perfect signing, seemingly, yeah. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And right on kind of the theme of the week so far, going from yeah, one, one team to another uh, division rival, rival awesome. right there. So you see him twice a year. Uh, he's a winner, though. He's been a winner since college. He's on one of the greatest college teams of all time. He's gotten better, I feel like, every year uh, in the NFL. He's one of the uh, – a tandem, part of a tandem, one of the best off-ball linebacking cores. So I think it's a great move. And Caboli said, you know, still is want to spin kind of up to that cap. So yes, I think it's a great move for him. AJ, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Feels like Patrick Queen and that Baltimore Ravens defense as a whole is an old school type defense, and obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers love that type of shit. Yeah, I'm just wondering is Kaboy gonna gonna be happy about this? Like he is. I think he, his uh, positivity is, is just everywhere. I feel. So uh, you know me, I'm known to be optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> he had a nice kitchen. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's it, like it a clean. brand new refrigerator. Yeah, let's call Kaboy. Yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. let's go back to the Kaboy. Hey, hey, shout out, out, jumping guys. for joy. Shout out to Sagu, too. Jump back in the saddle. I yeah, think okay. I hey, Marcus Spears yesterday retweeted something that, hey. Mm -hmm. It was this. A darn chef. It's going to happen. Yep. Yep. It's going to happen. This was the same story? Yeah. It was, that, it was, it was Patrick Queen, Queen and the Seahawks. Yeah. yeah. So Spears had an inkling that <laughs> Patrick Queen was going to sign. Mm -hmm. you know, they that, must know each other from LSU. Yeah, yeah. LSU. Yeah. LSU. No answer from Kabul. He's obviously writing his article about yep. how I fucking told you so. <laughs> Funny wrinkle to this, Pat, is uh, this season Patrick Queen came out and said that he's held a grudge with Pittsburgh in – specifically Mike T, because Mike T used to yell at him on the sidelines mm -hmm. his rookie year, you're not a Raven, you're not a Raven yet, you're not one of those guys. Mm. And it goes back to, there's like a, a statement between the two teams, like, you're not a Raven until you beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're not a Pittsburgh Steeler until you beat the Ravens. Sweet rivalry. Oh, the yeah. Steelers Great. and the Ravens. When we I, need that. When I was in high school, and I assume, I don't know, Diggs, you're around, and Nick, you're around a lot longer than me. I go to West Virginia and come to Indiana. Like, actual pep rallies. When you're mm -hmm. taking on Ravens, like the city's having pep really? rallies taking on the Baltimore Ravens, like that's it was it was done by local radio shows. Like I think Mikey and Big Bob were probably the big initiators behind that. But like City genuinely okay. wanted to beat Baltimore in a regular season matchup two times. Like that's good for football. That oh, yeah. is good for the NFL. And this adds a nice little added wrinkle to a rivalry that is. 
been what the last twenty years? It, yeah, it's awesome. It feels so good. Um, yeah, there now I, old school. I don't want to take it back to even more history. I apologize, Tone, but like Browns were the Steelers' biggest rival. Cleveland Browns leave Cleveland, go to Baltimore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They become the Ravens. So like natural. Oh, that's still the team we hate. New city. Oh, we can hate Baltimore too. That's certainly another city that is it, very similar to Pittsburgh. Very similar people to Pittsburgh. Very similar mindset as Pittsburgh. Fuck these people. That is kind of what Pittsburgh did with Cleveland. And then when the team goes to Baltimore, they pick it up. So literally, since jump, the Baltimore Ravens and Steelers have been a massive rival. Yeah, and I I think it's always been a hated rivalry but it's always been a lot of respect yes. between the two teams and the two fan bases like i respect the ravens franchise a ton like the other two teams in the division it's a hate but and with no respect at all but this one like is an is there's a lot of respect between this rivalry not none at all <laughs> zero it's one of those games yep. you had even like been in the league as a defensive player for sure this is one of the games if you could you would watch a stillers ravens game like that was that's defense i can't remember I have, has there been like a player in his prime go from one team to the other, like in free agency or a trade or something like that? I Woodson was on both teams, but no. Yeah, Rob, Law, Rob. yeah, that was that was those were the early days because he was on that early two thousands Ravens defense. Mm -hmm. um, no, I not don't that think I can so. take off the top yeah. of my head. Yeah, this feels like a huge. Get. Tomlin probably very pumped about. I would assume oh, Tomlin yeah. very, 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 very pumped about mm -hmm. this. Not only all the pit, I assume Pittsburgh's pumped about this yeah, as well. I would assume so as well because. The one thing, like, there's a couple positions that we've been looking at: center, middle linebacker, corner, and safety. Like that. Now that they have the middle linebacker, like you can now go do other things. Offense coordinator too. You got already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which all, fits Pittsburgh. It's all falling into place. And Russ Wilson, <laughs> one point two million dollars. All mm -hmm. we need you to do is run, 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 play action, hit Bingo. a target. Perfect. We're off the, and running. And the, the defense has been optimistic and good uh, the last few years, but they've been getting gashed in the run, which has not been a thing that we are used to. So this will help there too as well. Well, unlike that lazy JJ Watt, TJ's not in England dicking around. With yeah. no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Well said. Ready. He's working to get better. Ain't that right, AJ? That is right. That's the first thing I thought of. Yep. <laughs> Let's get to a break. Congrats to Patrick Queen on new back. Oh, yeah. Wait. Ladies and gentlemen, we can feel the beat before we get to a break here. Oh, nice. Let's go back to the kitchen, potentially. Ladies and gentlemen, writer for The Athletic, covering the Pittsburgh Steelers since he was born, pretty much. Once again, nice little reminder to the folks that this guy once got a sandwich from Rudy Subs mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. Didn't eat it till 8 p.m. Mm -mm. That thing sat in his cargo <laughs> shorts of his khakis all day and stayed as fresh as it did coming out of the toaster. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Boy. Yeah, Mark. Hey, First hour, you said, I got my eye on Patrick Queen. That is, <laughs> that'd be a good stealer. Here we are, hour and a half later or so. Patrick Queen is now being announced as a Pittsburgh Steeler for 41 million bucks. Everybody's pumped about this. Tone Diggs, six to midnight, talking mm -hmm. about this. Been looking for a middle linebacker for a while. How do you feel about a Kaboli, and what is your first thoughts on it all? Oh, it's, it's an absolute great move by Omar Khan and the Steelers. They've been looking for an inside linebacker since, you know, the Ryan Shazier injury. And that what was that seven, eight years ago. Now they've been plugging and playing left and right people. And they just haven't been able to find that guy. They moved up to get Devin Bush uh -huh. about five years ago. That didn't quite work out. And now they got a bunch of guys who are injured. Um, Quan Alexander got hurt last year. Cole Holcomb got hurt. Now they have finally had a chance to be able to get a guy who's a obviously three years, but hopefully longer than that. He's a younger guy. So um, that was a huge, I find it not maybe a little bit ironic, not long after Derrick Henry mm -hmm. signs with the Baltimore Ravens. Here comes a big inside linebacker. Yeah. Uh, just kind of interesting how that thing worked out right there because obviously they're going to be running the ball. Physical uh, football the happening oh, in the yeah. AFC North. Patrick Queen is an old-school football player. Speaking of old-school football players, Russell Wilson has tweeted now his response, Queen! Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Russell Wilson right there, obviously welcoming the newest linebacker into his Pittsburgh Steelers locker room. That's right. This is a beautiful thing. Kaboli feels like this team's coming together tighter than it's ever been. Yeah, Kaboli, you would know. Uh, we've been talking about it a lot. Is it, is it really going to be a competition for starting quarterback? Dan Orlovsky said no chance. This is I Russell said, Wilson's job. I said job. no chance, though. I mean, Russell would have to be not only god-awful in the uh, offseason and the preseason, even if he was god-awful, I think that uh, he would still get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I figured. I mean, the best-case scenario for Kenny Pickett in my eyes 
is for uh, Russell Wilson to stink it up by the midway through the season, and then you turn to Kenny Pickett. Oh, stink it up! That's the only way. I, I mean, that's the only way that I'm saying Kenny Pickett is hoping for opportunity here. Yeah. Yes. What about Rudolph? I think he's uh, heading out the door here somewhere. Uh, Steelers apparently have want him back, but he's done. Uh, he's he's, uh, <laughs> he's 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 the writing on the wall. I mean, they can tell him whatever they want to tell him, but the action speaks louder than the words here. Yeah, and they pretty much screwed him for a couple of years, great, and they great, screwed him again this year in his eyes. Great. So. Start He's right, gone. Caboli, right I want to let you know, every time you come on the show, it's one of my favorite days. Mm -hmm, the best. Okay? It's one of my favorite days every time you come on the show. You need to know that inside that massive fucking head of yours, that when you come on this show, I love it when you come on. Big brain in there. Big brain in there. And it's because... Everybody got that head? I, I mean, the way it looks right now, it looks it's like the brain thing. is... It's like, a good it's thing, a good, It's a compliment. Look, and a half, the guy eight. that's on your... Uh, Great thing. Your left screen's right. AJ, his head... <laughs> oh, I... Fucking yeah. AJ. AJ is by far my favorite. No offense to you guys. Um, <laughs> and I was a little disappointed during the uh, what was that twelve forty five that AJ wasn't on yet. Oh uh, well, fuck off. Come on. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big <laughs> AJ yeah. Hawk fan. We all are. We all are. And I appreciate that. Next time we'll move it to when AJ's on for your entire you know segment. I did read, though, that you were not thrilled about the length of your segment. Matt Schneidman said that his mom watched him on a program. She told him, enough with the United Casino. You have a snowblower to purchase. Obviously, big Wisconsin stuff. Shout right. out to Mama Schne uh, Schneidman. And then, Cabola, you didn't even care about a snowblower or his gambling problem or his mother's thoughts. Thanks for taking on my time on the show. Yeah, and I really, really don't care about his uh, sleeve tattoo. <laughs> you don't have one? No. You know, what about and you know what? Uh, I don't look like a tattoo type of guy, but your fucking oh, kitchen, is and, and you know, like, unless I can get a Rudy sub tattoo, we'll pay for sub. it. We'll on pay for it. How about this? Leg. I don't know how much the tattoo I'll is do it. right on the thigh where that cargo right on the outside of the knee, <laughs> the yeah, like yeah. outside of the knee because those pockets were oh. coming down, uh -huh. those cargo shorts were coming down top calf, right? Soon. Yep, I'm assuming uh, Cabal is not going <laughs> need a hip. <laughs> The cargo shorts get a very bad rap, so uh, oh, I like to. Uh, oh, that like does that look sub. good. Let me tell you. Hey, I got a scar where the Achilles injury was, so maybe I could just cover it up with a Rudy sub. Nah, chicks take scars, Mark. Let's keep it. Yeah, keep but that the, scar. The scar could be like the ham in the sandwich. Oh my god, you open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure we put a little mayo on there, a little shred of lettuce on there. Boom. A little gabagool. A little. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, you know, I did have to take the tomatoes off the Rudy sub because. The nature's microwave overcooked the That'll tomatoes happen. a little bit. Okay. So well, I, I, don't, admit, yeah. I don't know if tomatoes sitting out for 12 hours is necessarily. Yeah, turned into ketchup. After being chopped Smart. up is the right place. <laughs> I don't know if it was the nature's microwave, your leg, or if it was just tomatoes composition, how they're created to, to survive that thing. Right. I'm a lettuce, Combo. onion, mayo guy anyway, so I wouldn't have had that issue. Maybe I need to do the cargo shorts there. But can we talk about your kitchen, honestly? Is this brand new? Or are those Billy Bonyours? Uh, you know what? I moved. I just moved here about what, three months ago. Congrats! That's moving nice. on up. Yeah. Moving on up, Kaboli. Keep covering the Steelers. So, Things are good. That's a good-looking fucking kitchen there, Kaboli. So let's let's just hope the athletic doesn't uh, decide that uh, they don't want me anymore. If not, I'm going to have to uh, hit you up for a job. I don't know if we can afford that kitchen for you. No way. I don't know if we can afford that. That's, that's a good-looking kitchen there. You got some good cabinetry there. Good cabinetry. Hey, when you, like, I, like, I picked out any of this. Come Coffee on. maker. Nice maker. French doors on the yeah. refrigerator. Yeah. Natural light. Big, elevated big jar of mayo back there. Is that mayo? Almost yeah, it, it actually is mayo. I was just eating and making myself a sandwich. <laughs> you know what, though? I'm so cheap. It's the Aldi version of no, oh, no, no bar, bar, yes. hell yeah, bar. You got a new house to build. You got a new house to pay for, and a hey, snowblower. So the Hellman's, the Hellman's was like two dollars and seventy cents more than Berman. Yuck, so, geez, man. yuck. Hey, going Berman. Hey, real quick, what's on the sandwich over there? We got turkey, a little bit of ham. We got white bread. Are we cutting it uh, catty corner? Are we cutting it down the middle? Or, or, what else? <laughs> are you toasting a bread? Ham, ham and Swiss. Mm -hmm. Oh, just you know. Very, very simple. Throw it in the microwave. Michael pack your queen <laughs> and uh, got a call from you guys. Wait. So are you toasting a bread or are you just you're throwing it? I didn't that even toast. I'm, I'm a microwave. I'm a simple man. Yeah, that's going to soggy know. up the bread, isn't How's it? That? Isn't that soggy in the bread? 
I'm not into taste as much as just, you know, getting the job done. Sustenance. Sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Filling up. Yep. Do you, do you yeah, eat to live or live done. to eat? <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks for getting the job done for us Thank every you, time Mark. we fucking call. Mm -hmm. Go. We do appreciate that. <laughs> Enjoy that sandwich, pal. It's cooling off. It's cooling yeah, off. Yeah. Put that thing back in the microwave. <laughs> Dude, you could... <laughs> I mean, just pretty simple. Just put toast in it. Toast your move. Just yeah, toast the bread. Air that fryer would require now. me to take the toaster out of the sure. cabinet, and I'm <laughs> probably not 100 percent sure where that toaster is. <laughs> well, you just you just moved you just moved in. Don't don't be too hard on yourself. You have no fucking idea where anything is in there. Okay, it happened to me. I lived in a house for a year. Hey, some people uh, buy houses, and other people buy sleeve tattoos. I went with the house. Jeez. Ladies and gentlemen. Why? Mark Bowley. Hey, Bowley. Love that guy. He hates Schneidman. Schneidman just got fucking killed. He, he hates him. Whoa. I wonder if Schneidman even knows. Let's call Schneidman back. Let's no. see what he's up to. They, think, they haven't done anything. They're co workers, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're yeah. Athletic. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Athletic doesn't want to fire me. But I'm new Haas. <laughs> He's the best. That guy's the man. That is Moving oh, on wow. oh, that is Mark. That is Mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. How about it? <laughs> he said, Moving on up. <laughs> a he really had that. Join us now as a guy <laughs> with no snowblower in a shitty ass kitchen, but a great <laughs> arm tattoo sleeve. The athletic writer for the Packers, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Schneidman. Schneid, I know you're probably breaking news and talking about it. We want to let you know. No. Yeah, I don't no. know if you saw it. Kaboli just murdered you. I mean, absolute burial <laughs> yep. of you for about seven to eight minutes. Little jabs, let alone on the X, multiple platform burial yeah. yep. of Schneidman. Uh, how do you feel about this, and how's the friendship going forward? And what are your thoughts on Kaboli the human, just as a whole? Yeah. I, I love Kaboli. I was hanging out with him in your guys' city in Indianapolis at the Combine. He's one of my favorite co-workers, so we see at these events. I'll see him at the owners' meetings Hi, in a couple right. weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, my kitchen's not great. I live in a studio apartment right now. I'm moving into a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. Oh, so, oh, oh, Watch the snowblower. You got to put that in the budget. Let's not make maybe a little two-bedroom, say a three-bedroom mm -hmm. with the snowblower that needs to be purchased as well. We heard your mom. Yeah, maybe if Mark comes to Green Bay, we can uh, come to the Oneida Casino, and maybe I can uh, – Grease him up a little bit to, uh, in response for taking up some of his time on your show. Hey, I appreciate you taking the high road there on Kaboli. He would never do that. Nope. <laughs> never no. in a million no. No, years would, would he do that. Wash that Oneida Casino toilet, though, you know, because I don't know if it's ready for a Kaboli time. Oh, no. my no God. No chance. <laughs> so, Especially after eating cheese curds all day. Yeah, he, just, he had a mayonnaise sandwich he was making. We just stopped him. He, he makes a mayonnaise sandwich with ham and Swiss. Good combination. Ham and Swiss, good combination since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. I think that's a Belgium or German thing. I think they, they kind of started. That's their thing. I think that is kind of their thing there. Interesting. Uh, putting that sandwich into a microwave, though, yeah, that's just asking for it to become a... Just a loose, soggy... Because he rolled it up pot, into pot, a Hot mayo sandwich. Yeah, it's like an Uncrustable. Yeah, do you think he just Ugh. smushes it together Ugh. after the microwave and just one Why? bite eats it like an apple? <laughs> like, it's kind of like a sandwich oh. apple. Well, then that mayonnaise probably pff, yeah. like a gusher or a yeah. hot pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the game. Right. No. If not, he probably has to snag it with his other hand. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Hey, look out for your co-workers, though. That guy's in your in your room. Let's make sure we're taking care of Kaboli. No, I saw what he said. I watch the entirety of your guys' show every day, so I actually had to turn off my TV to pick up the FaceTime. I'll take the high road, but I love Mark. Nothing bad to say about him. All right, you need to stop watching our show. We need good journalists. Yeah, please. Okay, we need good journalists not to be ruined by us. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Because I've been reading a lot about us. We're ruined in sports media. That's right. So no. we don't need to ruin you, but we appreciate the hell out of you. Great sleeve tattoo. Great little rivalry with Mark Bullen. I know, yeah, I, I love it. it. You know, you watch it. He'll uh, fucking hawk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he from? New York City, huh? Uh, okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm worried. Want to survive a day in Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Schneidman. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Let's get to a break. They ever, they ever shared a hotel room together? Definitely. I hope not. No one. That would be a hotel room with yeah. so, one bed, Yes, they definitely one, are. One bed, Schneidman on the bottom of it, like sleeping like this. <laughs> Michael Scott. Yeah, sideways. Like a uh, Tommy boy? <laughs> yeah, bingo. Let's get to a break. Where am I Man, this show sucks, dude. So is uh, Oregon's Pro Day going on right now? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of people there, actually. 
Okay, I think we know people that are there, right? That's the ESPN connection. Yeah. Remember they told yeah. us? Yep. They said, hey, we got people live at these pro days. So Something right, think about. Probably nobody was answering. Legit. So oh. maybe we try to I, I mean I definitely didn't FaceTime Field Yates, but uh maybe but we should. Could. <laughs> maybe we should maybe we should start doing that. We should try to get boots on the ground up there in Eugene, Oregon. What a beautiful place. I got a chance to be there with game day. Mm-hmm. Glo- gloriously gorgeous as you're flying. Now, granted, the rain they talk about. It definitely rained whenever we were there as well. So I think they chat about. But it feels like you're landing like rainforests mm-hmm. with how green in the trees, like how be- it's beautiful. It is beautiful up there. And old Cuz, head coach, Dan Lanning, yeah, said everything you possibly could want here is in mm-hmm. Oregon. And I think he genuinely loves like the community. I think he genuinely enjoys it. They're building something special up there, and Bo Nix is throwing. So we'll try to get boots on the ground in the next hour to see how that whole thing's going. There's some teams that are allegedly, if you listen to any of the insiders who contradict each other all the time, so who's inside who? Right. <laughs> oh, that's a real Whoa. look out. That's a real question. Yeah. But Bo Nix is allegedly hot on a couple people's mm-hmm. boards. Mm-hmm. It's his pro day's happening, which we knew. Oh, oh yeah, it's oh, yeah. happening today. Sure. Circled, circled on the calendar. Yep. Yeah. So we'll try to get a little bit of that in this next hour. We'll keep everybody up with free agency, which we assume is going to potentially have another couple massive moves over the next day or so. With Patrick Queen off the board, Calvin Ridley still on the board. Mm-hmm. We assume there's a big market for Calvin Ridley. That'll be a domino once Calvin Ridley goes. For other people, we'll keep a track of that, and we'll finish up this glorious day with a conversation with Will Lutz, the kicker who is potentially going to the Jaguars, mm-hmm. and then say, eh, "I'm going back to the Broncos." Friend of the program. We appreciate him. Can't wait to hear the story of how he ended up back at the Broncos with Sean Payton. Should be a glorious Tuesday here the rest of the way. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Five. We have some massive news. A lot of blessings pounding out and I ain't even wish for no. Let the wolf for y'all. I'm locking the fridge door and the crib cutting hits. I read through the catalog, came to conclusion, no one's touching this. Just finished the main approach, I've been on the main work. Set up shot to kill them off, whatever the thing. I seen the boats, I'm at home. I'm selfish with the goals, I could give a fuck who try and get along. 6'3, you can't look me in the eyes. Welcome, the incomparable Pat McAfee. But as soon as we get backstage, I see Serena Williams like six feet from me. And I'm like, oh my God. Hello, hello, hello. You look fantastic. Massive room. Did not expect to see this many incredibly important humans to the media world. And then all of a sudden, guess who pops by? Ryan Seacrest. Hi, bro. Ryan Seacrest, how are you? Yeah, Congratulations. You are legend, bro. And holy shit, Ryan Seacrest is here. Thank Honestly, you. your work, I think, is something that people Thank you. like me like, really inspired Thank you. Me. Why am I here? Great question. Sweet cowboy hat. How you doing, dude? Makes me look thinner. The Kardashians? Bullshit. Come Bullshit. out of the elevator. Hey, good luck out there. Thank you. My show, my guys and I will be joining the ESPN universe. And we are so incredibly pumped, honored, and thankful to be doing that. And a lot of people are wondering, you know, why would you ever want to do that when you run a couple hundred million dollar valued company with full independence and the ability to kind of do whatever I want, whenever I want with my crew that is one of the hardest working group of men on this earth. And it's because I had the incredible opportunity over the last two months to chit chat with the leadership at ESPN. I go up to a lounge, Alex Honnold, you know, the guy that was climbing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, holy fuck, that's that guy who just hangs off the side of cliffs Mm -hmm. or whatever. (laughs) And I think the future of sports media is certainly something that we're kind of creeping in on. Digital has become an influence. It has the structure. It has the ability to reach millions and millions of people. Dan Orlovsky, after his riveting performance uh, <laughs> on the stage, which it was. Gets a Shirley Temple. He comes, no, he got wine. Okay. Oh, wow. The future obviously says that linear television is going to be dead. ESPN, the channel won't be able to exist. But when is that? Is that a year from now? 10 years from now? 20 years from now? Can we get a 25, maybe 30? 35, 40. By that time, I'm 65, 70 years old, and I've completely missed out on the powerhouse that is ESPN Linear. So when I was talking to Jimmy and Burke Magnus and the Bob father, Bob Iger, somehow got a chance to be in his office for an hour and a half in Burbank. That was bananas. 
He's now talking, I think, to the leader of France. Dumbest life of all time continues. But they all very much understood that we need to embrace both what tomorrow is and what today is. And I have the exact same vision. Then Joe Buck, Troy Aikman come walking in. I'm very thankful to announce that we'll be on ESPN, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app. And for the first time, I do believe in all of sports media, we'll be live on ESPN's YouTube at the exact same time. Jimmy, Burke, Bob understood that 98% of male Gen Zers use YouTube on a daily basis. So being live there and on ESPN, we should be able to reach the entire world, hopefully, if I don't fuck it up, which I might have just did by saying the F word in this room right here. You uh, met the real DeMar Hamlin, okay. not Michael B. Jordan, Are you sure? not the actor, uh, not the clone. How do you know? Runs. He is in Disney movies. The clones look exactly the, the same as real people. That's yeah. the actual clone type. It is an incredibly special time for me. This is my first time out of my house in two weeks. My wife and I actually, boom first baby she just started farting two days ago real deal that was a game changer but my wife my baby my guys and everybody that i know are honored to be a part of the espn family and we hope that we'll be able to work with all of you cheers and have an incredible day good man how you doing you good yeah, i'll keep running the world though hey no that's you dude that's you that's you trip to new york i think was a success the upfront was hilarious. I had no idea that room was gonna be that big. This is awesome, isn't it? That was the most suits I've ever seen in my entire life. We're pumped to join the family, and I am very grateful that they're gonna let us do it our way. And I said fuck it at Disney upfront, so. This would be a pretty legendary thing later in life. You can probably look at it and say, oh, those are pretty good suits. All right, the next chapter begins. Ain't that right, Nikki? Hell yeah. Jalen Milrow often wears his own branded apparel reading LANK across the front. It's an acronym that stands for Let a Naysayer Know. Being told by his former offensive coordinator, that Bill O'Brien. That is not what I thought. Is that not what you thought? Boy, let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. <laughs> of course. The professional's right in the middle of his <laughs> lead. That's all right. I just keep I thought going. you almost lost me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Real tight up here, as you were. I just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were too smooth with that. I thought it was going down. I thought it was going down out here. <laughs> Whoa. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. That's what we thought the whole time. That's what we all thought. <laughs> Listen, I'm just curious. I noticed that in every single one of those pictures you took, you're wearing the same suit. So I'm just curious, did, did were you only at the Combine one day? Did you only work one day? I mean, you talk about how you're the hardest working guy ever. You're there one day? Like, what, what's going on there? Well, I don't know, Ty. I mean, are we in Milan at the fucking fashion show? I'm there for work, asswipe, okay? So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go and play grab ass with people, oh, hey, look at my, my Versace suit. Look at my, you know, listen. All right, very simple. Yes, I wore the same suit and, uh, and shirt combo and tie combo every single day. You ever heard of Steve Jobs? Okay. Turtleneck every single day. Take one decision out of your day. It's a very beautiful, nice suit. $79.99 off the rack at Macy's. Okay, very, very Ooh. dependable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not there uh, trying to, you know, get all the girls to look at me and say, oh, geez, Mad Mel, this guy's fucking sexy. I'm there to let these NFL GMs and pro personnel, you know, staff know, hey, this is what you got to do to win a Super Bowl. I mean, the fact that you didn't even ask that question tells me how big of a dipshit you are and how much, just, honestly, just how clueless you are. So I won't be taking any fucking questions from you for a long time, oh, my oh, friend. jeez. You know what, as a matter of fact, fuck this, I'm done. Okay, I've given you guys, no, this is bullshit. Whoa. Fuck you guys. Whoa. What? Whoa. What did I say? Oh, what the? Ty, way to go. Come is Matt Mel still there? You know, I don't got to do this. You know, they act like I don't got anything to do. I mean, I got hours and hours of film I could be looking at. These fucking assholes are treating me, you know, like it's a stand-up comedy special. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm fucking sick of it. Okay? I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. Fuck them. Whoa. Gee. Uh, sorry. Die. He's still... Look, 
guy you made Matt Mel feel. It's an honest question. I thought it was a good conversation. No, I, yeah. You did attack him a little bit. You attacked him a little bit. I think he overreacted, but that's classic Mad Mel. I think we can, you know, be, besides the way that thing abruptly ended. My, what was that all about? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, professionalism maybe, you know, just a, a tad bit. But sorry, right. draft season's Mad Mel season. Everybody's got Bryce Young. Will Levis and Will Anderson uh -huh. above C.J. Stroud, allegedly. Lock him in. We will 1 million percent continue to drive that narrative uh -huh. because with what my eyes seen, A.J., and what yeah. you have seen, if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh -huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. Have, have to have him. Plus, it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go Don to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. we got a lot of pieces to the sure, puzzle that aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one, yeah. and then you get C.J. Stride. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this world, so much is going on Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. Hour three of the program starts now. Sports! Our awesome, that man's great at sports. He's a champion in college and at the professional level. All-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, A.J. Hawk. Hey. Hey. He's also in WWE 2K24. Yeah. Oh! Not right now, but a few, uh, time in the near future. Mm -hmm. Nice. And his skill set is one that is mm -hmm. dominant. Mm -hmm. I need a little Bob Backlund, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior and Ricochet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if that's possible. AJ said, it is. <laughs> Scan me up. Yep. You want me to reenact with a couple things I want you to do? And then this group, the Toxic Table, at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt, said, we got moves for you for sure. We got mm -hmm. outfits, costumes, what we want to wear, how we want to talk. Also, you're looking at us now? Yeah, maybe we're 5'10". But everybody can put some cowboy boots on with some lifts. We're 6'4 in this game. Two, We're 6 3 in this game. Mm -hmm. We're heavyweight contenders, and we have a set of moves oh, that has uh, never been seen before. No, ever. no, no, no. Very no, no, specific no, no, no. set of moves. Now, I was told that you potentially wanted to name your finisher Michael Cole Sucks. Yes, that was the uh, first iteration of our uh, finishing move, yes. Just because the idea of Michael Cole having to go in there and record, and they hit the Michael Cole Sucks! That would, <laughs> over and over again would have been fun. That is next level thinking. Now, I I'm not 100% sure if that one's going to get passed. You guys also were skeptical, I do believe, if the story from your side and mm -hmm. their side is real. So you came up with another name. The Toxic Tables finisher is? Yeah, the... Uh T2 toxic table uh, slam. And basically, we're just putting people through tables. A couple maybe, of them. Maybe multiple times. And you're trying to attack the... Yeah, T2. We're going to really you know, focus in on that T2 vertebrae and, and try to sever it. <laughs> Do what we can. T2. Yeah. Why not? Dial it up. T2. Ref's going to be able to count to 1,000 if he has to. Yeah, we're exactly. Not, we're not having any dots here. Nope. Mm -mm. There's no kick out coming. No. Not no, world. No, no. There's no shoulder off the mat. No. Once the T2 is hit by these two, buddy. Yeah, nighty night. Good night. Mm -hmm. For the last match. The Toxic Table are on their run to the titles. Yeah, you know. I mean, our walkout, too. Uh... You know, obviously, we do the entire thing. They're like, do think about the coders moves. that have to build all this. Oh, oh yeah, know. yep. So many. Hey, they asked. They did. Yeah. They, they had no idea what assholes uh, they were getting on. They the other did side. not. No, no, they didn't. No. And what's your walkout? What's the? Uh so basically, you know, we we actually we discussed being heels. And we landed on the fact that everyone's going to be rooting for the toxic table. So what? We can't be heels, of course. So when we get out there, as we walk down from the ramp, we're just 
you, 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 every you. fan, every, every single fan. fan. Yep, and then exactly. once we last the night, there was thirteen thousand eight hundred people. In yep, the, and in, and we're gonna say you to every single one <laughs> of them on the way times. down to the ring. It might take a little bit for the for the match to get started, but. The show before the show is a part of the show with the toxic table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So does Michael Cole have to come back and do the recordings for all this stuff? So they all year, dude. So oh, it's not stopped. That's a part of this entire thing that I don't think people really, you know, understand. Like Madden, you're recording all year. That's a full time job. Mm -hmm. You are, yeah, like two K. With that, yeah, we've seen it with the NCAA one too. Yeah, two K. Like that's a full. You're you're re recording. You know, because yeah. things happen. Yeah. Chuck and them do it. Yeah, there's new news and everything like that. I, I think Cole and I might be speaking out of pocket here. I FaceTimed him in a time where we had to talk, but it was unscheduled, which is what I do. I just, hey, I got a thought. I need to just, this has to happen now. Cole thought we actually had to talk. It wasn't like uh, one of those. So he was in the middle of recording and he like was walking out of like uh, uh, one of those echo foams mm -hmm. yep. things. So I think he has like a studio. And he's mm -hmm. like, they're recording. That job is one of the worst in, I think, commentating. Damn. Like video games. Sounds concert. brutal. It's, it's, uh, I think. What we it, need it though, as gamers, you need it. Oh, it's quite an honor. Accurate. Yeah. It's I mean, quite an honor. You do it, right? Yeah, don't you do I it? Do, for, yeah, I do. For Pro status, Era? Status Pro, yeah. Yeah, dude, we're oh, not see? updating games though. We got, or we're not updating uh, we I uh, only had to do it twice. So cool. I think the, I think cool. WWE, I think Madden, yeah. I think NCAA, I think that's like almost a weekly. We had, the, damn. I think it's like a weekly, like hours too. Like. The UFC game has a weekly update because every time there's like, like the Sugar Sean one, like they set it up so that like th those guys have to go in and record something that pertains to that fight every single week. And like I think Colt treats it like a podcast. Like I got to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Like it's like uh, mm -hmm. I got to go do one of these because you're going in there and you're saying the same thing maybe 15 times. Yeah. You know, and then you got to go right to the Can't next. they use AI by now for that once they have your voice? Well, you know, we don't while. want that. Mm -mm. Hey, we don't want that. We no want way. Cole still yeah. making that money from yeah. 2K. That's right. You're right. Yeah. That's true. You know what I mean? We, we you know, want those jobs mm -hmm. to remain jobs for the talented speakers and the voices of different games and generations, but it is an honor to be in 2K. Oh, yeah. And if uh, this mate, nine-year NFL vet, Darius J. Butler, yes, sir. Sir. Thank you, bud. is able to win a title, and the Toxic Table is able to win a title, and A.J. Hawk is able to win a title, and I'm able to maybe get dripped in gold or at least hang out with the boys who have a bunch of gold, I think there's a chance that uh, there's going to be an additional tag team at it. Not taking anybody's spots. No, no, no. Never. Just more work for the people that are definitely <laughs> mad at us. Sure, for sure. The only people that should be getting on their Twitter and extras and bitching about it are the people that have to make it. The developers. They are not yeah, happy. Yeah. The developers are not happy. No. Fair, fair game. And to them, we apologize. We hope you're at least entertained by the delivery of the message of what you're building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, after the 50th time you watch it, I assume it's going to wear a little bit thin sure. as you're trying to do it. But we do appreciate the developers. Mm -hmm. We appreciate 2K. We appreciate WWE. Oh. But if we do well in there, one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs, and the other half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Bubba Gumpino, I believe, potential tag teams oh, baby. in 2K. Ooh. So, I mean, we got big things popping off here for the hammer. Don, boys. That'd be cool. And everything that comes with it, that'd be sweet. What about Patrick Queen being a Pittsburgh Steeler? I mean, nothing beats that. Russell Wilson being a Pittsburgh Steeler. What? Nothing beats that either. Mason Rudolph, if you listen to Mark Bowl, he sees the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Mason's great. Almost won us a playoff game. What about Kenny Pickett? Wasn't he your teammate whenever you guys played softball together? Kenny's a great guy. I, I love Kenny a lot. Remember you wouldn't sign any autographs? That's right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's he, right. that one guy wanted to have a beer with him, and he said, oh, I can't, and drove off. Yeah, I want you to chug a beer with me. I'm actually driving. <laughs> oh, this guy's a piece of shit. You've changed. Loser. Yep. The second part of that story is very correct, yes. Yeah, well, the you've got attacked for that. That softball tournament was like, I would assume in your eyes, worst idea of all time. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. That's a yes. Yeah. He wasn't playing this. Raising money. Yeah. You're a good guy. Yeah. For, I, I don't want to say... I was a little piece of Cam Hayward winning uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year, but that was part of it. Yeah, it was Cam Hayward's softball event. Yeah. And you got invited mm -hmm. in Washington Wild Things Park, which we love. Yeah. yeah. We love that place. Mm -hmm. All signs pointed to good idea. Yeah. And then you get there, and then it's just all of a sudden, what, what's going on at bat? What's going on in the field? What's going on afterwards? What's the travel like? How's the fam? I mean, there's just, it was like, but you you helped the community. Yeah. yeah the boy, Tony. Great event. Just like you will at 2K. You'll help the community whenever you sure, get in there. absolutely. I believe we're going to be joined by a man who has boots on the ground out in Eugene, Oregon. We're trying to get this settled uh, because obviously we knew this was taking place. Yep. So we got on this guy's schedule weeks in advance because we knew that he was going to be hitting the Pro Day circuit starting in the beautiful Pacific Northwest region mm -hmm. with the Oregon Ducks. Sko, Ducks! Sko, Ducks! Ladies and gentlemen, ESPN, 
national fantasy football expert, yep. NFL draft scout, mm-hmm. NFL pundit, yes. salary cap expert, mm-hmm. college draft eligible scouter, <laughs> yep. stud. Yep. ladies and gentlemen, Field Yates. Yay! Yay! Gentlemen. Field. How is it the introduction gets better every time? Well, I, to be honest, I, I was just going to keep saying stuff until you inevitably butt it in and, like via your voice and like, nah, I don't do that. But it does feel <laughs> like you do everything. We had no idea that this pro day was happening, 100% on us. The free agency tampering period yesterday mm-hmm. kind of stole the headlines. We were excited for who was going to come today. A lot of big names, Patrick Queen off the board. Where's Calvin Ridley going? Ooh. There's a lot of conversation in chat. We didn't even know Pro Days had started. Obviously, they have. Obviously, Bo yep. Nix is the topic of conversation out there. We saw you talking to Dan Lanning on the thing. How are the vibes? Is this the first Pro Day, the first big one? And what do we got coming up? Yes, yeah, so this is the first big one amongst the, the six quarterbacks. We're kind of regarded as those top six in the draft. And obviously, things can change between now and late April. But uh, Bo's is the first one. The next one amongst the quarterbacks is Caleb Williams on March 20th. Uh, there's, been, there's been a handful of Pro Days already prior to uh, so today's in Oregon, but the vibes have been incredible. And Pat, you know this from being out here last year. This place is unreal. I've never been to Eugene, Oregon before today. This place is special, and the facilities are unbelievable. I walked into the indoor facility where they're doing this workout right now, and I thought to myself, this is the nicest facility I've ever seen for any college. And I was told within about five minutes that this is soon to be the old football facility as they're building a brand new one. But everybody here is absolutely 100% they're speaking reverentially about Bo Nix. Uh, it's so clear how much of an impact he's had on this program Reverend. in just two years. Obviously had a ton of an impact on the field, but it sounds like from everything that I've heard, Bo's kind of changed everything about Oregon football in terms of the culture, the leadership, everything he's brought to the table. So reverentially means in high regard? Like glowingly. Very high. Like the way that people talk about you. No, that is not the case. You and I both know that. I don't know. I don't know if reverentially is the way that people have described it. This is a live shot of the pro day happening right now. Yeah, we got pro day. We got here. We can turn it around here. We got. Uh, we got it. You can Field. See. This is it. We're we're getting it from the ESPN oh, okay. folks over our. Uh, unless we're ruining. Cake. Oh, you got it there too. I was giving you mine right here. Yeah, yeah. this is we, the, that's a better shot there. Yes, it certainly it is. is, and we're very thankful that that's, this is happening. We've never had access to this. We think this is live. How many guys are working out? And whenever a quarterback's working out, what is the attention like on the rest of the players? Like offensive linemen yeah, are often, getting worked yeah. out with scouts, or how's it kind of go normally? Yeah. No doubt. So the quarterback's always going to be the headliner for TV purposes, but also for all the scouts here. We've got thirty of thirty-two NFL teams here. Uh, the Bears have the biggest contingent. They've got their head coach, Matt Eberflus, the only head coach from the NFL that is here today. They've got their offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, their passing game coordinator, Thomas Brown. So there is a huge Bears contingent here, which makes sense when you have the first pick. You're going to go to all these quarterback pro days. Uh, but there's some big boys here as well that you just saw. They were mm-hmm. showing Jackson Powers yeah. Johnson, uh, center from Oregon, who became the first player, and I guess the last because the Pac-12 is no longer to win the Remington Trophy given to the best center in college football every year. This kid's an absolute beast. He is 334 pounds. The guy is he's like a small house. Uh, offensive lineman who played defensive line at one point during his Oregon career out of necessity. Uh, scouts have their eyes all over this kid. I think he goes in the first round as well. And then there are some fast players at Oregon, man. Obviously, this place has a rich track history. Uh, but Troy Franklin, uh, who's going to go probably in the first or second round, who's draft eligible this year. And then Bo's brother as well, who's a year away from being eligible uh, to be in the draft. But these kids can fly out here. So the wide receiver is generating plenty of attention out here in Eugene as well. I think they celebrate the fact that they're like track you too or run oh, yeah. you or something. I forget mm-hmm. the sprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those. Yeah, I forget what it was. It is beautiful out there though. You're right. Like, I, it's hard to describe, I think, how like, it's almost majestic when you're out there. It is a, it's way out there though. We're talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is way out there. Well, it is. Tell you what, I drove from, <laughs> Go ahead. it's way out there. That, that drive from Portland to Eugene, about two hours, uh, it was peaceful. You're right. It was majestic. But we are out, like, we're far away. That was, was a trek yesterday. We are far away. You <laughs> certainly are. But Phil Knight has supported the program, obviously, for a very long time. So they're able to have great facilities, especially if you watch that movie, uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. It's like he will support Oregon till the day that he dies. And obviously he created shoes there pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With the waffle maker, with the yep. rubber, yep. and the track and everything. And they've always been state-of-the-art uniforms, state-of-the-art building. Feels like Bo Nix had... An incredible 
throwing day today, which leads to Connor's question for you, Field. Yeah, Field, it feels like after all of these quarterback pro days, each one of them spends about a day or two at the number one overall projected pick. <laughs> How do we not overreact to all these? And we were talking about this as well. Do scouts view it differently because of the fact that it is such a rehearsed workout for these guys? Yeah, I mean, this is just a part of the puzzle. And I would say this is, generally speaking, the pro days – can't do a lot to dramatically improve a quarterback stock. I think when you're coming here as a scout, it's probably just as important to get a feel for what kind of person the quarterback is. And certainly many of these scouts and a lot of these coaches have watched pretty much all you need to watch on Bo Nix. Uh, but just sort of getting a vibe for what kind of person you'd be drafting or signing up for by having him in your program is a big part of this as well. You know, I think with Bo, like my feelings coming into today were that we knew what the strengths were, which were – very accurate player. He was a good athlete. I mean, back in his Auburn days, he was much more of a razzle-dazzle quarterback than he was during his two years at Oregon. And nothing today has made me feel differently about that. But you have to be very careful in terms of falling into the trap, right? I mean, how many times have we overreacted to throwing sessions on air when it's rehearsed, as you said? It's with a bunch of receivers he's been throwing to for multiple seasons, and there's no defense. And these guys are in T-shirts and shorts. So you don't want to fall into the trap here. Uh, I think that uh, in talking to scouts, they – uh they kind of chuckle when we in the media have gotten maybe uh, we've been guilty of doing that in the past. No. But uh, it's still, you know, listen, remember. there's still value in it. It's not like this is a nothing Zach burger. Wilson. These are important yeah, days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember yeah, Zach Wilson? That, cool. that was you, yeah. Field. Remember Field? Sam Darnold. Like, yep. Whoa. Malik Willis. Look did, I, I, did I have him? Uh, did I have Zach Wilson ahead of Trevor Lawrence just because of that pro day? I can't remember. I'm just, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't, to be clear. But, uh, you know, these, those pro days can certainly go a long way. Uh, and influencing Somebody. how the public feels about these players, uh, even if the NFL kind of has, I would think for the most part, like a stagnant interpretation of these guys prior to and after the pro day. Go ahead, AJ. Field, we know uh, Bo Nix has spent the you know the, the better the better part of a decade basically playing college football. Is that a <laughs> uh, is that a positive or a negative when NFL teams are looking at him? I would say this is that. Uh, you know, NFL teams do like the idea of certainty until they don't, right? So, like, Bo Nix has the fact that he is the most – he has the most games ever started at the FBS level going for him, right? Like, he is a known quantity. On the other hand, there are people that are enamored by what we haven't seen a ton of yet from J.J. McCarthy as a two-year starter – in an offense that didn't ask him to throw as much as Bo was, but they're enamored by the possibility of what he could become. So you're right. Bo is kind of on like that medical school plan. He's been uh, five full seasons as a starter. So I think the number is 63 starts, which is the most Jeez. ever by any FBS quarterback. But I do think he is a known quantity. Like I will say this about Bo is that like, I think it, when you're getting him, you know what you're signing up for maybe as much as any of the top quarterbacks along with Michael Penix in this year's draft class because they've been around for so long. And they have, I think, pretty clearly defined like strengths and limitations. And it's kind of incumbent upon the team to build around those. Uh, there are a couple of these, you know, maybe Caleb Williams is or, or Jaden Daniels, the kind of guy that you, know, you can kind of figure it out on the fly and they can kind of make up for weaknesses you might have. I think with Bo, if you put the right infrastructure around him, he's got a chance to be a successful starter in the NFL. Incumbent, uh, rever... I know, I'm... Uh, Reverentially. You went to that high school, right, that did cookies and milk? Yep. Yep. <laughs> cookies and milk, baby. Uh, Connor sent me these 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 words on DM before, so he told me to use them a couple of times. Oh, really? Boston Con Man's uh, yeah, the reason yeah. why you're smart. Yeah, nice. big thesaurus nice right before yeah. the show. That yeah. has never been said on our show. I don't think mm -hmm. so. Field, you bring right. it. We appreciate right. Are you traveling to all these things? I, I don't remember if you said that. Uh, I'll be out at Washington, which is on the 28th. So a couple of weeks from now, I'll head back out for Michael Penix. Uh, right. And as, so Kayla Williams is next on the 20th. And then I believe uh, Drake May and Michael Penix are the only two that have it on the same day. But otherwise, I think someone, myself or somebody else at ESPN, will be at, I think, five of the six top quarterback pro days. So, uh, hey, we appreciate cool your service. Sort of tour oh, around yeah. the country. Yeah, we appreciate right, you gentlemen. doing that two-hour drive Good through everything there. Not easy to get. We do appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Yates. Yeah, Phil. Yeah, I appreciate it. Doesn't have to do that. No, no. A fantasy football guy hosts his own show. I assume they asked well, him. in Vegas. What's Talk it? a field in Vegas. Did you? Yeah. Great guy. Oh, yeah. He co hosted he was at the press matchups at WWE. For a week. Yeah. yeah, he was there. Uh, at yeah. the press. I didn't see it. You yeah. said he was with you. Oh, yeah, he yeah. hosted a matchup for a week when uh, Sal Powell was out. I like Field. I like his mm -hmm. energy. Good guy. He's like, he's like yeah. uh, you know, they say like golden retriever. Like, yeah. 
that he feels like he's just always just a happy dog. Yeah, like good mood. Guy. He is, and he works his ass off, mm-hmm. which I'm very grateful for. Oregon's way out there, way so out far. There. So, how long is that flight, and then two hours? Well, I remember so you. That, well, that also, he's going back to Washington. You yeah. had a conversation with some of your game day people that if you did go to Oregon uh, this year, that you would uh, oh, yeah. you would uh, let them fly on the plane. Yeah, get the plane for them. Yeah, so they so they wouldn't have to fly into Portland. And then. Yeah, that was a real team move. That was after we already went to Oregon. So I said, if we do this again, I'll get you guys a plane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> real easy for you to fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did though. I would have. It yeah. was on the table. Going forward, will. You know, Will going forward. It's kind of impressive they can still recruit when you have to fly. The ne- the nearest major airport is two hours away. So I think I talked. I forget who I talked gear. to. I think, yeah. yeah, the gear used to be the recruit. Before yeah. the NIL. Paintings, the paintings, the walls on that on the facility there were awesome. Yeah. I forget who I was talking to. It was when I was out there, maybe a recruiting coordinator or assistant coach. I forget who it was. And I do apologize. That's on me. But it was a long fucking trip out there. Yeah. <laughs> that was an early morning. And oh, yeah. yeah. Right into a meeting. 6 a.m. Mm. And then right into our show. And then right into another meeting. And then I was like asleep. And then boom. Game day's on pitch black. So that was like kind of a blur. But traveling in, how beautiful it is. I was talking. I think it was a recruiting coordinator or something. So they benefit from being in Oregon in their eyes. It's a benefit uh, because like recruiting visits are all like events. Mm-hmm. So it's not like every weekend is a recruiting visit. You know, it's like whenever the recruiting visit happens, it's like mm-hmm. a full on event, all parties, all hands on deck because it's like maybe once a month instead okay. of like every, every single weekend yeah. that some other teams have to Guys do. aren't popping in. Yeah, like other schools, would, guys might pop in on two days notice. That probably doesn't happen in Oregon. Yeah, so I think the recruiting coordinator said, like, we've actually seen the benefit from it because our visits, because there isn't as many, have been, yeah. like, Sweet. upped. Good. Like, every, yeah. Everything's been upped because, like, what we can do now with name, image, likeness, where we could take them, what they could see, how they could see stuff now, because they just kind of schedule them as an event. Like, hey, this is what's going to happen. And they said that they've found that the people that want to be Oregon Ducks, Sco Docs, they like get excited for the event mm-hmm. as opposed to just like, oh, I'm going to see another school. It's like a full on. So I can benefit them too that they're fucking seven hours away from <laughs> South Florida, eight hours away. Yeah, uh-huh. I would assume Dan Lanning. Like- that might be a nine hour. How long is South Florida? Uh, I, 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 it, hmm? Seven, maybe? Probably seven? God six, damn. Eight. And you're losing. Because you're going from the bottom mm-hmm. right, <laughs> very bottom right, all the way top left. Way. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. way left. Le- way that top left. They, hey, they put some dogs out, though. Gonzalez last year is my favorite Bills, corner yeah. coming out. Obviously, Panay, what he's doing, like, they put some dogs Same out. Six and a half hour flight from Miami to Portland. Lanning's a beast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Weapon. Lanning's he's a beast. Awesome. He's always jacked. Strength coach. Yeah. Speaking of being jacked. Monster. Beast. Yeah, yeah I like I like what they're doing. Him mm-hmm. staying, you know, was wild, I think, for in a lot of people's eyes. And then as he laid out the video, he was like, I love this. I love this place out here. Well, and I think it's safe to assume, like, you know, you obviously never know with college football, but, like, he probably will be there because Alabama definitely, you would think, reached out to him oh, after Saban retired. The, uh, okay. The it, right. Okay, so um, um, there's a lot coming out from Nick Saban speaking – Today. To the government. Mm-hmm. Whoa. He was called in to speak to a committee, I believe, probably about, hey, what's the future of NIL? I, I did not know this was happening, so I'm just kind of seeing the clips as we go. I'm seeing the quotes alongside the actual videos, mm. and the quotes are basically him saying everything that everybody kind of thought he yeah. was thinking. Mm-hmm. you know. And he's kind of laying out how reckless almost the NIL is right now. We can play the video, I assume. I don't know if government won't. Right? No. This is all public. Public, public yeah. The C SPAN. So let's play this. Here's Nick Saban talking to a committee that doesn't have all their chairs filled you in the second just you retired to go from an amazingly and historically Ted significant Cruz. coaching career. How much did the current chaos and state of the law contribute to your decision to retire? Now? I can't take it. Yeah, no. Well, all coach. the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, My wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast. And uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their uh, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, 
All they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? So, you know, to me, that was sort of a red alert that we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of young people, which is why I always did what I did. Um, my dad did it. I did it. Um, so, and that's the reason that I always like college athletics more than the NFL is because you had the opportunity to develop young people. So, and I, I want their quality of life to be good. I think, as I said before, name, image, and likeness is a great opportunity for them to create a brand for themselves. Um, I'm not against that at all. Um, but to come up with some kind of a system uh, that still can help the development of young people, I think, is paramount to the future of college athletics. Okay, so we were hoping that Coach Saban would take some ownership on this college football yeah. world and landscape in the future. Here he is already trying to lay out a little bit of litigation or at least some guardrails in this entire thing. And whoever was chewing into the microphone needs to be eliminated from politics for the rest of their <laughs> fucking lives. For real. I, I, I was about to explode in the middle of that. But, like, I think the natural reaction, because college football fandom is so, you know, fiery, um, the natural reaction is be like, Hey, Saban doesn't like that everybody else is going to be able to do what he's been doing this entire time. At the end, he said he's cool with these people who are mm -hmm. benefiting the quality of their life and making money, and I don't think there's anybody doubting that the SEC used to operate in a fashion the same way Ohio State used to operate in a fashion. Before. Yeah, you, we know. number five overall Obviously. pick. Yeah. We would assume Obviously. from Ohio. Autograph tours. Anyways, but the history of college has been littered with those types of situations. There's always been rumors and hearsays and old stories that have come out to be very true that down in some schools, more specifically the SEC, they've been paying players for a long time for recruiting, pay for play, pay for play, whatever it is. Maybe it's not as big as it is now, but this has always been taking place. Place, but I think like Nick Saban, after we had a chance to chat with him all year, and who knows if he was just playing us every single week for a 20-week season. I mean, who knows if he was. But it felt like he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is at his core, he was a teacher. That is how he found fulfillment. That was actually what he was. So although maybe they had been doing pay for play, and I'm not saying they are, we know, or anything like that. I'm just saying even though they do, I do think he genuinely worries like hey, we're not helping humans here at Like, a big part of football and being on college football, I needed it. I, I needed to go to that to learn how to be a better human, to learn how to be more disciplined, more accountable to my teammates, to maybe set myself up for the future, to learn how to do life, seemingly, with people and everything like that. Like, that's a big developmental time for a lot of humans and your brains and how you operate and how you view life and how you'll continue to go forward and what work ethic will you develop and what traits will you carry into adulthood which inevitably leads you into being in society and how you'll end up doing. I think Saban cares about that shit and I think there's a lot of college football coaches that care about that shit. Now do they operate as dictators and are they the gatekeepers for success for everybody? Yes, yes, yes. But I think a lot of them really get fucking zeked up whenever they see somebody come in with no no hope. This, this, if this motherfucker was not at our school playing mm -hmm. football, we're talking no chance. Like that is it. And then develop over four years or now, I guess eight years, some yeah. of these, develop into a person who is just like got a degree or learned how to maybe operate in different situations, how to set aside some bad traits that maybe they've learned throughout their childhood. It's like that's a massive piece of college football that I think Saban's like, we need to figure out how to keep that in here. Quality of the game is going to go down. Quality of humans is going to go down. Quality of experience is going to go down. Quality of sport is going to go down. But we need to keep the money going to players as well. And I am a firm believer in that. Obviously, Coach Saban's a believer in that. And he said at the end, y'all motherfuckers need to figure this out, how they can benefit and we're still yeah. not ruining pretty much a portion and a part of what college football is great at, which is creating humans that are adults from boys to men. Now, I'm not saying you're fully mature whenever you leave college, but like the person I was whenever I showed up at Rich Rodriguez's football team versus the team I, person I was when I left. Like, vastly needed, certainly wasn't a finished product, still a douchebag in a lot of facets of life. But, like, without that, who the fuck, you know? Yeah. Like, who who yeah. even knows? So I think I heard an impassioned man right there trying to save a sport that he loves, yeah. although he'll get cooked. I appreciate the fact that they're at least trying to do something in yeah. this entire I mean, he'll definitely get cooked. And, and you know, most of these big-time college coaches, they're, you know, the highest-paid employee probably in that state. And it's because of what they're doing for their program and their school and all the money that they're generating. And like you said, the, the money also – 
does need to go to the players. At some point, the billion dollar question is, how do you put guard rails, guard rails on it so that both of those things can happen? And just like you, I needed that going to a college camp. You just, I went from South Florida up to Connecticut. So that in itself is a culture shock, mm -hmm. learning how to deal with different people, with the locker room. I met my best friend there. And like you said, you come in as an 18 year old, leave as a 21, 22, 23 year old sometimes. And uh, you learn so much uh, about life. And um, you know, it's important for these coaches and these uh, institutions to even if you do transfer because people transfer in our day as well for different reasons and now I feel like most of the time it's about money but even if you do go it's guardrails it's, it's, it's you know it's people it's, it's people lawyers and things looking over these contracts it's family because also when people young men sometimes you leave your home right at, at, at a certain time in a lot of these families you're hitting that stage where you are expected to become a provider so yes. once you leave at 18. Well, you're making the money. Yeah, so you, you're leaving at 18. Now you're leaving home. You may have some guilt of, hey, I'm leaving my mom. I'm leaving my dad. I'm leaving my younger brothers, nephews, whatever it is, at home to chase my dream, which rightfully so. You should have that right to do. But then you also have that. You should have the ability. To, you're busting your ass and pretty much being a professional. We're around the college game. You're right in the middle of the college game. You see how much money it generates. They should, you know, earn their fair share. So um, the, the billion dollar question is, how do you figure that out and make it fair for everyone? It's we have tough. not figured that out. Yeah, it's, no. it's, it's tough. We, we have I, not what is that the answer for I, that? I have you know? no idea how how to how you do that because it's like a maturity thing too. Like when you're 18, are you ready? And, and we talk about child stars, and normally child stars are like what eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, teenagers like whenever you're bestowed a shit ton while you're developing, as you, that's going to shape and alter. Not, and it's not always bad. I'm not saying there's a lot. These, Most of the times it is. But yeah, but these Honestly. kids, these kids these days seem to be more mature yeah. than we've ever been because they're kind of in the middle of the content. I think uh, advertising, social yeah. media, like there's a lot more of that shit going on. But it's like, it's a tough thing to handle, especially whenever you're coming from, and and I talked about this uh, because you know you get to see it. Like not everybody's parents are out of a movie. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. not everybody's mom and dad is necessarily for them. You know, not everybody's yeah. mom and dad is like super supportive and knows how to be a great mom and dad. I don't have to go through the history of talk shows that have existed because of bad parenting, but it has been happening a long, long time. So whenever you hear about somebody potentially being on the outs with their parents, they're like, what did that? Oh, the asshole change. It's mm -hmm. like, well, maybe the parents not great. Now those parents, and I'm not saying all parents, majority of parents are fucking great. I'm just saying not great parents and not great people around humans exist in reality, in real life. Now they have no idea what a deal looks like. Mm -mm. They have no idea what a good, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now you got people signing deals that aren't great. So it's not just like we think schools and funds should have guardrails to protect them. It's like there needs to be guardrails to protect these athletes who I would assume are saying, oh, this guy's looking out for me. He knows, he went to school. He knows how to do this. You know how many bad negotiators and deals and financial shit has been done since the beginning that of time. the pros. They're preying on, on 18 year olds. Like yeah. there needs to be some like, Hey, this is what a deal looks like. This is what a deal has to look like. It can't be 25% of future earnings for the next 30 years of your life because you're getting a hundred thousand dollars right now, which is four X the amount of money your family makes in one year. And you're like preying on people. It's like, I don't know how the fuck crazy, they figure man. that out though. I genuinely don't have a clue. <laughs> I, so I feel terrible just being like, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, because I don't have the solution. I genuinely don't know how you fix it, AJ. Genuinely, have no, no idea. Nobody does. I think that's why they're doing all of this and they're having all these meetings. But I, lo I love that when Saban does all this, he talks about, yeah, this is just how it is now. But he says, I'm not saying it's wrong, but this is just the way it is right now. Like, he, And he always goes back to the players should be getting paid, they should get money. But we got to figure out some of this other stuff on how they're going to do it and how they're going to jump from school to school. Oh, I'm excited to see who, does, who figures it out. Yeah. Somebody's going to thread the needle. Well, I mean, what you just said, too, though, it's like, sure, the kids want to know, but if Miss Terry's the one after meeting with all the parents, like, how much is it with the parents? Like, mm -hmm. all right, hey, we need to get paid a lot of money right here. My son is very, very good at football, and if you don't give us $2 million, we're probably not going. Like, is it is it just as much parents as it is kids? Well, let's, let's just say, because Tim and Sally, I mean, Tim, works here sally he, like yeah. i love tim and sally mm -hmm. tim and sally and i are very very t i love them great parents great parents yeah <laughs> okay i think people would say great job some people would say now obviously there was years where a lot of people were wondering hey tim and sally let's tighten up on this <laughs> kid you know what i mean let's let's figure this out but if they were presented like if we were presented <laughs> when i was a 18 year old going to west virginia tim mcafee sally mcafee 
have not made a lot of money. Hey, here's a hundred thousand dollars for your for you guys, and all we're taking is twenty five percent of all future earnings that Pat makes or whatever. And also, we're paying off your house for you or whatever. Yeah. It's like good eye by whoever decided to pitch that deal. That's good on you. But also, we would be like. I think we'd all come to an agreement. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Where's the pen? We're taking a hundred fucking thousand dollars in the, yeah. right? Facts. And and that's like I just agreed to then twenty five percent of future earnings, which who knows what it's going to be. Now, granted, that's business, baby. I guess is what the person who's pitching that deal. But it's like, should that be a temptation that's offered in front of people? Like, I don't think that's good for players. I don't think that's good for the athlete. Like, that should be monitored as well. Which is why we continue to say, I have no idea how you figure that all out. Well, nobody's like crying or feeling sorry for some of these like blue chip big programs. But like, this is going to start to become an issue. Like, it, being as good and as powerful as they are could almost be a detriment because that's you have all these five star recruits coming in, and that's the only thing they're worried about. Is yeah, how, it's team build, right? How, how much money am I going to make? Save and it. then you have all the infighting and stuff like that. Like, so we, when we first talked about NIL, it was like teams like Alabama and mm -hmm. Michigan and Ohio State, like they're going to have such a leg up, and they do because they can fundraise so much money. But on the flip side of it, like all these kids coming in, like you're you're not bringing in scrubs, like you're bringing in kids who are pocket watching and seeing what all these other yep. kids are potentially making. Like it just the reality. Like whenever you think in theory, like in theory, it's great. In theory, yes, this was all great. Yeah, but then when you talk about uh, this, isn't NCAA 2K? No, these are humans and 18, 17, and eighteen year old kids. Yeah, it's why it's. A, hopefully, they'll figure it out. Shout yep. out to Saban, go and try to you know yep. march on. Yeah. That was awesome. Marching in Capitol Hill. Say, hey, listen, we need to <laughs> feel bad. Yeah. Figure it out. He, Ted, I, he I also said he's he is very worried about the rich getting richer because the people the the schools and teams with money are going to just keep getting the players and the teams with no money are just going to keep not getting players and the this there's going to be it's just going to be the same schools over and over winning and so I didn't hear this from um, Coach Saban. I heard this from people around um, the Alabama thing. Whenever we've done game day there a few times, mm -hmm. we're show there a few times. So I guess players would take a, a cheaper deal because Saban. Sure. So like I just assumed like Alabama's got all the money in the world. I'm like you guys got massive boosts. They're like we have yes, but we've been able to never, work. It's never enough though. They yeah, know that. So. Yeah, but we've been able to work deals pretty much because you're coming to the NFL factory. Yeah. yeah. You know. Do they do they have that anymore? So. I wonder, because that's the first time that I've thought about that since then, because you say, he said, like, the rich get richer. I would assume that's because, like, in Alabama's eyes, they don't think they're, like, we have good boosters, but, like, we are not keeping up with others that I think they are probably thinking that they're competing with. And then I think that's because they've always gotten deals pretty much yeah. because you're coming in mm -hmm. to you play know, for Saban. You know, everybody in the NFL respects Saban. Yes. You know, you know he, if Saban can get anybody, any GM, any probably owner, coach. So, you know, coming in as a blue chip, like, yeah, the money's important as it, as it should be. And, of course, it's going to be in the ballpark. But, you know, you're going to have Saban there who, what, every class he had, won at least one natty there, number one. And then, you know, he's going to be on everybody's line. Uh, when it comes to the pros and be respected, but uh, it, it's tough, man. So, I just enjoy hearing coaches bitch about how much money somebody else has. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's just now college football, right? Yep. Because what was it? Was it um, was it Ryan Day? Right. That was it the first time the we boosters, heard it. Yeah. Went to the boosters in the meeting and was like, "I'm gonna need like 13 million bucks for the team you guys want. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm gonna need." And then uh, head coach of Coach Rule, Matt Rule, yeah. Coach Rule, as he's answering questions, a good quarterback costs you about two million right now, mm -hmm. and then he looks, yeah. yeah, that's that's what's happening right now. So every coach is trying to find the deepest pockets. Does that mean like some school that we don't know that has a shit ton of money becomes, or one donor? You have one big donor that's like, hey, we need to let's get in the mix and just dump 10, 15 million into your program. Let's pivot away from this. Let's go to a man who just got one big. Bag. Hell yeah. He's an incredible talent. This guy, the way he kicks football is a true work of art. He's one of like maybe five guys who hits a pure ball every time he swings in the history of the NFL. You know him from the Saints. Then he joined the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Then yesterday he was on the Jags. Mm -hmm. Nope. Back to the Broncos. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Lutz. Yeah. Yeah.
What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Hey, Will, you're always incredibly handsome. Congratulations on New Deal. <laughs> Obviously, great news. You were a Jacksonville Jaguar, and then Sean Payton said, whoa, whoa, whoa what are we doing here? How, how does this whole thing work, and how pumped are you to be back with the Denver Broncos as Sean Payton seemingly is building this up in his image now? Yeah, we had a good run with the Jags. Um, that was good. <laughs> Jags um, yeah, Jags look, legend. Clear, retire to, the jersey. <laughs> retire the jersey down there in Duval. To clear the air on that, um, I think sometimes in this little tampering window, the the source says there it is. Um, often jump the gun a little, and I have no problem admitting there was a little miscommunication on my team side to uh, figure out what we were going to do, but. Nonetheless, I think my family and I are, we couldn't be more fired up to be back in Denver. You know, as you know, the, being in a, a building that you're familiar with, with people helps with success. And look, this staff has given me my whole career. So um, it's just the right place to be for us. Okay. So whenever you're talking about source, Says, says who could be in the know at the time and they kind of run with something all of a sudden we all thought you were on the jacks like we literally did when do you find out that the world thinks you're on the jacksonville jaguars because you said it was a little bit of a miscommunication from your side i assume somebody sent you a text congratulations <laughs> on joining the jags and then you're like Man, wait a minute how's it how's it unfold dude i was on the phone with my agent and we hadn't even gotten to the point of the numbers we really wanted you know Next thing you know, I'm getting congratulations texts. Um, <laughs> I did know, a whole song and dance of, for you, Will. Yeah. I did a full. I was so pumped dude, being I, down there in Jacksonville, dude. We we had kind of agreed that you know I gave my agent the right if we get to this number, let's just go ahead and do it because we weren't sure what Denver was going to do. And I mean, not even before my agent got off the phone with Jacksonville, it was like, oh, geez, I'm a Jag. And then I was like, wait, we didn't even get a chance to figure this out with Denver and. There's just a lot going on, and look, absolute no disrespect to the Jags. It would have been a great place to be, but we're right where we want to be. Yeah, miscommunication. Also, in the middle of those things, some things change and move a different way. you got humans involved in every negotiation, and sometimes these business media folks, you know, they get something wrong, too, and then they just keep it forever yep. as well. So it's probably too tough to kind of change some people's narratives about how it all went down. I appreciate you shouting out to the Jags. No disrespect at all. What happened today? We signed today. We're celebrating tonight. We're golfing in Denver. We're, what are we doing? What's going on now? Denver Airport. Just uh, signed, sealed, delivered. And uh, head back home to the family. Enjoy some downtime. Play some golf. Have a few cervezas. What? And, uh... Back to work. How many years are you going to be there? Uh, Two-year deal. So hopefully, hopefully a lot more than that, but it's a good start. All right, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. The kicker who will return back to the Denver Broncos. <laughs> hey, McManus went to the Commanders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're at the Jags, and then you went back to the Broncos. Sure, right. Tommy Townsend, he goes down to the Houston Texans. Cameron Johnston goes to the Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Steelers. A lot of kicker movement right now. Were you watching anybody else? Is there anybody what? else that's potentially up? Man, we got to give it up to the specialist market. It's uh, the business is booming. It's, um, it certainly is. It's good. I know. I know. My guy Morstead's up there waiting on waiting to get something done. Um, so we got some action, and it's it's good for all of us. Were you the? Uh, how many kickers are up right now? Uh, well, so is me, McManus, um, Zuerlein just signed back, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a handful of other guys that um, kind of find out where they fall, but. Um, that was kind of the market that I was keeping an eye on. How many? You don't have to, Yeah, you could. How many teams? A lot of teams. Are we? Are we a lot of teams looking for kickers right now. Yeah, we had looked that. That's why, like I said, it got a little confusing. We had very fortunate to have a handful of teams in on, in on the uh, on my choices and Green Bay. Or? It's a good problem to have, obviously, but it can cause a little drama. But it's good Twitter entertainment. Hey, you've earned it all, buddy. Enjoy it. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. The kicker for the Broncos, Will Lutz. <laughs> What's that? Four? Yeah, five. five. I mean, five. Let's I'd say five. Lombo. Depends how big your hand is. How big's your hand? Well, the thing about it is, people might be interested, and then they hear what a number is, and then they're no longer interested. That's why, like Lombo said, anytime you hear seven teams are in, they're not. <laughs> and the reason why they're not is because you didn't get to a number yet that you should get to. Because mm -hmm. if there's five people in, it's like, well, obviously the price is not high enough. So let's go ahead and bump that up. Oh, there's four people. Okay, well. 
Yodely, yodely, yodely. Uh, oh, now there's two people. Yep. Cool. This is the last stage of this entire thing. Let's see what we can get, how we can get. So there's probably a handful of teams interested, which is good news if your team's kicker stunk last year, because at least it sounds like people are snooping all around. And I saw you get a little excited about that. Yeah, but it also, so it sounds like at least the ones he was really concerned about, the guys that he was kind of keeping an eye on, like they've already signed. So those other guys, is that like, are, those guys aren't going to be signed this week, are they? Nah, yeah, it's probably yeah. training camp. Right yeah, there, exactly, right? times, exactly. Something like that. And the Packers aren't going to do anything because they just, you know, he's a fifth round draft. But Durs was good. Or. What about Mason? I'd love for them to bring, bring Mason back. back home. I would. How do you do? He played. He played last year for the Giants, Giants and, and the well, the Rams signed him and then he for they got rid of him. But he did play for the Giants. Missed game winner, but it was bad conditions. What about uh, destroying? I saw he just won a kicking job. Yeah, Dude. I'm pumped for destroying, man. Legit. Brahmas. Brahma Bulls? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I am oh. fucking pumped to watch UFL? him. Yeah, because I he watch, a good ball. I watch all his got? videos. He fucking murders balls. Like, he does. Yeah. The way they come off his foot, big. Like, I am. Now, he's kicking on a lot of fields where what are the hash marks? What are the uprights? Is it a high school field? It's hard, hard to judge sometimes. But ball off foot, explode. So, like, I've always been... I've always had respect for his kicking because, like, he actually has explosivity. Like, a lot of people that kick on the internet, no offense, like, I, I appreciate what you do with footballs, and I appreciate that you enjoy kicking, but the ball's not popping off the foot. Like, it is, there's levels to this shit, you know? His ball has always exploded off of his foot, so I've always had massive respect. I think he did some stuff with the CFL. I don't know if he didn't make the team or if he didn't want to be on the team, which is a whole other conversation because of his business that he yeah. runs. Mm -hmm. His business is phenomenal. He has been great as an entrepreneur alongside YouTube content. I think other platforms he does shit for. He's I watch I, I try to learn from old destroying as as this entire game has gone on. So I've always wondered like, is he an NFL guy? NFL guys, you gotta hit like ten out of eleven good balls. Like your misses cannot your misses, you can't go 7 of 10, like, with good balls. You have to go 10 of 10 or you're going to be out of a job. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how it's going. Or unless you get drafted right. and yeah. they invested some capital in you, they'll give you a year shot. But other than that, you got to go. So I always wondered what destroying was like every day, kicking, like, 20 balls a day, getting, like, uh, static. Oh. Logging. Charted. Tracking. Charted. There it is. Uh -huh. Getting charted. Yeah. Like, if that was the whole thing. So when I saw he made the Brahmas, I'm like, I'm like, I told him, I'm like, I'm proud of you. I'm like pumped for you. Because I assume that's something he's wondered too since he's left. Like, can I every day show up? And now he's not going to make nearly as much money as he's making doing his content stuff. But hopefully this is alongside of that. Mm -hmm. He's got documentaries happening, I assume. But I'm very, very proud of him. I hope he fucking kills it. And if you do well in that league, yes. you get an opportunity in the it. NFL oh, because yeah. there's a lot of oh, backup yeah. kickers that get a shot. So it's like... We're talking about destroying, having a great season, and then getting into the kicker carousel workout where you get hot at a team, you can be there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, it is – it's a beautiful thing to watch. I'm very, very happy for him. Yeah, I'd assume the NFL is the dream, but it seems like doing all his, like, YouTube stuff and, too, the UFL – like, having The Rock be the guy running the league, like, he understands the Perfect. content aspect of it, like, probably welcomes it. It's like, hey, you should keep doing all the shit mm -hmm. you're doing, like, you know, with your own personal business, and then – Obviously, you know, hopefully you could succeed kicking as well, and maybe you do get a shot in the NFL. Yeah. Um, the punter down there is, yeah, Wing. I just had to look it Brad up. Brad Wing? I believe, Bra I believe Brad Wing is the punter down there. He's veteran, NFL, yeah. great holder, dog, love him. He's the one LSU did this yep. one mm -hmm. ah. as he scored mm -hmm. the touchdown. I think snapper, ex-NFL guy as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, he's set up. It should be a good operation. Let's go, destroying. Let's go. Yeah, when do they destroy? When's the Let's first go, game? Ooh. You know, know. I think coming up, yeah, actually. Got to be like coming the, up here. Yeah. yeah. Is so, it spring? Are we in spring right March now? March 30th. Yeah, technically. Yeah, we're in March. Spring so, they're in camp in March. Are they in camp? Yes. Yeah, they definitely They've are. They've made the rosters already. Okay. Because I'll he, watch. He, did he make the roster or did he make the first cut? I think he made the roster. I thought he made the roster. I think he made the roster, too. So, we already got rosters. we yeah, got to be coming up. If it's the 30th, yeah. yeah. Two weeks? Two plus. Oh boys, spring football. We're back. Hell yeah. Come on. Can't wait. I said this, I said this to The Rock and Danny Garcia <laughs> whenever they were on game day. The XFL was 20 to 30 times better than the USFL. And that was not exaggeration. No. Nope. Maybe even a little generous. I actually, when they sat down and I was not, I was told this is not a full question and answer situation. This is an announcement pretty much. I was like, well, I need to ask one question. 
Is that okay? And the rock goes, ask question, Pat. And I was like, I'm gonna talk shit on the USFL. He goes, don't tell me that. <laughs> All right. So I didn't know if anybody, you know, heard a couple of producers here, what I'm gonna ask about. Mm -hmm. Herbie goes, what are you doing? You know, and I'm like, I'm asking a question. I am asking a question. And is it because the USFL people offered me a spot to punt on a team? Maybe. With a straight face? <laughs> Potentially. Chance. Well, that, well, I hold that over I, their heads forever. Potentially. But everybody knows new me. I'm trying to drop those grudges. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm trying to drop those grudges. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I am. Why They're saying, gone. Why is he saying They're that? Thank you. New year, new you. Yep. Hey, everybody's seeing it. I'm <laughs> happy everybody's noticing. For the vibes. I'm happy. 2025 for the vibes. vibes. Absolutely. <laughs> but when I asked, hey, is this more XFL league or USFL league? Because the XFL was 20 to 30% better or 20 to 30 times better than the USFL. That's no shit. No. The XFL was selling, t selling out stadiums. Mm -hmm. They had like 20 some players get into yeah. training camps. Battle Hawks. They had like, I think a million people were like, there was a lot of people watching. Now, it was fun. Th it was a fun atmosphere. Yeah. It was a lot. There was numerous teams that were worth watching. The DC team, what the beer snake became its own thing. Who yeah. gives a fuck yeah. if the beer snake's a thing? Like, at least there's a thing that's going through us. USFL, what do you remember? Nothing. They didn't pay any of the uh, guys. Cheeseburger. The guy that's got a got different league. For oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's the. So I got cut for a cheeseburger. Yep. Yeah. He, he didn't want the salad. He wanted pizza. Ordered a pizza. That's what I'm saying. They played all their games in. The Fuck same city. Smoking a cig during spot. practice Birmingham. in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a renal league. Wasn't it the guy threw a touchdown and put a... Uh, a no, uh, that happened, but also that, that happened in, in fan craze football. football. Oh, that happened, in the, that happened in fan craze football. And they cut his ass right after. But that's what we're it. doing with the USFL. We just... Yeah. yeah. All those other leagues. It was not good. It was terrible. It was horrendous. No one was there because they did it... In Birmingham. The same... Listen, there was Pittsburgh Maulers, but they played every single game in and Birmingham. And they weren't Pittsburgh Colors, right? Or were they? Were they, they were, yeah. I, okay, that was... Well, no, they started as purple and orange, but they changed to black and gold. because. Anyways. Go. So is it XFL or is it USFL? It's the UFL. And they gave me an answer about it. It's 50-50, and I think he said, brother, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously... It's, it's too kind, brother. Yeah, I think it's the Brother, I think thank you for... And I heard some people in the back go, Pat, we're, they're a partnership, and you just got to bury them. It's like... Uh, sorry. Fucking journalism. New <laughs> era. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry about it. But I do wonder, like, are they, are they the same XFL teams as they were in the same USFL teams? Because the XFL teams will fucking mop yeah. those yeah. USFL teams. Was it a mixed draft? Like, how did that? Because I think Marquette's back with the team he was with. Mm -hmm. I got no idea. Well, if also, if Who are the a, coaches? And the <clears throat> same coaches. Yeah. Anthony Beck is yeah. coaching one of them. Oh, okay. The XFL has the, I think, a lot of similar Shit to the last season. Wasn't Stoops the wasn't Stoops in there too? Yeah, I think yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, some it's, legit guys. It's like the, the XFL teams are who were. Is it XFL versus USFL? Or so they, it's they have two conferences. There's a USFL conference and an XFL conference. Mm -hmm. um, so so we'll watch is, half the games. Yeah, and then XFL champion plays against USFL champion. I don't know. Oh, I hope not. But yeah, Anthony Beck's a coach. Wade Phillips, Bob Skip Stoops, Holtz, boom. Yeah. Matt Corral, Matt Skip Corral. Holtz, Mike Dolan, Reggie Barlow. Hey, hold on, go up, go up real quick to that last team. Curtis Jones, DeAndre Francois. I thought that was Ricky Jean know. Francois. I thought maybe DeAndre so, Francois, the not Florida former State Florida, Florida State quarterback. Yeah. I thought it was coach. Oh, uh, Jordan Tyomu's back. Yeah, mm -hmm. back. He's beast. He's on DC Defender, still XFL. Mm -hmm. That's good. We like DJ Swearinger, Gary Conley. Other players to watch. Preston Williams. Anyways, 50-50, but we're betting on the XFL. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Congratulations to them getting a the deal done. And the showboats, welcome to the big show. Seriously. Welcome to the big show. The Good luck. Showboats. All right, let's get the hell out of here on this glorious Tuesday. What do we learn today? Boy. Patrick uh, Queen's a Pittsburgh Steeler. Yeah. Oregon's yeah. getting a new cool facility. Yep. yep, they're investing a whole new one. Mm -hmm. Derrick oh. Henry's a Baltimore Raven. I yep. can't believe it. Why be less? Well, you can be Any more. Kaboli right. hates Schneidman. Yeah. yeah, what's that all about? Yeah. Kaboli was a little negative about Schneidman, who I thought, although he was clearly in like a studio apartment with no mm -hmm. rooms, his bedroom is in his living room. Yeah. Which I respect. He did just post about it this week, though. He did just buy a beautiful new home in Green Bay. The Athletic doing it, huh? Yeah. Kaboli's yeah. got a new home. Awesome. Mm -hmm. The real estate prices like up there pretty good, probably. Huh? Or up in Green Bay? Yeah. Well, 
The Oneida Casino right now is a draw. Sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think Bret Hart's performing. Not Bret Hart. Uh, That'd be awesome if he <laughs> <Mike Yes. is. laughs> Shoot for single legs on Bill Goldberg oh, up there. Boy. I don't know if you're going to get him to agree to anything with Bill Goldberg from what I've heard on the internet, but uh, Bret Michaels, I think. Bret Michaels. Ah. Oh, he performs oh, yeah. up there at Oneida, doesn't he? He did, yeah. I went to a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah, we, we you were on his bus at a couple of them. Yeah. What were you wearing on that bus? Do you remember? Probably some super sweet affliction shirt, I yep. think. Bingo. I think you're spot on. Who was dressed like a bigger asshole? You were Brett Mike. I was probably tied. Probably tied that <laughs> night. <laughs> that era was fun, dude. What a, a, great what a time. Great yeah. era. Great era. What an era. Yeah, you youngs, you'll go through your own. You fucking are right now. We see the way you, some of you dumbasses dress. Mm -hmm. Wait until you look at photos of yourself 15 years from now. You're going to say, what the fuck? We had that era. Yep. Dude, mm -hmm. That's the only reason why we're telling you that. Right? We all do. There was the, we all they put out like the star row or whatever. I don't know if it's a Lakers game or a Knicks game the other night. I was like, why is, why is everyone got to dress like an asshole? Well, that's fashion. You would never understand. Apparently not. Speaking of fashion, it's been going. Hey, kids, you Boom. guys dress like assholes? We used to, too. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. them. Boom. That better be how your WWE characters dress, Hawk. <laughs> yeah, it like, should have like been. Brett. I had missed opportunity. Like right. Brett. Yeah. Ed Hardy had a run. No. Oh, they had a run. Affliction, Ed Hardy. I mean, they were really doing it. Yeah, yeah they Tap were. out. Tall. Tap, tap out, yeah. That's when the UFC really started. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're the baddest motherfuckers on earth. Oh, yeah. Turn your shirt inside out to go to the bar in it. Oh, the affliction shirts? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh had a little bit of an affliction shirt yep. issue. <laughs> yeah, they certainly did. Legends Nightclub always said no. Legends Nightclub was ahead of their time, I assume. That's Plan smart. B. Yep. Plan B didn't mind, though. There was nothing like walking through the south side Carson Street 2.33 a.m. during that era. It is as if there was a highlighter on the people you need to watch out for. Yep. It was an affliction <laughs> shirt and some stupid fucking jeans. Mm -hmm. And it's like, them. They will punch me in the face right now. Yep. Need to just avoid those boys. We're heading to the same gyro joint. We're not going there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Unless we want to right. fight that entire group right there. Yep. Is yeah. that what we want to do? No. Just let me know if that's what we want to do. I'd rather just go home. I've had a pretty good night. <laughs> what if we just keep our mouth shut and stay in line quietly? That that's fair. not that. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, we're scared of fucking affliction, boys? Okay. <laughs> we'll just rather not. <laughs> That's, we'll just rather not. Here we go. Sure. Here we go. Safe. I'm fucking getting a gyro. <laughs> <laughs> because affliction, boys, aren't ruling my life. <laughs> <laughs> that guy would later get curb stomped. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yep. But we're all there for it. We got punched in the face, too. Thanks, man. <laughs> what a time. Good That's thing. why it used to be like kids, you fucking youngs. You ruined it. Yeah, you get Different fights era. with no repercussions. Well. Here's an Ed Hardy shirt. Pat McAfee out of a backyard in Nick Marauder's house. So we don't have it. Uh, we'll bring it. We'll get tomorrow. Uh, we have a long offseason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of time for <laughs> affliction shirts. Long offseason. You will see it. All right, we're back tomorrow with a good one. Today's oh, yeah. a big day. Yeah. I don't know if anybody knows. Pretty sooty in this Thunderdome. Mm, yeah, a little bit. Sooty. Is this the most sooty Thunderdome we've ever had? No. I think so. Yeah. Oh, it's you're saying yes? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we're having a good time. Oh, guys. nice. Yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah. We're having a good time. We go. I think you were wearing that ironically. That's Phil? Though. There's a chance. Yeah, I also had cargo shorts on. Yeah, it's, that's old CFO Phil in the gray. Slar monster far right. Probably the most naturally funny human I've ever encountered in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Like, actually. <laughs> no, no shit. Owns a golf course in our hometown. Beast. Just right. fucking living. Beast is the right answer. And there's Nikki Skates far left. Hulk still rules. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were we drinking that night? Oh, everything, I would assume. Phil's, Phil's that, shirt will tell you that. Is that college? Is this college? No, I think post. I think I'm in you, NFL oh, okay. here. This, when did you get tatted this, up, Nick? This is 2004-ish. I don't know. Nick's still wearing a live shirt. Oh, this band, is high school. So. a okay. bump of scope from Nick. Right. No? This is high school. Yeah, I'm not in the NFL at this time. I'm in high school around here. Had a good time. Had a good time. <laughs> Looks like fun. Man. Couldn't tell us nothing, D-Butch. What's that on Nick's <laughs> knuckle? Bump of, uh, bump of coat? What, is he you doing cocaine or Yeah, it does look like yeah, a little Nick. ball. Oh, no. What is that, Nick? It's weird. Semen? Looks, looks like we had a good time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine Nick just walking around with cocaine on his face? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Into an IV. Just hey, what the fuck? Has Nick got cocaine on his <laughs> yeah, It's on I your guess. hand. I don't think Nick was ever a big coke guy. I, I couldn't even imagine the anxiety he would have if he was in oh, cocaine. No, that would, uh, that next that day. would be bad for but No, uh, 
looking back on this is, AJ was right because that tattoo I got senior year of college, so this is 2008. Oh. Okay, so college times here. All right, good times. That guy on the right there, one of one, legit. Mm -hmm. In the photo, he just looks like a wild card. He's fucking he's there. He's, Great flow. Mate, he got the best hair. Yeah, makes sense. Hair. He cut it one time. He put he had dreads in there one time. Cut a uh, we had a volleyball game. And this is maybe the greatest haircut execution I've ever seen. Uh, we had a volleyball game. It was a playoff game. And he had this good, he had good hair, but he would get sick of it. He would want to cut it. And then immediately afterwards, he would regret it and they'd grow it back. And then it would be mm -hmm. all the way back. Nice. But for this particular haircut, uh, put a male reproductive on his head. Mm -hmm. Penis. So, yeah, penis with balls. So on the back of his head was two balls right here. Mm -hmm. And then we had, yep. Yep, and then longer hair at the front, too. Mm. So, like, it was a full one. So, if you look at him, just mohawk. Just mohawk. Mm -hmm. Pretty good mohawk for a cut in a locker room at a high school in the middle of gym class during the day before the whole thing. But the angle in which the newspaper got <laughs> with the photo mm -hmm. yeah. was from the, bent, or from the bleachers. Mm -hmm. So, right across... Photo, right cover, advanced, yeah, perfect. Clear yeah. front page is him doing this, and it's just literally balls and dick right on his head. Never <laughs> best execution of all time. Unreal. I mean, just the greatest. Couldn't have never imagined. I assume that newspaper still exists. It was quite. We had quite a quite a chuckle. Oh man, quite. A Could chuckle. see that. Which leads to why we were hated. Yeah, that group right there, pretty much hated by most teachers and uh, everybody in there. It was, it was a great crew to be around. Good group of boys doing that hard. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good one. That Phil right there, too, by the way, did not want to fucking see you. Oh. The amount of chirping coming out of that fucking guy's mouth right there. <laughs> and shoot hard ass, mm -hmm. you know? That's a new Phil, though. He does marathons now. Yep. I think he could probably mm -hmm. still handle the amount that he did there, but he is like a fucking Navy SEAL right now. Oh, right? yeah. Doesn't he? Oh, Yoked yeah. Up. And his beard is just like, so it's been like that since seventh grade. Phil right there might have just shaved five minutes ago. It looks like <laughs> it. For it to be that clean shaved, it might have been a five minute ago shave. He has had a beard since like seventh grade. What a fucking monster of a human being. Yeah, he definitely weighs much more in this picture than he does now. Yeah, probably 60, 70 pounds. Yeah. We enjoy life. What do you want? I look like I'm not that fat. I'm wondering what I'm doing. Dude, you're pretty good you're shape. Tan. You're really tan. You're in I'm pretty pumped up. Bar was his program. Yeah, senior yeah, year of college, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Might have been a strength and conditioning all America. Who knows? Could have been. <laughs> oh. That's what you're looking at right there. <laughs> R2. What is? I mean, sorry. It's on that hand. R3, L2. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's on your hand. I've been looking at it, too. Look at my chest, though. That shirt right there could have been worth 125 bucks because of how cool it is. It's a great shirt. Like, it says yeah. it. Cool. So sweet. Right there in my chest. Cool. The shirts I used to wear to function certainly do not need to become a topic of discussion. Well, I don't think we have any other pictures. Dude. I could dig. I used to what go to the mall, make shirts, day of, to go to event. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking biggest asshole. Gotta pull Volcom. some of them. Oh, I mean, just immediately walking in and being hated by the entire place is certainly a decision. Uh, hey, we're going to a party in this particular school district. Oh, these people fucking hate me over here. Been told that my whole life, pretty much. Let's go to Monroeville Mall. Let's make a shirt. Let them know I'm coming. <laughs> well, that, that figure time, too. It wasn't just the shirt. You had I mean, some type of backpack device on that what? had probably what, like six, seven liters of beer in it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I came in with good time. I wanted to let them know I'm extending an olive branch as I come in. Backpack, two things of beer, like jetpack down your back mm -hmm. with straws, obviously, you know, that are coming off the sides. T-shirt just made him in Roval Mall. Hey, let's have Shut a good up. time around here. Okay, let's do that. And, it, you know, what I would always do is I'd forget that that thing was on my back. Oh. So I'd bend down to pick something up. <laughs> Pull it down. I would dump a case of beer it, on these people's floor. Yeah, just start leaking. Oh, oh no. Sorry. Oh, uh, man. I wasn't invited back to a lot of this, but it was good time, so mm -hmm. let's get out of here. Reminisce good stuff. <laughs> Anything happened while we were talking to Neil Hunter? I see him over there. Just Chase highlights. Young. Those are just highlights of that. See him over there. Calvin Ridley, not signed yet? No. Nope. Not yet. There did. Uh, there was just some news that uh, the, Ra the Raiders do expect to cut Jimmy G. All right. Let's get to a break uh, for about 20 hours or so. We'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. 
Jimmy G is now on the market as Gardner Minshew has found his way to the Las Vegas Raiders as a quarterback position. Jacoby Brissett's in New England. Mm -hmm. Jameis Winston is in Cleveland. Uh -huh. Yep. Mariota in Washington. Darnold in Minnesota. Yep. Yep. Drew Locke in New York. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Giants. 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 Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Jets. Jets, yep. yep. All right. A lot happening. We'll continue to cover tomorrow. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this for a living. You're the greatest humans on earth. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're in this thing together. Team on me, team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Goodbye. <laughs>